But yeah, for those who didn't see The Long Dark the last time, um, it has two kind of modes. There's one is just a straight survival mode. Uh, so think like Project Zomboid, except instead of zombies and all that nonsense, instead it is the cold, desolate, boreal, boreal forest. Uh, you've got wolves and I assume other critters that hunt you and all that kind of stuff. So it's like very desperately trying to find food and keep warm and all that. Like genuinely, the biggest threat is keeping your calories, your water, and your um and your temperature up. And then occasionally wolves or something will pick up your scent, and then you gotta deal with that. So it is it is very interesting in that regard. That it is actually truly a good environmental survival game. Whereas on the other end, I would say Product Zomboid actually does very poorly on the environmental survival aspect. Because even when you introduce stuff like um, Cryogenic Winter to Product Zomboid, it's one of those things you just put on clothes and then you've solved the problem. Um, the Long Dark doesn't work in that way. I am curious if at the beginning, if I didn't pick up the case, like, would it just keep pushing forward with the story, or would there be, like, a dialogue that occurs, like, no, this case is important, I need to go back and get it. Because um, it doesn't seem like the type of game that, you know, that would um, allow you to, to... If people remember Space Quest 1, I believe it was, uh, there was a code you could fail to get at the beginning of the game, um, and literally play through the entire game and get to the end and not have the code and not be able to finish it. Which was a super trolly thing. Um, I don't imagine they would do that, because that was actually met with a great deal of hostility, and every game that's done that kind of mechanic since then, it's like, this isn't okay. Um, now, it could be that you can't get the good ending unless you do the thing. Yeah. Space Quest 1, you just dated yourself. Oh, I've... I'm old as heck. <laughs> Dark Shard's like, yep, well, if you want your first, you gotta be here first. Nah, it's, it is what it is. Sometimes it doesn't activate. Um, and a side note, and I'm going to probably mention this a couple times during stream because people come and go. Um, there has been the big announcement that I've been, like, hinting at and alluding to uh, that did happen earlier today. And that is that I have joined what's called Surge Streamers. Um, agency is probably technically the correct word, but it doesn't operate like a typical agency. But it's not going to likely make a big difference on what you see on the channel, like, from, from the viewer side. Um, about the biggest thing that I'll probably amount to there is I'll more likely be able to get uh, keys for games that I normally wouldn't be able to because I'll have more negotiating power, you know, having having this group with me. Um, but what it does mean on the back end is it's going to be way less stress on my side because more likely I'll make dealing with sponsorships less, may, way less laborious because I'll have people who actually focus on negotiating, doing that kind of stuff on my behalf. And that kind of thing. Um, it'll also make it when I do take sponsorships, I get paid more. <laughs> Which means I can either take less of them, or at least they get compensated better. It's still going to be sponsorships, like, the, the first one I know that is on the pipe, and I can't, I don't think I can say the name of the game or anything like that quite yet. But um, it's a city builder, like, colony, city builder, like, banished kind of game. Uh, which is perfectly in line with the channel. Um, it doesn't mean I have any obligations. This is weird music for this kind of thing. It's messing with my head. But, um, stream, stream is dead. Got, got an agent. But, um, but, uh, I'm not going to have any obligation. Like, if they have a sponsorship, they're like, hey, we want to do a poker game or something. I have no obligations to follow that or anything like that. If I don't like what's going on, I can get back out of it. You know, like that. Like, it's not, that's the reason I'm saying it's not like a lot of agencies where I have, like, there's a lot of agencies that you must go through the agency. That's not a requirement I have. Um, there's a lot of agencies that once you sign on, there's like all sorts of restrictions about like leaving and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't have stuff like that. Um, so it's all on the up and up, but that's, that's been a thing that's kind of been on the back burner that like I've been feeling it out, making sure it's a good fit. And that is now official as of today. Um, other groups that are or other people or other content creators that are on that group that we have in our circles is, um, whoa, Jess is also a member of, uh, Surge streamers, as well as Bloody Drongo. So, just giving you the fact that this is like an up and up group. Anyways, but that's that's all that thing. The big thing that's going to mean is I get access to keys that normally be like, you don't have enough viewers, piss off. They don't say that, but they reject your key request. So, there's going to be games that I tried to get keys before that I didn't, which is why I didn't play it, because I can't afford to buy all those games, because games are expensive. 
um, it'll get more opportunity for me to play more variety of games that might fall outside of what I can financially justify. And it'll put me in better financial situation, which makes the channel healthier and makes it way less stressful, which should be better content. And it also means I don't have to lean on all of you and be like, hey, not not that I've ever gone, hey, no, like, no, seriously, I need to give you money. Like, or need to give me money. Okay, things like that. But I don't ever want to be in that position where I feel like I have to pressure people being like, no, look, man, I got bills to pay. So this will help make the channel healthier from that aspect. Um, I have to think of a better way to describe all that. But you get the idea. That's that's the big announcement. Hey, Hobgong. Um, do you see those shrimpies? I did. I was going to respond, but I didn't have enough time before stream start. They looked nummy. Um, anyways... So, getting on the away from the announcement thing, but yeah, like I said, join Surge Streamers. Basically, the only thing it means on the viewership side of it is I'm going to get access to games I wouldn't otherwise get access to, is the big thing. Alright. And for me... For me, it means money. I mean, what? I'm sorry, I do this for fun. <laughs> I do do this for fun. But getting paid is nice, too. All right, so what we're going to do is we previously started our The Long Dark. We have a survival run that's two, three days into surviving. Um, and then we also have, we finished, I don't remember if it's act or chapter or episode, whatever they use, but um, we finished one and then we stopped and didn't go to number two because I had only had like an hour or two left to stream afterwards. I'm like, I don't want to start a chapter and cut in the middle. Uh, so we are going to continue with that. I am curious if our items carry forwarder. Like, forward chapter to chapter. Why does this look like the exact same cinematic we already watched? This is the same intro we already saw. I wonder if I can drop any of this gear. I don't... I'm confused. Hey. Damn it. Not again. No. The lights. Hey. Okay. Easy. Take it easy. Oh, oh yeah. I remember now. This guy was attacked by a bear, and we shot it. Who are you? Name's Mackenzie. I'm the one who saved you from the bear. Did you kill it? I don't think so. But I hit it. Maybe scared it away. <laughs> Not the way you shoot. Glad your memory's coming back. Shit. You caught me good this time. This time? Hmm. Huh. Yeah. Me and the old bear go back a ways. Uh. There's, there's unfinished business between us. I bandaged you up, but you're in bad shape. Is there anywhere to get medical help? Wait. <laughs> you mean like a hospital? Out here? See you have a radio. Can we call for help? No. Radio's been dead for the past few days. We can't raise any of the usual channels. I'm not sure why. Well, you'll need some stronger meds to avoid infection. And for the pain. Is some kind of doctor? No. But I've been around doctors enough to know you'll be in trouble soon. Unless you get some better help than I can give you. Well, <laughs> closest help is probably in Milton, back the way you came. Uh, there's nobody left to help you there. The town's pretty much deserted. There was a fire and... Damn. The next town's days away. I'm wrecked. But if you leave now, you might be able to... You won't last days like this. Must be another way. There's, there's someone who might help. But we can only reach them by radio. So, 
go back to where we started. There's got to be somewhere nearby that might have medical supplies or another radio we can use. You might find some comms gear or parts from the old Carter Dam. It's probably ancient stuff, though. That place has been abandoned for years. It used to have a first aid room. Might still be some old meds there, too. <laughs> Something strong enough to maybe numb this pain. Hang in there. I'll be back as soon as I can. Just gonna go on a limb here and say, if you've been mauled by a bear and you're bandaged Wait. up and everything, maybe lay down? Wait. The old bear. He's still out there. I think want me to finish the job. Okay. Here. You take my rifle. You won't kill him. But you might... Scare him off again. Right. Watch out. This dam. Unstable. Wait, what? What do you mean unstable? <laughs> Damn it. He's passed out. Yeah, I'm just thinking it's like, okay, if you're if you're all mauled, so you're all like cut up and everything, your best choice is don't move. <laughs> just like obviously if you gotta do stuff to survive or whatever, you gotta do stuff to survive. But um You definitely don't wanna be like twisting and moving around just to more emphasize your conversation or whatever. Like lay down. You can have a conversation while laying down. Okay, so we do have infinite wood, so let's see if we reset my inventory, because that's one of the things I was curious. Alright, so we did keep our stuff between the places. Uh, so let's drop all the stuff we're trying to cure. Because it did deliberately grab all of that. That is cured. That's going to be annoying one second. There we go. The the deer hide was just too big covering up. So that's, um... That's not what I want. Don't drop the cloth. Uh... Your leather. Fresh deer hide. Yeah, so I've got, like, these intestines you wrote, throw on the ground that we can use for a bunch of stuff. We've got the rabbit pelts that need to be cured and the deer hide that need to be cured, which is just drying it out, basically. Um... And technology-wise, I can make a snare. Which I guess we'll make. Which would be curious, because I would assume with a snare, you would want bait. But I would like to eat the bait. Place a snare and catch at least one rabbit. Okay, so my, my basic survival stuff did carry over. There was um there was mission objectives that uh I didn't finish in the last one. Because to me it felt like, you usually when you do those extra quests in games, it's a whole lot of running around trying to find the one thing you missed and all that. Um, and I found in the past, anytime I've done that type of content, people have really not been down for it. Which is understandable. It's a whole lot of pe watching people wander around aimlessly. We ran into some of that with, um, can I take your map? I'd like to take your map. Um... Like we did some of that, that Subnautica. Not a key to getting out of here. You better not die on me. Why is it the key of you getting out of here? Interesting. So when I reload, I get the um the first like five bullets just go in it. Um, but all the other ones
Yeah, you no, know, I could pick it up. Oh, you mean, um, like, click and drag it around? Probably. Oh, I'm overburned. It's fine. Um, that's fine. I didn't check. I have food and water, right? Uh, about a liter and a half of water, which is pretty good. And a heckin' lot of food. Okay, so we're in good shape. So I'm assuming this is a riverbed that I'm walking on right now. Where it's frozen over and then gotten snowed on. I'm also noticing I'm wearing enough clothes now that I'm not getting cold just walking around in the snow at the moment. I believe when night falls it will get colder again. Well, unless this goes to another bend over here, my assessment on this being a riverbed is wrong. It's actually feeling very wrong with the slope as is. And do I have a map for this place? There's a lookout. There's a camp office. There's a trapper's homestead. The wounded trapper. I clearly didn't walk that whole distance already. That's the trapper's house. Let's let's look back the way we came. So that's the way we came. Yeah, so that's back to the house. Um so I'm assuming that's the dam up there. So you need to cut over to the east to the railroad tracks and go north. We could check out some of these houses along the way. Um, is that east? Yeah, it's east. And as we eat and all that, we should drop some carry weight. I'm just carrying too much. Have you crafted anything yet? Um, the only thing I've had as an option to craft in the not survival mode, um, is the snare trap. Like I have, I've seen no other recipes to speak of at the workbench. I assume we'll get more. Having having a trapper, he probably is what unlocks us to be able to make clothing and all that with the uh the hides and whatever. Which I assume will be necessary because I'm guessing we'll either go to a new area where it's colder or like a storm will roll in and it'll get really bad or something will happen that I'm going to need better insulation than just what I found. Or we'll be out here and we can't realistically fix our clothes. Alright, so we got a tripping hazard here and I can't really do anything about it so we just got to live with it. That's what that red symbol on the right means. It's I'm on a really steep slope. Uh, so my character has a higher chance of tripping and hurting himself. A little building up ahead. There we go. But yeah, in the uh, in the survival mode, I did a bunch of crafting already. But in the story, my crafting options have been very limited. So could it be just the old bear here? Because I would have expected to see wolves as well by now. Pretty sure I already have the can. Got my cooking pot. And I've got a can. Oh, I've got a rabbit? What's in the rabbit? 
Alright, so I got a rabbit that I can just straight up harvest at some point. Yes, yeah, so let's keep cutting across to the camp house. And it says love people some people love the survival of this game. I always preferred the story mode. It's like surviving for a reason more than just for the sake of it. The only game that doesn't bug me is Product Zomboid. Yeah, I mentioned earlier that to me, this game, when it comes to survival, this game actually does a really good job of environmental survival. Alright, so we got a wolf ahead. Environmental survival, whereas uh, Product Zomboid actually does a really terrible job with the um, environmental survival. It's just too trivial. Like, even if you turn the game on its hardest difficulties, if you don't mod, even the uh, environmental survival is super duper trivial on the hardest default game settings you get. Right? With this being so overburned, I'm going to try and leave the wolf alone. Yeah, no product Zomboid, like, you can turn the coldest to its absolute cold and it makes the game easier. You're going to regret this, dog. Oh, I have very limited ammo. I thought you could freeze to death. So, actually, even with um, Cryogenic Winter, I don't believe you freeze to death. That's probably not a good move, but I'm going to take it anyways. But um, you don't even freeze to death from all that. You'll go down to one health with hypothermia, a lot of gear. but you ultimately have to do something more to... like, get get the injury. This game tests how much encumbrance you can tolerate. Yup. Oh, it makes you want to greed hard. One thing that helps is I'm just going to go and, uh... Occasionally eat stuff. Eelspigs, what you saying? I didn't know you played The Long Dark. So, this is actually my first playthrough. Um, I did one other stream of that, uh, wasn't yesterday, I think it was the day before that. Um. It was in, I find the game very peaceful to play. The atmosphere is nice. Oh yeah, and I actually, I find this game way scarier than Project Zomboid, or even, um, even like when you're dealing with like the Cougars in Red Dead Redemption 2. Like, you run to a cougar in Dreaded Redemption 2, it beelines straight at you and murders your face. Um, so there's no time to, like, build up suspense or any of that. It just... It just assaults you and you either make it or you don't. In this game, when you're, like, looking back and you're, like, you're in not great shape, like, you're freezing to death and trying to struggle with food and you just see that, w like, wolf just tailing you. Like, it's not, it's not closing in to get the kill, it's just, it's just stalking you. And it's just super duper stressful that the, the wolf hanging back there the whole time is way, way, way more intimidating than if it just beelined for you and killed you in two seconds. Or you kill it. We're gonna have to ditch stuff here. Like, there's not many games nowadays who do a good job of that type of stuff where... Like... Aqu uh, Subnautica kind of does okay with it because, sure, when things aggro you, they'll beeline straight to you and try and eat your face. But, kind of where you see them, like, looming in the dark, like, just out of, out, like, where you can barely make out that there's something over there, that's more stressful than, like, again, if it just... Like, hey, that's booking greed. Um, I don't need the fleece mittens. Goodness. Park notice. Yeah, so we're basically just saying the park's closed because it's expletive cold outside. Delete this.
Key to Lake Cabin 3. Okay. So the other book I find, in the survival mode, you had books you can read to learn skills. Okay. There's an instruction manual on how to fish. Learn to craft fishing tackle. Yep, okay. Yeah, no, that's what that was, is that's a knowledge book. end up being useful. We get to finally do something with our crafting bench. So I need scrap metal cured gut. Thought I had cured gut. Oh no, I used a cured gut for the snare. Um so I need a scrap metal to make hooks. Oh that's just to make and I already have the line. Oh so I already have what I need for that. Okay cool. And I'm trying to not grab more things that I need. Or more things I don't need. Because I'm already way past overburdened. Hope nobody needs this anymore. Imagine finding an empty can in the trash and going, I hope nobody needs this anymore. By the way, is one going, uh, let's see, Penguin says, by the way, I wasn't able to mention it as I was busy, but last time you played this, you threw a rock to stun a rabbit. I'm not sure if you did it more than once, but it was a great throw. Oh, yeah, no, it was, um, it almost became a joke that, like, when I first did it, you know, I had to figure out the, the angle for it, but I was probably hitting more rabbits with my throws than not. Come in handy. Uh, those might actually be an upgrade. I remember if I have a bedroll. Like, uh, at the beginning, I was missing everything. But that's not a surprise. And this is a whole bunch of information I don't care about for story building. Wonder if this is any good to eat. Yeah, I like... So this game does a pretty okay job, because they don't give you a reticle, but they do give you something to kind of play off of. You know, where you can't, your character makes, like, the little hand thing. And see, or I think it's like that. And so you can kind of like sit there and go, okay, like the thumb is kind of my, my middle spot. And that's just a matter of the arc up and down. So it's kind of like having a reticle that isn't a reticle. Like it's instead of just being a UI implement in the middle of your screen, they've given a real life approximation. Because a lot of games that's like, we don't have a reticle. And it's just, you got to guess center screen. And you're like, okay... All right, so that's sprain wrist, so I am carrying too much. So drop the shoes. Slightly better pants. All right. I like how miserable he looks. Yeah, he's just like, look, man. I'm bundled up as best again. All right, so I already have a bedroll, so let's drop the spare. Um, Because, like, really, I'm supposed to be carrying about 30 kilograms. I'm at about 43. So we're definitely not doing great there. Let's drop the wood. Drop this other wood. Let's drop the mostly broken hatchet. I got a bunch of these containers. I wish I could combine these. 
just like not even because of like weight saving, just to get rid of the information. You can break down the bedroll for cloth, which you can use to repair other things made of cloth. Yeah, you can do that with clothes too. I actually am sitting on, I think on my character I have like, I have 15 cloth on my character right now. And I'm finding hecking cloth everywhere. So very genuinely, I have these things. I just have too much. Like even the sewing kits I've got too much of. I've got multiple snares. Like that's the problem I'm running into is I'm just hoarding way too much stuff. I've got multiple lamps. I'm going to go ahead and... um. If I harvest that, what do I get? Just scrap metal? I don't need that. Um, I got multiple lamps. Let's go ahead and drop the more broken one. Oh. And fuel remaining? It didn't tell me it's going to give me the fuel remaining. Still overburned. Like, that's that's the problem I have, is I'm just way overburned with everything. I didn't see. I mean, there was the the single spot stove down here, right? I'm not gonna be able to carry this load for much longer. How would I start that with a magnifying glass inside? Let me let me be real, game. How how would I start a fire? Inside a building with a magnifying glass. That didn't work. Okay, I can't. That's that's what I said earlier. Like, it didn't give me the option to start it. That's the reason I was like, wait a second, that doesn't work. You're you're doing so good. That we're we're apparently failing really sorts of bad at starting the fire. I mean, I'm starting to try and start a log on fire with a little bit of money. Because I'd like to cook that wolf meat. Oh man, you cook forever. That'll come in handy. This gear is starting to slow me down. Alright, so I have one hour till that's ready. Um, let's see if we can't read this book. However you do that. I don't see it there. I guess, because it's not showing up in my regular inventory, I'm guessing it doesn't have a weight to it. That, um, because the recipe book, whatever, we just quote-unquote learn it that's done i'm gonna drop the um i don't know so it looks like these are automatically at least like 0. 0.2 let's drop the mostly empty ones right now to ditch a bunch of weight Go to a lamp and just top it off. Yeah, like I do wish I could consolidate these. Alright. Let's drop the extras of those as well. Let's drop some of these extra flares. Keep one on us. Go drink my tea. Oh, 
want to keep the cooking pot and the can opener. Grab some bandages. I didn't bother to check to see if I could just use the antiseptic on the guy and call it a day. Probably should have done that. I'm still super overburned. Is it because I have too much clothing on? Like, what's the deal here? Oh, it might also be because I'm carrying 57, or, yeah, 57 rose hips. That'll, uh... That'll definitely keep us overburned. Emergency stim. Drop a little hydrogen peroxide here. Um, you want to keep the stones, probably keep the plugs. I think we'll be fine because by the time I, um, by the time I eat and drink and everything. More than likely be good. Let's go ahead and put the last one on here real fast. No, don't don't extinguish that. Pick up all the papers and all that stuff. Okay, so lantern doesn't go fuel through fuel very fast. That's good to know. Oh. I can't add the papers as um as like kindling or whatever. I mean, I can't add them as kindling. I can't use them as just like Just straight on fuel. Um, Alright, so you're still good for 38 minutes. Need to get just a tiny hair more just to make sure it actually cooks through. Because it'd be, bummer, it'd be a bummer to get like 99% cooked and not quite finish it. That should do it. Never mind, we already established we can't use the papers for that purpose. do it that meat weight adds up a lot yeah Alright, so let's look at some of our clothes real fast. There's anything here that needs a patch up. I've got most of it kept in really good shape. So let's see, 70% is looking like the lowest we've got. Probably a total waste to repair it, but you know, whatever. I've got more materials I need to do with and time to burn till it's daylight again. 100%.
Oh, yeah. Maybe standing here the whole time, just running the lamp, was not the move. It's fine. I literally have a bunch of stuff laying on the floor down there. Drank a bunch of that to lower the weight. Eat her venison. Seven hundred calories sounds like too much to waste. All right, so let's turn that light off. And take a quick nappy nap. All right, still pretty late. Nap a little longer. Apparently storming real bad outside. Raining risks still. Um, Alright, well let's take our lamp real fast. And top it off again. Oh, I still have the stupid rabbit. That's dumb of me. It's fine. Alright, so let's... We got the lamp. Does the container go away when it's empty? I'm thinking it probably does. Yeah, so the container went away when we emptied it. That'll do. 0.5. Um, Alright, so we are super thirsty. And you're hungry, so we'll eat one of those wolf planks. We'll eat a second wolf flank. Act two. That we get if there's achievements or something. I have to worry about that. Wait. I can actually use my number keys? Why wasn't this explained to me before? Alright, well, awesome. Alright. Sorry, I'm saying hello from Sunhaven. Alright, so I probably shouldn't be traveling with the bear out in this. But I don't want to stay around. We're going to move on. Um, have I played Sunhaven yet? No, I haven't, but it is on my list of games to play. It's one of those ones I debated breaking out because it just... I think it just... Didn't it just full release? He was raising my hands like... Pro tip. So, um, please don't uh, give me hints on that stuff. But yeah, uh, I figure there's a good chance of that. It's just a matter of whether real logic and game logic are one and the same. Okay, you're a rock. Oh, I thought I was going the other way. That's, that's fine. We're going north now. Uh, which would be this way? My face north? Yeah. I'm surprised I don't have like a compass like you hold up and like you see like the little arrow or whatever. I'm assuming what Evil Space Monkey is saying is that in the game like they they seek shelter.
Because that's what they do in real life. They don't go out hunting. There's too much noise. They can't properly smell things or anything like that. So, like, very genuinely, they'll just go in. It's one of the reasons why they believe human beings find the sound of rain soothing. Is that you don't usually have to worry about too many predators out hunting during uh, rainstorms. It's just all the noise and all that makes it very hard for predators to hunt, so it's more beneficial for them to just like lay low and conserve their energy until the weather clears. So it allowed for people to get better rest during those periods because, you know, the various things that would normally attack or whatever them, they didn't have to worry about. Alright, so we're still going this way. Hi, corpse. I don't get why you're kneeling against the wall. Convict journal entry. Uh, they got me set up with the usual hard cases. Nothing I'd seen before, but this place feels like the end of some kind of road. I uh, have to find a way back anyhow. Storms out of the, this way are the worst I've seen. Days go by, same wind blowing. They packed us away. Pop. Froze us up here. Too cold to work. Just sit thinking all the time. Stuck with what I'd done. I've lost track. Yeah, okay. I'm trying to hug the wall because it's blocking the wind, so I'm not getting cold as fast. Alright, now we're not getting much help from that. Pretty soon I've got to collect some sticks or something to start a fire. I need to find some place to escape this cold. It's fine. I was thinking the same thing. I could see since it was like the escaped convicts and all that. I could see like if it was another human being did it to that person. But I don't I mean maybe if you're leaning against it and your legs give out, maybe that could be an excuse for it. Do I have do I need to make a fire? I do not. That's okay. Hypothermia in this game seems to take forever to actually do its job. I would a hypothermia risk. Where are literally all the sticks in this forest? There you are. Alright, those are all big branches. Let's see if I can't go over here. To block the wind. Is wind blocked? Okay, the wind is blocked. here. Break it down. Go back over here. Chuck my extra sticks in the fire. Because the more, the more I make the fire bigger, the faster it heats me. And then plus the longer it lasts. So I've got one in-game hour for it.
All right, in the meantime, I keep carrying this stupid rabbit around and forgetting that I haven't harvested it yet. Where did you go, rabbit? Did I check you on the ground back there? Did I check the rabbit on the ground? I mean, fair if I did. I don't remember doing it as all. I guess I did. Alright, well, that's easy enough. Yeah, no, apparently I did. That's fine. Yeah. And our branch over here. Did the wind change directions? <sighs> it changed directions that took my fire from having an hour and something left to six minutes. Like, that's like no wind. Why did you die to like nothing? And so the animals are all back out. Okay. That said, we're coming up along here. That said, without the blizzard, it is warm enough that when I shield myself from the wind, I am warming up. Alright, and pretty soon we'll be able to go inside and then won't have to worry about this crap. I fully expected us to see the bear by now. Because it feels like the bear is going to have some scripted encounters. That forced me to shoot it. Well, shoot at it, I guess. To startle it. Oh, you scared me, weird drums that are making noise for no apparent reason. Cardboard boxes, place to sleep, some newspaper. What have we here? Or a fire starter. Those aren't going to be an improvement over what I've got. All right. This time about things I can find in the world. Birch bark. Prepare birch bark before brewing into a natural tea to gradually restore some lost condition. Okay. You take clothing and rip them for cloth and burn them. Um, I can't burn the cloth that I've seen, but I can rip them for cloth for repairing stuff. 
I haven't I haven't had much problems with like um Tinder in this mode. Survival we struggled a little bit when I was playing on an advanced map, but this mode Tinder's been pretty easy to come by. Like every one of these buildings is just full of stuff I can burn. Uh crew warning. Yeah, they're basically like, yo, the dam, the dam is in terrible shape. Stop hanging. Carter Hydro Strange. Okay. Yeah. So they're um. There's the key to get into the dam, and they're just basically warning you, saying, "Hey, the dam isn't safe." This stuff will come in handy. Pretty sure we have better boots than that. All right, and we're going to stop for just a second because we're about to get hit with an ad break. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do as I didn't get this set up beforehand. So I'm going to do it now, which is uh, we'll bring up Nitro Stream Racing. For those who missed yesterday, the sponsored segment, uh, we messed with this thing called Nitro Stream Racing. Um, it's kind of the same purpose as like Marbles on Stream, but uh, pretty straightforward game. It should be coming up on the screen right now. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we will select this track. And basically what happens is if you're either logged in on their website or you do exclamation mark play, uh, you'll get into it. It's kind of like Mario Kart, but like marbles on stream. So for those who have seen marbles on stream, you do exclamation mark play to join in. A little marble rolls through, you place, and all that kind of stuff. And then you can use like the points you earn to make your marble look fancy and make sounds and all sorts of stuff. Same idea, but um, instead this is like Mario Kart. But uh, I'll give it a little less, like about a minute. Um, for people to jump in, and then after that we'll start the race. That way the race can run while the ads are happening, and then we can get back into it. Because I don't want anyone to miss any of the um, like the actual content going on, like the actual like, you know, the actual story. Just because either they can't afford to, or they don't want to pay, you know, Amazon or whatever, or don't have a good ad block or whatever the thing is. I don't want them to miss out on stuff because it's not like I want to have ads. It's just the way Twitch be these days. Anyways, you'll be starting here in just a second, so last call. If you're going to jump in, you need to do exclamation mark play or log into their website and do that stuff. But uh, we're going to go ahead and get things started. Now, there's another thing that happens is as the race goes through, in for a quick raise, then back to Sunhaven. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of those games that I keep saying I need to do. The thing that scared me on Sun... Was it Sunhaven? No, I think it was Kinseed. Um, I don't make it all about like numbers or whatever, but very genuinely, um, looks like I'm leading and Rum Shackle just immediately got destroyed by a bulldozer. But um, I was looking at Kinseed to maybe play yesterday on stream, and I got kind of scared away from it because on all of Twitch it had two viewers. Um, and while I certainly do not do jump into a bunch of games that aren't like... You know, they're not the meta, they're not something that has a huge audience. There's a difference from a game that has, like, literally no audience. It doesn't give me any chance for new people to find a channel and all that. And that's fine once in a while. But, um, doing that too much, you know, you're gonna have some people who... Their work schedule changes, their interests change, you know, they get into a relationship so they're more busy, you know, doing something that's 100% positive and wholesome and whatnot. But, um, ultimately it means, like, a net loss in viewership for the channel. So if I'm not bringing in new people, you know, channel channel gets smaller. Uh, and that becomes harder to, you know, hard to pay my bills. So I can certainly play stuff that's, like, not, like, doesn't have much viewership from time to time. But I gotta, I need to adjust the volume on this game. i zoom out, and I'll try to adjust before we do the next, like, we're looking at the one race this break, but once the round's over, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the volume. And just try turning it down. I would rather to be like no in-game sound and have those barrels be so obnoxiously loud. Hey Mukao, how's it going? It looks like I've got first place, Rum Shackle is in second, Burnin' Sun is in third. Um, we still got the bots here. 
Um, and for the record, the reason we're doing ones with bots is that's how you unlock new tracks. Is it's it's chat versus the bots. Um, whoever takes first place wins. Um, it looks like Rumshackle may have taken first. Uh, Mook has a oh quick quick hello. About to get picked up for a job. Gotcha. I'll lurk though. Give the extra number. Hey, I appreciate the extra number. All right. So before it goes anywhere, settings, audio. Effects volume. Let's turn those down and see if it makes any kind of difference for the future. Yeah, seems like a fun little game. Yep, so chat did win. So Rumshackle took first, Burn and Sun took third. I had the top speed at 93.39 kilometers per hour, which is, I think, the slowest we've had for a top speed. Uh, Pengman had 73.29 meters of air travel. Uh, Cars hit went to Sir Ice Mage at 20, and no one cares about any of the bot stuff. So we're going to pop out of here. I'm going to go to Long Dark. And then I have to toggle that. Um, I just click back in the game. So, okay, good. It did go right through the right game. All right. So back to the game. Yeah. It's a, it's a fun little game, but kind of... I see it filling the same kind of thing that Marvel's on stream fills for me. Uh, which is that, like, when we have the ad break, I can just break it out real fast. We can do that for a couple... Oh, this place has seen better days. Yeah, for like a minute or two. I don't think that chain link fence would actually stop a bear very long. Unfinished business with the bear, he said. So cold. It's fine. Let's get inside the uh so cold. Just want to lay down for a bit. With as much as they talked about it's like, oh Hello? Anyone here? This place looks like it's been empty for a while. Yeah, we're there, um... Tell you about how unstable the dam is. I'm I'm expecting something to happen with the dam, like part of it to cave in, and... Maybe that causes us an injury we gotta treat, or... Separates us from our walk back, since having a clean walk back, it like, goes through the wilderness with the bear. Use this. What hat do I have? Yeah, that'll be better than the hats I have. Point nine. Yeah, when I patch that up, it'll probably almost certainly be better. This will come in handy. Pretty sure I have better than that, too. Let's check. It's hard to remember what was better... Like, what, what I got better on the other character. Point nine. Seems like the Quakes did some damage here. Must be what the old guy meant about unstable. Wonder if this is any good to eat. Mm. 
bear will charge at you. You dodge. The bear hits the dam. The dam collapses. I find it interesting you can't open the top of the toolbox. Just the drawers. Trash can letter. I'm so blanked off at you. You told me the forest talkers were legit. What the? The admin office key. Bill Jackson's seen some wolves around the area. Last week, Emily said she thought she saw a bear skulking around the camp. I'm not convinced. Um. It isn't those Brer House thugs trying to scare us off. But just in case, keep this flare gun handy. It's the closest thing we have to a firearm. Excellent. Yes, yeah, so I'm assuming the flare gun startles the animals. Still eat this. Those birds are some guys in a trench coat? Of course, three of them. Stand on each other's shoulders. No, don't take the time to do that. That's just a waste of fuel. Reddit's down, it's the end of the internet. Or the beginning. It, thank you. That'll come in handy. A decent thin wool sweater. I imagine that's not better than what I'm already wearing. It's better. <clears throat> Something's gotta go. Oh man, if your lamp goes out down here, that is a uh, what have we here? That is not a good time. Bad news bears. Yeah, outages happen. Wouldn't surprise me. Maybe all sorts of stuff like just their um. Just their ISP or their host, whoever's having a problem. Or that they've done some update that didn't go well. Is it food or a ragged thin sweater? That's not gonna be an upgrade, because the thin sweater is about 0.7. And I've got one that's like 0.9. You sure give me a bunch of fishing tackle? Okay, so it had us look at the. Looks like this thing isn't opening unless I can get the power working again. So 
that's a problem for later. We have to get those radio parts. So it got shut down for safety. We'll look at the wool mittens. I think I can use this. It is interesting on the story mode, like, you genuinely want to loot everything because they'll put, like, keys and important items just in random shelf that you have no reason, like, need to look to otherwise, other than that it could have that. I could use this. Alright, so the decent, so the dress shirt's no good. We have gloves. slightly worse than the ones we have, which is almost purely just their state of repair. So, point nine. That's what I figured. So when I repair the other one, not be terrible. It'll be better than the one I'm wearing, I think. Already went that way. There's a staircase over here somewhere. Not here. I think it's up here. Yeah. So let's check down first, and then we'll check up. All right. Well, down is a bust because that door is apparently a lie. All those hats cut the top off one. Make a face warmer. Yeah. I do appreciate this game at least lets you layer. Like, um, you can put a lot of clothing. Like, if I find a shirt, I can actually put two shirts on top. Like, it's not like, no, no, no. You can't do that. Now, like, in real life, you could absolutely put more than two shirts on if it's cold enough. Like, it would make sense. You know, it'd negative. Like, it'd impact mobility a little bit, but. You know, being slightly. Slightly more cumbersome in movement versus freezing to death. You know. Let's not freeze to death. Crumpled note. Uh, the penmanship of the notes suggests the author was in a hurry. I left it in the cave, head back out of, from the dam, follow the river, look for the cave near the clearing uh, with their hunt, the hunter's blind. Yeah, like a hidden stash or something. Aid station. Well, that sounds like what the traffic needs. Hope nobody needs this anymore. I need the medical key. That's inconvenient. What have we here? So I'm seeing st plenty of stuff mention mobility. But generally speaking, warmth has been my priority more than anything. This will come in handy. Oh, I don't want the book right now. I'm worried about carry weight.
I already have a pry bar. Found some radio parts. With the elevators acting up again, we've checked the mechanicals. Oh, they seem fine. Must be a glitchy electrical system. Keep an eye on it. It's the only real way to the turbine room. If you're going to get stuck, it'll be a long walk before we can get back into that control room. All right. Usually it's in the 20s to 30s. Okay, so it's about 48. Come on. Forty-eight, fifty-eight. Too far. Okay, forty-eight, fifty-eight, eight. So bring it around to forty-eight. Bring it back around to fifty-eight. And open. That'll come in handy. Money and bullets. What do you mean I can't take the fish? Could end up being useful. A rugged, ragged light shell? We'll have to see what that even is. Okay, can I refuel my light or I should have fuel on me. Um, ba -ba 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 let's find our light. Cool. And what else do we find? Um, is it 0. 0.7? Yeah, that's not even close. Alright, so it looks like you've got everything here. It's time to get the medical. Get the medical cabinet. So we don't have any options about repairing the radio. Um, we have the mystery of the lake to find the cache. Um, we have the snare stuff. Collection of miscellaneous electronic odds end torn from old radios. Carter Hydro Medical Supplies. Weighs nothing. Industrial strength antibiotics and very strong painkillers. Dangerous. You can get hooked on this stuff. Let's hope we don't need it. So 
So my new mission is to get back to the uh, the trapper before he dies. But first we look upstairs. Probably won't open. Nope. Fair enough. Gonna go on a hunt here. And say we have to deal with a heckin' bear when we get outside. Maybe I'll be spared it because of Blizzard, but my guess is it'll be scripted events. Alright, so before we open the door, panic save. Because I have a fight feeling I'm going to open this door, and it'll either be here. Like, we don't know if it'll be here, but somewhere along the way. Check in on that old trapper. Alright, new plan. I can't see anything. Um, I'm going to have to make my character sleep till it's a bit brighter. What I can do here is we'll go like this. Bed. Bedroll. That's where we sleep tonight. Um, Alright, before we do that, drink our water. Snack a little bit. Think that'll do. Let's extinguish this. Okay. I need to sleep till it's visible outside. Alright. Just trying to keep all my stuff up. Okay, so now we'll uh we'll take our rifle out. Call it a hunch. Alright. So the Mystery Lake Cache, which is mostly on the way back. I'm assuming we will have to do something to permanently deal with the bear. Like, it probably won't just be shoot it. It'll probably be something like we get a trap, or we make it fall off something, like a cliff, or we get stuck under something. I don't think that, I was curious if it made a um impact in my mobility at all. I don't need the deer right now. So it's set a cave along the river, so I don't know if it's up there or down the other way. I 
I'm curious if during the story I'll end up having to survive for any real length of time someplace. Because by and large, it's almost been as fast as I can reasonably get from A to B. Okay. I'm guessing the cave was... Yeah, the cave was probably on the other side? Maybe it's up here. I do think while we're up here, we should circle and grab that cave, though. Even though we're overburdened, just to at least get the, um, the thing done. We got birds circling over there. Could be a wolf has killed something. Oh, they're circling the person's corpse here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I had to come from the other side and go up. We might be able to go up here. If it's all the way back there, I don't think I'm going to walk that whole way. You know, it's like, why aren't you hurrying the trapper? Look, man. You gave me quest objectives. There's not a big timer or something that says you have three days. I'm just assuming I have all the time in the world. But that deer didn't put up much of a fight. Was oh, that the cave? Um, find the cache in the landscape. There's so, there's so supply cache is hidden in the mystery lake. The most left by hunters and campers. Some left off the grid preppers. I mean, I think it's like way here in the back. Ow. work well well what do we have here okay and we will save Just sneak around that wolf and go check this out. I'm not too worried because the wolf does cause trouble. I'm just going to pull out my rifle and shoot it. So 
size, I'm pretty sure it's plenty content with what it's got right now. Okay. This stuff will come in handy. Play cabin two. It sure being like at first like oh no the bullets are gonna be like super super uh super rare and that's like you know they're actually not being that rare with it. Like it's definitely not one you want to go running around popping shots off at everything you see moving. But definitely doesn't feel like I can't use the gun unless in an absolute emergency. I like the whole solemn feel of this, as well as it feels like, um, you do feel fairly isolated. Because sure, you know, you walk around and you meet people, but by and large, almost everyone you meet has been, like, basically, you know, like, I'm dead kind of thing, or I can't do anything, I'm helpless. So you do feel like you're just kind of wandering around just trying to stay alive. It's kind of a point we hit with Subnautica when we we're comparing Subnautica to Subnautica Below Zero and like going, okay, you know, now that I finished both games, I was like, okay, I did like Subnautica the original more. Um, and I th think it was Burning Sun who had mentioned that they felt the, um, the thing that made Subnautica feel better was the more feeling of isolation. Uh, which I agree with 100%. I do feel like actually adding NPCs to the second one kind of took away from the game. Um, like, just genuinely, that's how I feel about it. I also feel that's, um... Like, that's... It kind of gave me something that could actually vocalize my concerns with Project Zomboy and the NPCs, the exact same thing. That I fear that adding NPCs will change the feel of the game to no longer be Lone Survivor, whatever you want to say. I need to be going way far west. Which game add NPCs? Um, Subnautica Below Zero. So basically, when you played Subnautica the entire game, you're pretty much alone on this ocean planet. You've got this disease, and you're trying to, you know, cure the disease... You're trying to get it so you can safely get off the planet and all that kind of stuff. So it's like this desperation feeling. Versus Subnautica Below Zero, you're trying to figure out what happened to your sister. That there's an accusation she died due to her own neg like negligence kind of thing. And you're like, no, that's not my sister, that's just not reasonable. Um, so you're trying to figure out the mystery of that. And then... Otherwise, like... You're trying to kind of get this, uh, Wonder if this, is any good to eat. this, like, alien out of your head that shows up. But I know, like, you could sit there the whole time and be like, all right, but I always have the option to go, you know what, never mind. Like, let's see if I can't just phone home or whatever. Now, granted, they make it so they present it as if she can't, that she's dependent on the other person for a ride or whatever. But it, it felt more like just... Doing something that was interesting, your character, not strictly survival. But um, they had a couple of NPCs, like there's a lady, I think her name was like Marguerite or Margarita or something like that. Um, but just having those other people just out there living their lives on the same planet as well. Even if it's like a horrible, horrible life. But the fact that they're out there as well. 
just made it not feel as quiet and isolated. Not that I think it's a bad game or anything. It's just comparing apples to apples between the two games. It's very clearly like one of the games, you know, you felt way more isolated and alone. Then there's other issues with Subnautica Below Zero, like I liked the vehicles in the first game way more in the second one. Like all the vehicles in the first one felt like they had a very strong intended purpose that they worked well at. The second one, you almost felt forced to use some of them at certain times. I like, I never actually used the uh, the sea truck, like for all of its extra bonus stuff. Like, the teleport and all that, I felt no need to do it. It's like, literally, I only built the default D-Truck and, like, one of its upgrades, and that was it, the entire run. Otherwise, I just use the prawn suit for everything. And then the snow fox is terrible. I, I don't like the snow, the snow fox. It felt like something I had to use, but I didn't like doing it at any point in time. Which I honestly think the only problem was the, the movement left to right. They made it sluggish, I think, to make the intent that when you were boosting, that it would feel like you're going faster, so you couldn't turn. Uh, but all it made it feel is like it's hor like horribly unresponsive. And if it's so much guys like a drop of water anywhere near it, the whole thing ground to a halt. So it just kind of felt bad. I'm still going too far south. I need to be going west more. That said, getting these antibiotics and back, there's no way this is the end of the chapter. Like, there's going to be more than this. We're probably going to get the antibiotics. We're going to have to figure out something with the bear. Um, there'll also be something that bars us from kind of going to the next place we'll have to deal with, whether it's, you know, more hiking equipment or something. That was a big cave. I hadn't anticipated this. Let's... Well, Actually, not what I want. Yeah, so I have to go out and around the whole way. I figure there's probably a cache here. I don't see it, though. And that looks too steep to climb. The game does limit how, how steep you can climb pretty badly. No, apparently I can't go over that. Alright, that's fine. Um, let's try to get to the top of the hill. Because walking along the side of it seems like it'd be more of a problem. Interestingly, there's an area behind it. But I don't think I can climb down without falling over and getting hurt. Don't fall down. No. 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 Okay.
Now with the wolf, I took the time, let it close in, and then shot it directly in the face and killed it in one hit. I feel like with the bear, it's point fire, point fire, point fire. As fast as I can get the bullets into that bear, I'm going to want to do that. Because something tells me it's not going to be one hit and gone. I mean, unless I hit it and I immediately see a turn and burn, at which point then I know I'm good. But I'm not anticipating that working that way. When well, the fact that I've not seen the bear so far means I'm guessing we'll run into the bear near the cabin. Because, like, that last encounter was very clearly scripted. It was a cinematic. So you might have where you can bump into it in the wild at random. But to give you that sense of being hunted. It's probably going to be when we get places it'll, it'll loom behind us and do all sorts of stuff. We already visited that place. Uh, so it's steep hills over there and there. Try this way. You could also easily do a thing like where I have this gap in the mountains here. It could be possible that there's like one or two paths you can get here. That you cross a certain threshold, it spawns the bear ahead of you. That way you're kind of forced to interact with the bear to get rid of it. Aw, oh, come on, I had that one. It's fine, I don't really have the carry away for a bunch of rabbits anyways. Did I mention I don't like that the pick up and the throw things buttons are the same button? Because I really don't like that. And no, you can't change it. Oh, it bounced. Let's not waste our time with this. Got myself an additional rabbit. I need to be going this way. This right? Um, yeah, we're probably not meant to go over this mountain, but that's what I'm gonna do. Might hurt ourselves. We're in the story. Uh, we're in Act Two. One thing I find interesting is like you can eat all sorts of, like moldy and spoiled food, and it seems to be perfectly fine in the game. And as a reminder, this is my first playthrough, so I just ask that, you know, no backseating, none of that kind of stuff, the typical. Peters will be shot in sight. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, realistically, you know, if it's someone who's been around and who, like, backseats a little bit, like, I'll usually be like, hey, you know, I need you to, uh, like, need you to tone it down. 
and if they don't get a hint, then they get timed out, and if they still don't get a hint, then maybe they don't get to stick around here any longer. Um, if I see first time chatter, hey streamer, you have to go over here and go to the cave and do the thing, uh, they'll just be banned. Like, unless I ask specifically saying, like, hey, we're stuck, like, you know, give hint. Because that's the kind of stuff that ruins games. I was just, glad you're still enjoying it. The story is great. Yep. Is this a particularly lengthy game? I don't think so. Um, the first act where we didn't know how to do the controls and we didn't really have an idea of how to work through the survival and all that. Um, and we probably got through that in five, six hours, I would guess, somewhere in that ballpark. Because we did some survival at the beginning and we didn't know what we were doing. Uh, so then we went to the story, we did the act. And then, you know, after that, we uh, went back to survival because it didn't feel like we had enough time to do another act. Really depends on the pace. Um, it can be pretty long if you're if you're big on exploring. Yeah, because it did notice you, like, and also on how much you carry. Anytime I'm overburned, it takes me forever to get anywhere. Yeah, so it looks like I'm being forced to go around this thing. We might deal with a bear up here. Because I would have expected to see the bear by now. Because the gimmick behind this this one is that supposedly we got this bear hunting us. Um, that it hurt this trapper. And the trapper, I guess, is important for us to figure our way out. I don't actually know how. But yeah. Clearly the bear is behind you. Dog oh, shit. Oh, that's smart. Take it easy. You're pretty banged up. You're probably a bit delirious too. I just hey, got shot of some heavy antibiotics. Might feel funny for a while, but it'll help. And then you're gonna need some time to recover. Time? <laughs> we don't have time. We need to get a message out. It's important. Message? You mean to your friend? Asking for medical help? Never mind that. Help me up so I can look at the radio. I'll see if the parts you brought back are any good. It's a military shortwave, isn't it? Maybe. I know a bit about radios. It's not like any surplus I've ever seen. Ah, damn it! Well, the parts look fine. So, whatever's wrong with the radio goes deeper than that. What could it be? Ah, something to do with the power. <laughs> Fuses. Transformers, maybe. We have bigger problems to deal with first. That bear's down there, hunting us. He's a smart old bastard. He'll keep us from getting out, getting supplies, finding help. Eventually, he'll either get us or starve us out. I gotta lay down. Help me back to the bed. Uh, whatever happened to Grey Mother? Uh, we gave her tons and tons and tons of supplies to survive. Um, and sorry, one moment. I'm trying to make sure this isn't something you got to deal with. Uh, but you gave me one what? Just had some I had to deal with real fast. All right. But, um, so he gave her a whole bunch of food, like, literally weeks worth of food and firewood and all that. Um, but, like, she helped and all that kind of stuff. But she's like, you need to go and deal with your own thing. Like, because the tunnel, which was her only way in and out, because, you know, she's, she's elderly and dealing with all that, was collapsed. 
So the only way in and out of that town she was in was um, climbing down the side of a mountain, and she's like, I can't do that. Um, so the game heavily implies that she's just going to kind of live out however long she lives out out there, and that is what it is. The dam was pretty busted up, like you said. The place was cracked open by the quake years ago and never recovered. I was already half dead at the time. Meaning? The dam dates back to the 60s. Industrialists from the mainland wanted to use it to power a mining town he was planning to build. But their bottom fell out of the price of coal. And he had to abandon those plans. Some fool tried to get it running again in the 80s. But then the forest talkers got involved and that was the end of it. Pretty sure the quakes finished the job once and for all. So, who are the forest talkers? Eco-terrorists. Activists, some call them. Depends on who you talk to, I guess. Why are they out here? Well, they've been active for years. They come and go. Mostly here to throw a wrench in the works for a variety of resource projects. Mining. Forestry, mainly. They want Great Bear to remain a pristine wilderness. <laughs> you don't sound like you agree. Oh, I have no love for industry. But this is the way of the world. You have something they want. They take it. There's nothing much you can do to stop it. Well, I'll see if I can adjust it. Dam, I'd say the forest talkers are still active. Well, that's good news for you. Keep your eyes open for supply caches they might have left behind. Yeah, I'll see if I can adjust it. I'm assuming it's the dialogue primarily. Um... Try bumping up the dialogue, just the dialogue by itself. Because most of the other thing, like the, the rabbit squeals have seemed plenty, plenty loud. Can you tell me anything about where we are? Well, this whole area takes its name from Mystery Lake nearby. It's kind of a wilderness preserve. Though you wouldn't know it from the logging trucks. Huh. Not much around there, apart from some lake cabins that'll be locked up for the season. You've already seen the dam. Railroad passes through the area. Trains come through once in a while. Fewer every year. The whole area is mostly dead. Most of the year. You sound like you like it that way. <laughs> yeah. I sure do. So, no other people living out here? You gotta understand. The collapse destroyed Great Bear. There's nothing here to stay for. You need anyone out here? Chances are they're hiding from something. Or someone. And you? Why are you here? I have my reasons. What's this unfinished business between you and the bear? Ah. <laughs> Me and the old bear. Every time we meet, we make a little trade. And what do you trade? Each other's blood, mostly. Sounds like a losing proposition. Oh, I'm sure it will be. For one of us. Alright. The main reason I'm out here is... I'm looking for someone. Ha! <laughs> you won't find too many people out here. That's kind of the whole point. This is someone important to me. A woman. She may have passed through here a few days ago. She might have been injured. What makes you think she came through here? She passed through the tunnel leaving Milton, but then... I'm not sure. Well, the roads from Milton don't lead this way. Wherever she's headed, you'll have to cross the mountains to find her. Not an easy path, even for the most experienced outdoorsman. I'll do whatever it takes. You won't get far with that bear on the prowl. What we need is to get my radio up and running, so we can find out what the hell is going on. Maybe someone out there has seen your friend. The woman I'm looking for. She might be on her way to a place called Perseverance Mills. You know it? Yeah. Shit nothing town, north part of the island. Uh, sounds about right. Yeah, I know it. We were on our way there. 
my passenger and I, when we crashed. I need to find a way to get there, or contact her. See if she's all right. You sure she's alive? Yeah, I'm sure. Well, normally I'd make some calls on the old shortwave. Whole area's been damn quiet since those lights in the sky. Even the wildlife's acting strange. But I might have an idea. Okay, so we're going to take two seconds to pause. Because uh, it is getting to be time for the next ad break. So, we're going to go ahead and get our race going in Nitro Stream Racers and see what we can make happen. So we're going to pop in here, select a track. Um, and you'll want to do exclamation mark play to join in the race. Or if you're logged on the website, it should auto join you, I believe, is my understanding. But yeah, I'll give that a, give it a little bit to go. And that's just because once per hour we have our little ad break. We do that to disable pre-rolls because Twitch doesn't give us a chat a uh, choice of no ads. It's one type of ads or the other. And unfortunately, I found that the pre-rolls are very, very detrimental to channel growth. So we got to deal with what we got to deal with. But yeah, so we'll, get a, we'll give it like a minute for everyone to get in here. And then we'll go ahead and start things. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to click this button up here to deal with something else I got going on in the background. And boom, and I'll deal with the rest of that later. Okay. All right, so last call that if you want to get in here, you need to do exclamation mark play. So I'm going to get a couple more seconds. We're going to start this race. All right. And we are going. Did it work? Uh, I can't tell. Because the the name list is too far. And I, yeah, I think I think there's certain sound effects that aren't respecting volume settings. Because it seems it seems like, by and large, most of it's fine. All right. Yeah, Hobgoblin, you're here. You're actually in fourth place. You'll see if you have the website open. You'll see your place up here in the corner. Let's see. Oh, I had to set up separately. I'll do the next one. Yep. Now you're here. Yeah, so it's kind of like a Mario Kart thing. The big thing to notice is when you see your name down here where it says Megas, or if you see your name over here on the left and there's like a little symbol along this column, then you can use exclamation mark Mega to use special abilities. And they're like Mario Kart abilities, like the equivalent of like red shells and all sorts of stuff. Like I think the pigeon is effectively the um, the red shell. Or actually, I think it's more like, was it the blue or purple shell? Yeah, so Kiono Chick has a special ability that can do exclamation mark uh, Mega. And that would uh, trigger your usability. So is it kind of hands off like marble? Partially. Um, like I said, you'll you'll get power ups as your cars drive through it, and you can you can manually do those. So like right now, Kiono Chick has an ability they can do. And for the record, it's us like streamer and chat versus the bots. Where if we win, we all collectively win. Um, if the bots win, then we all lose. Uh, and if we win enough rounds, then we can uh, get a new map. So Sir Ice Mage has a special ability, so like just used it there. Um, actually, Sir Ice Mage has multiple abilities, so have at it. Uh, the Escape has an ability they can use. Right now, the bots are currently winning. We have the Ocho is currently winning. That said, you can be entirely hands-off if you want. It's like Dread Pirate 69 also has a special ability to rock and roll with. We got Dar Strider in second. Uh, that's going to be our best bet to hopefully getting a win. We got to knock out the Ocho. So hopefully Dar Strider can overtake him. And I can make the camera just follow the leader, but there's lots of times that people aren't using their abilities or whatever that the lead card just kind of stays in the lead. So it does look like Dar Strider has overtaken uh, the Ocho, and the Escape is in second place. Um, I'm in fourth, and we got a bot in third and fifth. Okay. Hey, Vitez, how's it going? Yeah, we'll just be doing this until the ad break is over. So it looks like Bippity is the only bot currently there. Unfortunately, they are in first place, but we can knock out Bippity. Almost the entire rest of the top 10 is chat. All right, apparently I have taken the lead. 
Yeah, someone knocked Bippity out, so we got a whole lot of people before the next bot. And Bippity apparently is struggling for first. Yeah, we got a whole bunch of people all clumped up. That's going to knock some people out. Uh, CK Hawk is now in the lead with Burning Sun and then myself in third. We did find placement is a little... Thank you, Squise, for subscribing for two months. Thank you, Squise, for the Tier 1 sub. You all... Sorry. Thank you, Squise, for the Tier 1 sub. I do really appreciate the continued support. It does mean a lot. You've been supporting the channel for two months, and I appreciate that. Hope you're enjoying your advertising free viewing as well as access to the emotes, so thank you again for that. Um, so yeah, so the one thing I was going to say is sometimes on this particular map, we've noticed the placement gets a little buggy. Um, and it seems to be when cars take shortcuts, they don't update the roster on the left-hand side, but um, when they cross the finish line, it corrects. So we've had a couple upsets where a bot took a lead, exactly like Ocho just did, because Ocho took a shortcut, and it didn't know what place they were in, which is very annoying. <laughs> Because it looked like we solidly had that. Um, please stop vibrating screen. So we did not win that one because the bots are weird. But uh, this is a beta if you can't see from the giant beta build thing on the top. It's been a lot of fun. But it does, it does have some bugs. And we have the thing where it gets stuck in slow motion, so I just hit that. Alright, so we had the Ocho in first, CK Hawk in second, Sir Ice Mage in third, um, and all the special things went to bots, so we don't care. Alright, so we're just going to go ahead and hide that, hit this, and then unhide it, and we'll get... That's not what I want. Don't do that. Don't go back to that game. Go to this game. Um, now CK Hawk, I didn't, we don't have auto mod has, auto mod hasn't triggered on anything. Yeah, no, I, um, like I see that you have post, you, uh, posted multiple exclamation mark megas. Yeah, no, there's no, auto mod didn't trigger on anything. So I don't, I don't know what went on with that. What do you mean the wildlife's acting strange? You live out here long enough, you get a sense for the patterns in nature. And right now, the patterns are broken. Critters aren't behaving the way they should. It's like they're spooked or something. No, not spooked. They're changed somehow. Best way I can say it is, things don't feel right. Um, so they had to wait? Yeah, that might have been just Twitch detecting as people spamming. Yeah, that's probably just Twitch has a thing that spam prevention. You had an idea. What do you have in mind? Well, it's a long shot. But I may know how we can find out about your friend. I'm listening. This shortwave. I use it to keep an ear open for what's going on. So how do we get the radio working? There's no reason I can see why it shouldn't be working. Well, what about more parts? another radio we might find another radio but I think I have a better idea problem is it's no use with the old bear out there your path to a working radio and our survival is through that bear we have to find a way to deal with him first okay so we have to deal with the bear. But you're half dead, and rifle shots don't seem to do much. So... That's because the old bear is special. I've been hunting and trapping for years, and I've shot a lot of bears. But I've never encountered anything quite like him. A special bear like that needs special magic to bring him down. Uh, magic? Don't worry, I'm not delirious. I don't mean literal magic, but we need the old knowledge, the old ways. What do you have in mind? There's an old story, local legend maybe, 
about one of the original settlers of this place. Spence. The story goes something like this. Spence shows up and sets up his claim shanty with his young family in tow. For generations, the family had been traders in the Hudson's Bay Company. Old voyageur stock, they say. Hard people. Survivors. One day, a bear shows up and menaces the homestead. Spence takes a shot at the bear, but it doesn't seem to do anything. Bear wanders off, but Spence's wife, she takes a turn, slips into fever. For days, delirious, she screams about the bear. Local doctor can't do a thing for her, neither can the priest. A week later, a hired hand goes missing, and they find him. Just a body, ravaged. Spence fears for his wife and kids. He's convinced some evil bear spirit is trying to kill them. Revenge for some slight in the past, maybe. Something in the family history. Spence gets some men together for a hunting party. They go out into the muskeg and track something big for days. Eventually corner it. Ah, it's a big son of a bitch. Biggest bear they'd ever seen. Man killer. Story goes, they empty their rifles into the bear and it just walks away. Like it's made of stone. They call it the demon bear after that. Wife's dying now. Spence believes the bear's evil spirit is killing her, eating her soul. He can't get anyone to join him on another hunting party. They know rifles don't work. So he forges a spear, like a boar spear, but bigger. From some old Hudson's Bay trapper's wisdom, apparently. He goes out into the muskeg, disappears for days, and then one morning, the wife's fever breaks, but nothing from Spence. Some men go out looking for him, and they find him, half dead, blood all over him, body torn almost in two. The bears work. The last thing he says is, Spear stole the bear's soul. My wife is now free. And then he's gone. Do you want me to make a big pointy stick and poke so, a bear? Did he kill the bear? Nobody knows. Never found a carcass. They buried Spence, took the spear back, and hung it over the mantelpiece in the Spence homestead. Never saw that bear. Or any other. Again. Years later, after the Spence family faded to obscurity, wealthy land baron bought the spear to hang in his hunting lodge. Just so he could tell that story, I imagine. So, do you believe it? The story of the demon bear and the spear stealing its soul? What? No, of course not. I, I might spend all my time alone in the wilderness, but I'm not crazy. But the old stories sometimes have truths hidden in them. Spence might have been superstitious, but he had the right idea. Ten inches of cold, hard steel might do what a bullet can't. I'm convinced. A spear's the way to kill that bear. And you need to get Spence's bear-killing spear if we're gonna survive the winter. The old hunting lodge is still there. A couple of days' journey south. Follow the tracks the other way, through the muskeg, and you'll find it. If the spear's there, get it. It might be our best hope. And the radio? You deal with the bear, and let me worry about the radio. <coughs> now, I'll let me rest. Yeah, now the. Look out there. Watch out for our demon. Yeah, the gimmick right. is the rifle just scares the bear. You hit, and the bear's like, ow, stop it. It's like, I don't like it. It hurts my face. But you can't kill it. So I think the idea is to kill the bear. I gotta, I gotta skewer it. All right. So I'm at sprain risk because of the weight. Um, before we go anywhere, let's go to these two hats.
Do a quick patch job on those. Because now I should be able to pop over here and go, yeah, way better hat. Meet the ground. Alright, so we're still overburned. That is our eternity, is to forever and always be overburned. Alright. Paranoia save. So it sounds like you're gonna go find a spear. Um... Man, I was literally right... I actually think it's literally right there. Grr. Can't tell because of the icon which way I'm facing. I'm pretty sure I need to be going that way. Yeah, so like dead on target. Yeah, I've already skimmed down to just like things I need. Like I have food on me and some fishing stuff. I actually don't like the rabbit I could drop. These sticks I could drop. Most of the rest I'm actually using. I mean, I should drop stuff. My thought is I'm going to eat some stuff and all that, and we'll knock our way back down. Actually, let it, let's go ahead and do this. Drop those. They've got all these snare traps. You definitely drop the rabbit. I don't want to, though, because I'm super greedy. And at least I acknowledge that I'm super greedy. Like, I am, I am aware of the flaw I am currently exhibiting. <laughs> It doesn't mean I'm going to stop exhibiting it, but I am aware it is present. But hear me out, I picked it up and it's mine. I'll be honest, I remember last time I played my issue except hanging onto all my food. Like, I was going to survive without it. Yeah, so it looks like I have to follow this um, cliff ridge here so we can get around it or there's an opening, which feels very intended. Because again, I keep expecting that you're going to deliberately run us into the bear. Now, I think for me playing this on stream, I'm not going to go super hard in the exploration. Um, just because I feel like that's the kind of thing where we wander for long periods of time to get a little bit of information. That's a lot of fun to do on your own. But walking around in the wilderness in basic silence for a whole lot of time? Probably not the best content. That's also the reason why I kept a separate save for the last act, and I'll probably keep a separate save for when I finish this act and that kind of thing. It's just that way when I go to play more, I can go back to previous act, round up the handful of things and all that that I missed.
Oh, Wolf, you did not think this through. Mistakes were made, Mr. Wolf. Yep. Okay, so it is this way. That tells me to leave the area entirely. You just... Oh, you just want me to, like, travel the entire map. Okay, um... I misunder... I misread the situation. I didn't realize I was gonna go walk the entire way to Forever Away. Now, that makes the question is, is the bear still gonna be stalking me? Or is the bear gonna be, like, back there with him? Because one would assume if I travel, like, half across the world will have crossed the continent or whatever. The bear is only going to be able to mess with one of us at a time. The other thing is, do I go to the shortwave tower? How far is that tower? Right, that tower is out there. So I guess we just walk across this, and I'm I'm assuming what's going to end up happening is I'm going to have to like put down a tent or not a tent, but like put down a place to sleep in the snow at some point along the way. It also could be that in reality the bear wasn't wandering around that last tile at all, like we did a cinematic with the bear or two, but um. That the bear... Well, no, because we made the comment, it was like, the bullets don't seem to really work on it. My assumption is maybe you're supposed to bump into the bear a couple times while exploring. Okay, so two is my... Alright, so two is weapons... One is light sources. I did not expect to... Alright, so you need two to quickly pull out the gun. That's what I was trying to establish, is if I see something coming at me, I want to be able to get the gun out pretty quick. Alright. I think this also does a fair balance on, like, we're talking about the environmental survivment. Survival? Um, that you have blizzards that make it so it doesn't seem to matter how much clothing you have, it's not enough. Whereas, like, you can be relatively... I actually don't need more cloth. Advanced guns. Okay. Alright, what was that saying? So you have advanced guns. Survival school. So about just wanting you to catch fish. No, I had the catch fish. Oh, cull a wolf 
in Mystery Lake region. Interesting. It's like, go murder a bunch of wildlife. Okay. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Yeah, it's not looking through that much improvement. Decent sweater. A new one. Make sure I'm facing the right way. I am? Cool. Yeah, so it's entirely possible we just bump into a wolf and kill it anyways. But I don't really have the carry weight to drag one around, like, drag another thing around with me, nor, like, the two in-game hours to harvest one. So I'm not gonna worry about it. Please don't. All right, I've learned something. I'm so cold and warming up again. All right, so you know what? Uh, the ice broke underneath me. I had too much weight, and the ice started to crack, and I couldn't get off the ice in time. So it didn't kill me, or cause me injury. Instead, because it got soaking wet, like, hypothermia is a big concern. The good news is, despite that, we are warming back up. Ah, so I have culled a wolf. Did that actually count? That should have counted, right? Yep, we have called a wolf. Yeah, so the lesson taught is that, like, be careful about the, huh. Be careful about the ice. Now, like, to go places around here, I'm gonna have to cut across parts of the ice that have, like, you know, patches of snow to make it safe for me to cross. Jog a little bit. Got tons of food. I don't like the idea of this. Oh no! Oh, come on. Um.
Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Wait, where's my rifle? Oh, I have a sprained wrist. I see. That makes sense. I was just like, wait, did I drop my rifle when it hit me? Because that would make sense. But... Yeah. I just want to get out of this area as fast as we can. Because if I set up a fire here on the tracks and then try and use a tent, or not a tent, I try to, you know, sleep like right here in a sleeping bag, there's a good chance it's going to be a bad time. So I just want to get across here to the other side of the zone. I imagine that damaged my clothes as well. I just want to get someplace either... It doesn't need to be like proper indoors. It can be a cave or something. Let's have a campfire. You try and fix stuff up. I bandaged a, uh, a sprain earlier. I tried to use a bandage in that one. It didn't seem to work. But it might have like a success chance. They have more than enough cloth to make more bandages. I just want to get someplace indoors before I do that. Yeah, I see up ahead there's a, um, well, I'll probably have to grab some sticks for a fire, won't I? I don't think I want to do that. Not scrap metal. Blood-soaked note. Judging from the amount of blood on the frozen page, the author wasn't doing too well when they wrote it. First, it was an expletive rancid meat. Then it was a sprained ankle. Then an expletive con convict out of nowhere. Gave him the slip uh, by falling down into a ravine. Of course, that's when expletive wolves came. Dropped my stuff and ran as much as I could with a sprained ankle. If you're reading this, this is as far as I got. I should have never tried to leave Milton. Too cold to think. Yeah, I do see a tunnel up ahead. We can get to that tunnel. We'll put up a fire. Yeah, no, if I, um... If I felt like... Because I already know about the bandage thing and the sleep. The game already told me about it. So I'm not too worried personally. Um, but had it not told me that already, then I would have said something. Like that's the reason I tried to bandage it first and it didn't seem to take. Maybe I had bandaged a different one. Okay, we're almost up here. Well, that should still be fine. Um, so let's build a fire. That should help warm things up.
Make it a nice fire. Okay. Take a moment here. Craft a bandage. Wonder why the bandage isn't showing up on my wheel here. That's fine, we'll do it manually. Alright, so our sprain is fixed. The sun's setting. It's gonna get a lot colder soon. Uh, we'll go ahead and eat something. Did I have a rabbit in my inventory now? Yes. Harvest. Get the meat. Don't worry about the rest right now. Oh, I didn't drop something else I didn't mean to. So we're still very awake. Um, so let's go ahead and for the moment get our cooking pot. Make a bunch of water. And cook our rabbit. Let's get 30 in game minutes. So let's check our clothes. I imagine our clothes got damaged. Why did you make a horrible noise? Oh, it's the energy drink wearing off. Okay. I was like, why did I get hurt real bad all of a sudden? <sighs> yeah, so all my clothes are freezing. And wish I grab more to burn. All right, so let's save real fast. I'm going to uh, take a little bit of risk because I'm going to go sleep. That fire is going to go out before. Um, Before I wake up, I think where I'm at in the sleeping bag, I'll be okay. Why do you keep canceling? Well, that's not what you want to see. I'll die if I don't warm up soon. That's uh, it's not encouraging at all.
Oh, come on. Give me some kind of wood I can actually use. Alright, I don't know if I got that mute off in time or not. should help warm things up there we go This is the person living in the south, never having experienced snowstorm stuff besides Project Zomboid. I gotta say, they sound super eerie. Yep. I'm in some pretty bad snowstorms. I used to live up in Michigan. Way, way, way back. I can definitely remember climbing out a window at one point because the, uh, the snow drift covered up the door and all that. We couldn't get it open. So we went through the window, then came around the other side of the door, and then, like, you know, cleared the crap away from the door so we could open it. Because otherwise, even if you get the door open, the snow just comes down in your house, and then you've got snow in your house you gotta deal with. Are my clothes still frozen? Okay, so my clothes aren't frozen, but they are wet. Surprisingly, I still don't have another pair of pants. So in the meantime, as we'll do this. Still nighttime. Um, and as a reminder, please don't like backseat. I figured you probably could take them off and dry them, but um, I'm not actually that worried about it. Okay, so let's put down our bedroll again. If I can get. There we go. You have an hour and a half, so we shall sleep for one hour. Here, so slightly more rested. It's still pretty dark. Yeah, my clothes are drying just from me being here. Well, my clothes are dry. They're not drying. I know this will go past when it's going to be on, but it does seem like the blizzard's gone.
How are you still going? Oh, I guess the um the probably the time increase when the blizzard start uh stopped because I noticed that earlier as I had a fire that had like four or five hours on. I'm like, okay, we're good. Um, and then a blizzard starts. Said, okay, you got like three minutes. I'm like, come again. All right, so we're trying to get way up here. We have a supplies cache that apparently we know about there. I'm um, in a maintenance yard, so here, cut it right as soon as we get the opportunity over here. Make sure I still have my gun ready. Yes, I do. We'll cut up here, we'll go past the supply cache, we'll take a quick peek at it's probably gonna have like an MRE, maybe some bullets, stuff like that. Uh, make our way to the next objective. Well, that's not the way we're going down there. Yeah, I'm guessing this is marking that there's a big cliff face there. Looks like I survived another night. Alright. How close are we to wait? Still about five off. We've been we've been that way almost the entire game. Like no matter what I seem to do, I'll always end up with something else that makes me slightly overburdened. Got a wolf down here. Your greed will be your downfall. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> they designed the fires in this game. It feels so cozy when sitting around it. Yep. They still have a ridiculous amount of food and everything, so we killed the wolf just because it's, you know, a threat to us. Hmm. Not feeling good about this. You wish you could craft a sled in this game to haul back a bunch, several wolves and rabbits? Yeah. Okay. Alright. Next update sled. Are you saying that the next update will include a sled, or you wish the next update would include a sled? I wonder how that would affect the game balance. Yeah, rumored? Oh, yeah. I usually don't put much stock in into rumors. Like, sometimes it can be true, but there's a lot of times that stuff gets rumored and all that. And this game had other updates? Oh, they have, um... There's a whole extra chapter missing from the story, so they're definitely getting more updates. Oh, we shot past it. Um, bup, 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 bup. The creator said it's coming. The sled? Okay. The way the creator said it, that I would put stock in. At the end of the ravine in the broken railroad region. What well, says the end of the ravine? I consider this the end of the ravine over here. Or literally that box right here. I knew I'd find something here.
Yay, long johns. We'll need to patch those up later. There's only one more chapter coming out, right? Uh, based on the UI and everything. That there's five chapters. Alright, so I want to go west. I can't really go that way, for the looks of it. Alright, yeah, it's promising. I was kind of hoping that we would find a compass that I could just put in my hand so I could just like pull out the compass, take a quick glance, be like, ah, I'm facing north. Like, I don't need the big thing at the top of the screen, I'm talking like an actual compass. And there might even be one that I haven't found, but considering your arrow moves around in the map. Doesn't seem like to be a thing. Alright. Um, can't tell that's a path up or not. Yeah, it's not path up. Canadian government should just be developer for this dying simulator. I mean, I assume I assume the devs making good money because I've heard about Long Dark from a lot of different people. So it's not like it's an unfound game. Now, I don't think it's gonna have like the cult following that like Stardew Valley or Terraria or any of these other indie games have, but it's still you know it's certainly not doing poorly. For that matter, Project Zomboid had an explosive time or Dwarf Fortress as much as as much as I don't care for Dwarf Fortress because of the UI problems. You know I can at least recognize that it has done very well for itself, and like I said. I've, I've mentioned previously, if they do actually do a proper UI pass on Dwarf Fortress, I would absolutely give it another shot. And as a reminder, not talking about like the pixel graphics, that's not the problem. It's the lack of intuitiveness and just how cryptic stuff is buried within itself and all that. Hey, Longclaw, how's it going? Um, Have you played The War is Mine? I have played The War is Mine. The War of Mine. I thought it was The War is Mine. Either way, I have played it, yes. I had a good time with it. Which I was like, I'm glad I'll get to see the end of the story. I only saw a part in another stream. Gotcha. Sipping your morning coffee? Nice, nice. Yeah, as long as people are tuning in, I do intend on continuing to play this. That's, um, that's one of the things that's been a problem with a lot of this style of games. Hey, played Don't Starve? I have played Don't Starve. I haven't played Don't Starve together as of yet. I have it, but um, it very, feels very much like that one's intended to be multiplayer. Then they kept doing a bunch of updates, so like, yeah, I'll just wait till they, um, things start to settle in more. It's kind of the mix of wanting to play Early Access and feeling a need to play Early Access because that's content that people are into. Um, but also having the problem if you play an early access game and you complete its content and then the next update comes out and you kind of have to like repeat all the content you've already done again to get to the new part. Um, any upcoming games I'm excited for? Um, so I'm really excited for Frostpunk 2. That's what I'm looking forward to. Um, Hades 2 is one I look forward to playing. Um, there was, what was the, what's the name of that game? I'm blanking on it. Uh, this game has a huge Twitch community. Uh, you'll find many new viewers here when you play. Uh, let's actually check that. Um, any interest in Diablo? I'm on the wait and see with Diablo. Um, after Diablo Immortal. Like, I've, I've already been a bit um, cagey about Blizzard games since Activision acquired them. But um, with how they handled Diablo Immortal, I'm definitely waiting to see how Diablo is. was going to be super paid to win and all that stuff. Um, so let's see, the Long Dark. 
English. All right. So, like, this isn't me being being mean or anything about the game. Uh, so, as a streamer, I do have to actually care about numbers and all that. So, if we actually look at the long dark, it's only averaging about 150 viewers per day. And we go towards closer to my hours, um, it's averaging around 30 to 70 viewers from what I'm seeing. Um, which is below what this channel normally pulls in by itself. So that isn't that isn't me being like, you know, terrible game or anything like that. It's just the reality is here on Twitch that it's not it's not doing great. Versus like the game I'm most known for playing on the channel is Project Zomboid. And if we go to that and we go to why did you not load? Try this again. Project Zomboid. Are you uh Doing okay here, Silly Gnome? And you switch that to English. It's pulling in like 800 something viewers. And that's like the thing that's concerning me about Product Zomboid is notice that this is a drop in the last month of 45% in viewership. Uh, so that number is still ridiculously large compared to that. But if we go to, again to like my hours, um, it's actually closer. I'm trying to get the mouse together. It's closer to like three, 400 viewers. But yeah. But yeah, so you get the idea. So I'm not saying it's a bad game or anything like that, that you can't be successful on Twitch. But very genuinely for me, the um the viewership for this is actually like lower than the channel pulls in by itself a lot of times. Like right now, the viewership I have at this moment playing Long Dark um is well below what I normally pull in. So that's not that's not me being a whole thing, it's just I, I have a lot of times where I go into games that there are people who really love the games that be like, oh, absolutely, you can absolutely make your name here. And it's like, no, let's be real. Oh, well, let's... Um. Okay. I don't think that will scarf, scarf will be an improvement. Um, would you ever play a game like The Sons of the Forest or The Forest? So I'm not against playing those games. If I do, it'll probably be in a multiplayer capacity with probably like other content creators. No, 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 don't, don't go. No, don't exit the vehicle. Oh, shit. Um, it's not that I never play them. The problem is when it comes to survival games, that's the issue I have with the forest and Sons of the Forest specifically. The light. Can I not go back now? I can. Can't feel my feet. Oh, there's a fire over there. But um, campfire. But yeah, so the the issue I have with the forest and that is I've talked about before that games when they go to the point of like feeling like they're just being edgy for the sake of edgy, the forest kind of creeps in on the edge of that line. Um, like very specifically, like it's one thing like you know a game having cannibalism, it's like whatever, you know it's that doesn't automatically rule out a game for me. But it's like the fact that you're taking these other human-like things and then skinning them and then like using their skin as armor and like they even go out of the way to like like put like eyeballs on your wrist and everything and like you burn the bodies to get the bones to make tools. I mean, I mean the nudity is also a thing, but it's not that as big a thing, but it feels like it's just all over the top and it actually really detracts from me from the survival element of it. It's like, it's so cartoonishly silly that I'm like, oh man, a bunch of high school kids got together and made this one, which is unfair because I actually understand it's a really good game. And I've had the story to the forest completely spoiled for me for the record. Like I'm, I'm well aware of what happens in the first one. The second one I haven't. Um, so I could see playing it. I could see playing it with some other content creators. 
for the purpose of playing around the content, but like the story, you know, I'm not going to spoil the story for those who don't want it spoiled. But um, oh, and don't forget exclamation mark play to join in. And we're doing this because we're hitting an ad block, so I want to keep people from missing the action on the game. So we're going to do this for the quick ad block, and then we'll get back to the game. But yeah, uh, so it's like it's a good game, but I'm even okay with like the cannibals attacking you and all that. Like all that's fine. It's just when you're getting to the point of like using their bits and pieces to make your armor and all that. And like, okay, I get it. The game has a story. It wants to tell a narrative that that fits. And I understand that. But for me, it just really takes away from the entire game. That I'm just, I can't take the survival seriously because of how over the top edgy it is. Like it's, it's a detractor to me. All right, so we're going to get last call for if you want to get in the race. Last call if you want to get in the race. So exclamation mark play to join in the race or be logged in on their website or whatever. But yeah, and like I said, I'm not I'm not against ever playing it. Um, And I mean, if people like really request it, it would be. I would not play that one through for the whole story, though. Like I would probably just have fun surviving for a while and then leave. Anyway, so yeah, that's the one aspect of the game I don't like. But I will say once you get start playing it, um, it didn't impact my enjoyment. But that was my initial concern. So I played the forest, the original, a decent amount. Like I didn't, I didn't really go far in the story. I did like a little speed lunking. I don't even remember what tools you get at the beginning. Um, but every time, like the moment I started like taking like people's skin and making into armor, I'm like, all right, you've lost me. This is like, and it wasn't like a moral or an ethical objection. It's like you're supposed to be trying to be this serious survival game, and just. Oh, yeah, I have a, I have a, um, exclamation mark nitro command, but it was, it was just very genuinely, I had problems enjoying the game because I couldn't take it seriously. Because of, like, all, all the silly, like, making bone armor out of burnt corpses and all that. Like, the moment I got to that phase of the game, like, alright, this is just... It, it very much to me hit the, ah, it's one of these games that, and again, it's a good game, and I know it is, and I know it has substance but it puts my mind in the, ah, this game is trying to survive entirely on being edgy and not its own substance, which is unfair, because that's not true. What is a horror survival game? Right. But let's be real. Would you use human skin to make armor, or would you use animal hide? Animal hide typically being thing. And they make an excuse for it that they're mutants and therefore they're more durable and blah blah blah. It's like, but why would I use its face for a gauntlet? Why wouldn't I use the rest of it? And that's the whole thing, is is it takes me out of it. I'm cool with horror when it makes sense. Like, the thing stalking behind you, they're like, oh god, like there's this bear, bear creeping up behind me. Oh, this is scary. Versus, it's horror by just trying to be like, ha ha ha, gore. Ha ha ha, cringe. Like, that kind of horror's never, never done it for me. Even in movies, like the, um... Like the over the top, like slasher kind of movies, I was never able to get into because it's so ridiculously over the top that I just cannot take it seriously. And that's to say, again, The Forest is a good game. Like, just being clear, The Forest is actually a good game. But for me, that is a detractor. That's just not what I want in a game. It's the same reason I have, like, a hard pass and like when people like product zomboid should include cannibalism i'm like well no one they shouldn't and then two if they did eating eating a zombie should be guaranteed death by zombie infection because it's dumb But yeah, so it's not it's not that I'm hard against the forest ever playing it. I don't think it'd be a game I play just to play it. Um, if I played, it'd be not like multiplayer with other people. That the fun would be like the base building and then dealing with the cannibals attacking us constantly and that kind of nonsense. I'm I'm not invested in the story. Like I I am spoiled to the first one, the story and how it plays out and you know like what what it goes like. I actually am aware of both endings for the first one, because again, it's been spoiled to me. Um, and just, yeah. Yeah, don't forget to use your Megas. If you see your name down here, or you see your name up here with a little icon next to it, 
you can type exclamation mark mega to use special abilities. Uh, the goal is we do want one of the blue flags, which is one of the people in the channel to win, not the bots. Um, if we have enough times that we win, we unlock new maps. So we do want to win a whole bunch. Hobgon says I'm almost in last place. Yep, I feel ya. I'm in 11th. So I'm not near last about halfway, but I'm not relevant to the race anymore. Oh, but I do have... Oh, come on. It's too late anyways. My keyboard was stuck in QWERTY, which I don't normally use QWERTY, so I was trying to type it in and getting it wrong. That's because um, the game we're playing is all that. And I'm not going to take time to reconfigure. Because it's like, well, everything we can. Well, there's no dying, they're just getting knocked out place. So we got second place, we got Conrad. Third place, we got Burning Sun. Um, Pangman hit the most cars at 11 cars hit, and no one cares about what the bots did. All right, and so we just did that for the ad break, so let me hit that. Bring the long dark back up. And I'll get back to it. You don't use QWERTY? Nope, I use Dvorak. Most games, it's fine. Like, most time. If it's not, like, isn't there? Again. Takes two I'll seconds to fix. To war, my friend. Uh, war? The war between man and nature, of course. The lights in the sky. You and the bear. The cold. Hunger. The old fights returning. Did you scare the bear away? There was no bear when I found you. Perhaps it isn't yet time for your paths to cross? Listen, old man, I'm not sure... You still believe things are going to go back to the way they were? The lights in the sky. Remember, I said they were a reckoning. They're powering the lights around us? Now you see. This can't be. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, and yet it has happened. So, this is some kind of recurring Aurora Borealis? Possibly. And it's affecting the electricity, the power? And everything dependent on it. Animating it, or destroying it, perhaps both. And you knew this was coming? No, but it was only a matter of time. This has all happened before. I've had a lot of trouble with wildlife lately. Is it always this dangerous around here? I've seen many strange things, of course. But the birds and beasts, their rhythms are their own. Meaning? The patterns of nature have been interrupted, broken. Even those who once knew how to read them are now confused. What do you think spooking the wildlife? I can't say for sure, but the lights in the sky may hold the answer. So you think the aurora is influencing the wildlife too? There is much in nature that we cannot understand. Would it be so strange? Thanks, man. Totally useless as always. Um, so that has me going down, but I need to be going up. So... Never mind, that is apparently going up. The dog was like, I don't know what's happening, I hate it, and ran away. This will come in handy. Alright, so 
It does look like I'm going to have to go over here, curve that way, go up here. Looks like there's a path that way and go there. That would be my guess of what it wants. He also alluded that I haven't actually crossed paths of the bear. You're an annoying puppy. Alright. Let's take stock. That's interesting, that doesn't say I have more injuries. So you tore some of my clothes. Yeah, so you tore my... Making my head feel you tore my, uh... My ear wrap. It didn't imply I took... I thought that I had a laceration. That didn't work. I I guess I don't have a laceration? I am so confused. Unless I caused a laceration to the wolf. What? Um... Um... Thank you for being quiet, demon dog. You're really messing with my mindset. Alright, um, meanwhile, we'll just go like this and say, snack time, banged up can of pork and beans. Alright, um, that's just gonna be lore, we can read that in our time. Right now, we, we heckin' cold. That'll come in handy. Heck yeah, we finally found a hacksaw. Oh. Um. Well, this doesn't feel safe at all.
Not gonna lie, my concerns of survival was not an entire room of live wires going completely ballistic. What have we here? Are those climbing socks could be better than the ones I have? Probably. So new wool socks, that's 0.5. That's at their top condition. And these ones are better slightly worn, so these are going to be better than those. So we'll wear these. We'll actions. We're not going to repair it right now. What I'll do is I'll turn off my lights before we get to that point. end up being useful. Firearm cleaning kit. I wonder how much actual survival you have to do. Um, like so far as like cooking and hunting and all that, and how much you get away with just like traveling from point to point, finding the sodas and the canned goods, and all that. Because I definitely feel like I haven't. Like I mean, I'm finding food at such an alarming rate. Always use more food. That's to leave the shed, but it's got a lock symbol on it. Alright, so that's one of the eco terrorists. I think I can use this. Marine flare. Hey, she will how's it gone? Oh, actually, I'll check in a moment. This stuff will come in handy. going good so far yes it is all right so let's take a look first of all let's turn off our lamp so we don't waste the fuel let's take a look at what we've got clothing wise this pack is getting too heavy to carry all right so you got the windbreaker which is basically useless um 0.9 1.3 so where that 
drop you. The work gloves are way worse. Um, it's hard to tell. Not really designed for warmth. Yeah, so it's saying they're not particularly good for um that. Yeah, so the mountaineering boots seem to definitely be the winners out of these two. I do wish they had a thing here that, like, I understand it's showing the current wear, but I wish I could sit there and see if I took the time to patch them up. Like, how far would they go? So I've got that. Alright, so let's take a moment and repair some of the clothes that got damaged in that wolf attack. So our wolf torn ear flap is fixed. Let's fix this one as well. And this one. Okay. So, it does seem at night all the electronics go haywire. No, it's still going haywire. I don't know why it's not bright in here anymore, though. We have a furnace. What have we here? Quality tools. A hammer suitable for metalworking. Well, that's all well and good, but I don't have the carry weight for that crap. Okay. Alright. Um game. You're making make decisions and I don't like it. I don't approve of these decision making. Um, well, the good thing is that fish line weighs like nothing. It says suitable for metalworking, but I don't think we have the knowledge to do any metalworking yet. Um, let's drop this. Where'd you go? Drop you. Drop one of the cans. Drop the papers. For the time being, we'll just drop all the stones. Drop all but one of our fire plugs. And basically down just like water tablets, food. Like, I mean, I can get rid of these. But I'm still way, way overburdened. Like, not even remotely close to what I can handle. Alright, where... So need a whetstone. We haven't seen a whetstone this entire game. Where's my lamp? Actions. Refuel. That still has us 7 kilograms over carry weight. We can probably fix that by just scarfing. We're gonna slam one of these MREs and get it out of here. How's that do? All right. We're still over, but at least we're getting close. Let's save. Uh, maybe start by waiting and see what's bogging you down. So I noticed you have the cloth. 
Okay, so I've got the water. The water, I actually have a pretty obnoxious amount right now. So that's a big thing. The rifle is expletive heavy. The hammer is expletive heavy. And I'm assuming I need that for crafting, and don't spoil it. Based on this, like, I'm going to do metalworking, I'm going to need that hammer. But it's, it's expletive heavy. The lantern lets me see. The axe. I got a bunch of clothes and all that. And honestly, like, I have these ten cloths. We've actually been using a decent amount of cloth. Um, I just got an achievement called Lights in the Sky. We got the Hacksaw, which is expletive heavy. Um, I could probably do without that many flare shells. Yeah, no, it's... It's... I could keep... Not entirely sure where I keep getting that much water for it. I know I boiled some. I didn't realize I boiled nearly that much. Alright. But nevertheless... Um, I'm not super worried about it now. We're at least in the ballpark. We shouldn't have to worry about too much about getting ourselves hurt real fast. Whereas before, it's just super duper overburned. At least water is something I will use to survive. I could use this. No. I'm skipping out a whole bunch of stuff where it's like, do you want to loot this? It's like, yes. No. I think it's those water bottles I'm finding now I think about it. Because every time I'm checking those lockers, I'm finding like a bottle or two. You're probably right. There's a way to get up there as well. I don't really understand the point of this other than to break these crates up here. Okay, and it sounds like there's a blizzard going on outside. Alright, so yeah. They do think I have to go out this way and to the right. There's a good chance we're going to run to the bear again, because this does feel like one of those places where you have to go through this little spot of fence here. My assumption is that the bear stuff's going to get worse and worse until we get the spear and we actually fight the bear. Alright, so I'm curious to see what this place looked like before all the bad happened. Um, I mean, other than the destroyed wiring. Imagine mostly the same. There's the bridge we're going for, I think. Oh no, it's a lake. Yeah, I do think that's the bridge I'm going for over there. Okay, so the wolves are not stalking me. We've got rabbits on the side. Yeah, so with as much clothing as I'm finding in this one, I don't 
I don't feel like pressure to go and take the time to get like the rabbit outfits, the wolf pelts and all that to make clothes. I mean, we also don't have the recipes. But I could see it being a thing that like later this act, act three, maybe even act four, that um, you know, like maybe it, maybe the blizzard like picks up real hard and you got like big open areas where there's nowhere to uh to avoid all the storm weather and all that that you just have to extra bundle up. Because the fact that it takes five days to uh to cure the fabric laying on the ground. So yeah, that makes sense. Um, I've never seen Pass Act 2. I'm so to see what happens. Gotcha. Well, pretty soon it's going to be the time I have to take that short break in the middle of the stream to uh, toss my dinner in the oven and all that uh, for Tomb to get home. Uh, I've got a little less than a half an hour before I need to deal with that. Uh, but I do plan to go through. What I'll probably do is I'll finish Act 2 this stream. Um, if it is something that I finish it like in not too terribly long, then we'll just move on to the next act. Um, if it is something that, like, we go past, say, like, 10, 10.30 my time, then we'll go to survival mode for the rest of the stream. And then we'll hit Act 3 in another stream. Just because I don't want to do the thing where you, like, you do part of Act 3 in this stream, then part of it over there. The idea of, like, having it as kind of, like, a, a cohesive segment seems like the move. And I think my AC turned itself off, and there's definitely a weird feeling when, in real life, I am slowly dying because it's incredibly hot in this room, and I'm walking through the snow, trudging slowly, trying to avoid hypothermia in the game. Oh, that's too far. There we go. Yeah, 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 puppy. Alright, don't do your whole thing where you juke to the side. I imagine in the survival mode, I can't. I can't imagine you can just make bullets. Like that'd be too easy. I would think for a survival version, like the bullets would be precious. So it's not that you wouldn't use them. It'd be very deliberate in their use. Man, there are so many wolves out here. Oh, come on. All right, then. It seems hard to tell because like that fight, it seemed like it lost very quickly. Versus the last one I didn't. I also seem to be very low on life. Despite the fact that, um... Alright, one second. Why am I low on life? Because I know he took injuries earlier, so I'm well fed. I don't see any injuries labeled anywhere. And we tried to look at the medical stuff. And it was using the medicine... But it wasn't using them on any, like, like, it didn't get the choice of parts. So it has me confused. Like, I have a little plus sign on my health bar, so I assume we're going, like, things are good there. I'm not watching, it's like, it's not going down. I don't have icons being like, yo, you're bleeding. Oh. 
thinking we're very fed, we're well, fairly well rested, we're hydrated, our temperature's good. Now I'm just watching that health bar. All that just seems to be able to treat pain and infection risk. As far as I'm aware, I don't have an injury to be treated. And it doesn't seem like the kind of game where you just slap on a bandage and you gain 50 health, so you slap on another bandage to top it off. Like, it seems like you treat something and then you wait for it to get better. Like, you get rid of the status effect that it's still actively a problem, but the health comes back on its own over time. And in the background, I'm hearing the roof thump because there's um, a place that does fireworks not far from here. You don't actually hear the fireworks. But it sounds like, you know, a raccoon or something's like running around on the roof. No reason I know it's not that from in the past, it's just the time. And that we figured it out in the past that it was just fireworks being shot off a while ago. It just like does air compression kind of stuff. That we like we've actively seen it make that noise while seeing the fireworks way off in the distance. You live in the south? Yes. I live in central Florida. So should be on track again. Yes, we are. Yeah, my health is staying perfectly stationary. I probably have to sleep to recover health. That's what I'm guessing it is. That would make sense that you only recover health while you sleep in a meaningful capacity. Yeah, and I, um... You know, Florida. We have our two seasons. Hot, hot and muggy, those are our seasons. Yeah, no, it's um very genuinely if uh Tomb didn't have like Tomb Tomb works a very nice job. Um but her her career keeps her kinda limited on where she can live slash work and do her job. So unfortunately, we're kind of stuck here. But if that wasn't the case, I would definitely not still be here. Like actually, when I met Tomb, I was working on trying to um, land a job on the other coast and start moving out that way and just, you know, met her and that went to the wayside. Because my job, I can wow. work remotely. This must have been really nice once upon a time. Like, even before streaming, my job, like, a lot of people when it comes to software dev were moving to remote by demand of the software devs. You'd say, oh, you need to come into office, and they go, okay, and then they'd find a job at someplace else. It happened all the time. Alright, so I made inside this place, let's save so I don't have to hike that whole hike again.
I think the phone's upstairs. Okay. Oh, I did not expect to that to walk me outside. Don't give me all this free stuff. I want to have to struggle for survival more so I don't have to carry it all. I don't have the willpower to not take it. Survival game. If I can use it to survive, I'm going to pick up everything. Maybe not the fire log. The fire log may stay. I can barely walk with this much gear. All right, all right. I hear you complaining. It's fine. That make you feel any better? Not really. You're still ruined. Okay. All right, I dropped like two kilograms of water. I was back into the basement. Oh, I found a flashlight. That'll come in handy. <sighs> Meet with the bandit hunting lodge in the outskirts. GPS coordinates unreadable. Uh, we have to stop. Slowing me down. Okay, well, the good news is that doesn't. Actually, that big a deal. Hope nobody needs this anymore. Gauntlets? Uh, come again? Gauntlets, did you say? Well, they're the, currently the exact same temperature as what I was wearing. Um, and that's them in being in terrible shape. So, that's a win in my book. Oh! Yeah, we still don't have many recipes to do so. The lighting made those look like they were severed hands. I was sitting there doing the same thing going, um, what am I looking at?
Like, please don't go this route, the game. I was just commenting about how I found it annoying that games were, like, going over the top. I was like, no, everything's awful. Go for the cannibalism. You need to eat people. You're just like, could, could we, could we, could we maybe not? I'm going to leave that. I already have one. All right, so I think I'm actively injuring myself right now with the carry weight. All right, I've got to drop stuff. Um, I'm going to drop the hammer. I might be something important, but genuinely, like, right now, I don't have the carry weight. And it's obnoxiously heavy. Like, the flashlight, too, I'm almost debating just dumping the flashlight because I don't have batteries for it. And with the whole cinematic, I assume it really wants me to have it. I'm going to drop two of the snare traps because I can make one if I really want it. Be a loot goblin? Well, that's the thing. I'm actually running into problems because I'm loot goblining too hard. I mean, all these sodas are not helping. Honestly, with as much soda as I have, just drop the water. It seems like you can't ever get rid of cloth. Uh, where's my lantern? We'll top it off with fuel. That'll get us a little weight down. Yeah, I think those sodas are a big part of it. That's at least three kilograms of soda. I think your character will literally only drink up until they're not thirsty anymore. Maybe the sodas would be an exception. I can get rid of that. It doesn't weigh anything to get rid of it. Oh, the MRE weighs like nothing. I figured the MRE was going to be heavier than that. We got tons of the tea, but like the tea and the coffee weigh like nothing. So ditching that doesn't really do much to help our cause. I drop one of the cases of painkillers. Um... Drank some soda. I wonder if I even need the improvised knife anymore, because I I'll probably hold like this is the stuff I'm always scared to drop. Like unless unless instead of this I found a hunting knife where it's like, ah, clearly that's a knife as well. I don't need both. Alright, that helped a little bit more. And like the flares, I don't want to give up because I might use those. Come on. Game, stop giving me things. And then I'm assuming we're going to find the spear in here. It'll probably be some big heavy metal spear that weighs like three kilograms or something. I used a bunch of my bandages already, so I will actually take that. Yeah, no, I probably should drop it all. Um, but right now, the game seems to be the type of game where I mostly move forward. Like, it looks like I am going to have to backtrack the one zone. I think I can use this. I'm literally going to leave that behind. But it does feel like the kind of game that, like, once I'm done with an area, I'm not going back. Outside of, like, achievement hunting kind of thing. And maybe I'm totally wrong and don't spoil. But, um... So I don't, like... To me, the stuff I'm leaving behind, mentally I'm abandoning. That it's just gone. Unlike when it's playing survival mode where it's like, no, this is where I'm stashing stuff. Could end up being useful. All 
Try to see their stuff on the shelves. I think part of it is with how generous it seems to be with like all the different supplies. I've never felt like I'm upgrading clothes, like I'm swapping out clothes that I have for better clothes. But part of me expected my clothes to get gradually damaged and ruined, and I think they are. But gradually in this case is very gradually. Posture check. I didn't think my posture was too bad. Where is this spear? Literally yeah. right there. Looks like one little detail got missed in the trapper's legend of the old bear. The spear didn't survive the fight. Must be something I can use to fix it in that old machine shed. Okay, where did I leave the hammer that... Let's me repair Feels things. Like a lot of gear. I know. Where did I put that hammer? read all those okay that's the caches repair the broken spear at the forge oh okay so I don't necessarily like I probably do need that hammer that's the thing it specifically mentioned it was a hammer for metalworking and I didn't want to lug it around because okay it'll be over here in this pile all right. So let's turn this back off. Fine game. How heavy is this spear? Is it a quest item that doesn't weigh anything? Okay. It's a quest item that doesn't weigh anything. I'm going to eat this heckin' rabbit. I'm going to start slamming sodas. All right. I dropped a bunch of sodas. A bunch of the tablets for water purification. Drop some canned goods. I don't even feel like I'm making a dent in my carry weight. Because, like, right now, almost all of it's these tools. Like, this this rope is five kilograms. But it's a mountaineering gear. I, I'm, i like, willing to bet very heavily we need that. Um, let's drop five of these. And, like, this flashlight, because the character did a whole animation that made it, like, a big deal to find it. And the hacksaw is the same way. I feel like I have to bring the, these with me. And it's just like, but what do I drop? I'm, like, tempted to just drop the flare gun. Let's drop 14 rounds of the flare gun ammo to make it lighter, because it does, that is one of my heavier things right now. Um, the quality tools, I feel like we hold on to. I'm not giving up the bullets. Um... Drop two of the bandages. Gonna eat another rabbit just because I can. 
Because I assume it'll just rot if... Oh, I'm only eating what I need out of it. My character has more self-control than I want to know. Uh, drop the water for purification tablets. Drop the water purification tablets. How do we do with the bear? Um, I've got a spear that I'm going to beat the bear with, but I have not used it. I have to repair it, and I'm just struggling very hard right now with inventory. So let's drop four of the uh, repair kits. Drop one container of antibiotics. Drop all but one stack of tea. Drop all but one stack of coffee. I'm still extremely overburdened. Get drink this now. Get drink another one. I'm not. I can't. It won't let me. Those are cardboard matches. They got cardboard and wood matches. So drop the cardboard matches. This is game story mode. Yes. Frankly, drop one of the box of wood matches. Okay. We're still super overburned. Can you repair one of the hats with a kit um, and drop the other? Well, I'm wearing both hats. Like, this this isn't Project Zomboid where I get, like, just one hat. I have two hats on top of each other. That said, I can definitely repair this one. Oh, and if there's the stairs. All right. Oh, I lost track of time dealing with the inventory. All right, so bear with me, chat. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to turn on our music. Um, and I'm going to bring up words on stream. And the reason I'm bringing up words on stream is I do stream for 11 hours a night. So what ends up happening is at some point during the night, I have to stop and make myself something to eat real fast. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to put up words on stream, I'll run downstairs, toss my dinner in the oven, and then we'll be back up in a couple minutes. Uh, it's something that happens pretty much every night, unless um, Toom makes dinner for me or whatever. Uh, but I try and have Toom, like, I try and have dinner ready for her when she gets home. Uh, just because, you know, it's not fair for her to work all day and then turn around and be like, okay, now make me, make me dinner. Like, try and be fair, like, sometimes she does it, sometimes I do it. But, um, in the meantime... For those who are not familiar with words on stream, what you end up doing is you just type into chat one of the words. So we have cone. Now the big thing to note is if I were to type in a second word, it didn't take it. And that's because you can only correctly guess one word per each of those locks. So if I guess a word now, I have to wait for that lock to go by in the middle of the screen. Uh, but when that goes by, then I'm good to guess another word. Anyways, I'll be back in just a couple minutes. And thank you again for so much for everyone who's been tuning in, who's been lurking, tank, following, subscribing to the bits, hustle, donors, and the raids. It all helps. I really do appreciate it. And I do hope you have been enjoying the stream. It also works out that the ad break is happening like right at this time as well. So that's perfect. We'll get the ad break out of the way while I'm doing this. All right, we'll be back in a minute.
Okay, and I am back. Sorry about that. Oh man, there's so many, so many things are firing off notifications since I stepped away. None of it, well, I mean, it's related to stream, but none of it related to the currently actively happening in the stream at this very moment. Uh, ba -ba, I'm dealing with all of, okay, cool. All right. Oh, I'll grab myself a new drink while we're on this, so I'll be right back in just a moment. Okay, and I heard the game over. Um, so it looks like in first we had Stan the Man at 61, Bianca Rose at 55, uh, Squeeze at 53, Sarah the Penguin at 50, Cyphobia at 34, Captain Brody at 8, and Dar Strider at 7. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and wrap that up real fast. So let me go ahead and get that off our screen, and we'll get back to the long dark. All right. And hey, Cyphobia. So sorry about that. It is a thing that happens that because I stream such a large block, sooner or later I have to make food happen. Uh, and then also usually, like, Tomb gets home at, like, almost the exact same time. Alright, so we did find the spear. Our inventory woes are completely unreasonable. We need to just go right back to where we came from. There is a very good chance we run into the bear on the way back. I'm basically just expecting this bear to stalk us everywhere we go. Oh, we're carrying way too much if this is the speed I'm moving. Oh, wait. Can I just climb down? Is that what the climbing rope was? Because that climbing rope was like 5 kilograms. Can I tie it to this tree? Because I really like the idea of just climbing down this mountain. That looks exactly like the last thing we climbed. That rock formation over there. Okay, that drops that five kilograms of climbing rope. That'll be fantastic. I'll oh, check two cars here. I was sneaking suspicion. I'll find some like keys or something in here. Probably for the cabins. Or nothing at all. All right, cool. You know, slide run. Hope she's going well. Um, at the moment, I am on the story. I do have a survival run that's alive, but it's only a couple days in. Um, which we started that because I finished the last chapter on the last stream, and it wasn't enough time for me to um to really complete our chapter that stream. All right. Well, before we do this, because all of our climbing efforts have always ended well. I am too encumbered to climb. No! Don't do this to me, game. Ah. Eat the stale peanut butter. I don't care anymore. Um. Drink a soda. Just waste it. I need to drop like two kilograms. All right.
But I'm using it all. I actually need to drop almost three kilograms. Guy needs to be stronger, use the steroids. Need to do some. Alright, so drop another soda, drop another soda, drop the condensed milk, drop one of the cans of beans. Honestly, drop the empty can. Drink or tea. Just waste it. Drop two of our emergency stims. Drop our energy bar. Eat the other energy bar. We can't do it, so that's fine. Um, that's got basically no fluid left in it, so just drop that. Yeah, no, I um, I did some of the survival the other time. That said, like a lot of people have actually had the uh, the reverse stance. Um, put of mine. A lot of people talk about really wanting to see the story because they found the story to be a lot of fun. Oh, just drop the T. You drop just a little bit more. Stop showing red. I'm fine. Drop a feather. There. We have my giant pile of junk here. And that said, I definitely wouldn't say this is lame. I've had a... I've enjoyed this. Oh, come on. We're getting sleepy. Giant pile of junk is your nickname in college? Ow. Alright, so it's to be a straight shot down here. Like, one thing I'll say that, um, this mode it was giving me that Survivor didn't. The Survival mode, I didn't feel like it had direction. It was just kind of go-do. Like, don't get me wrong, you can't just, like, stay in... Like, stay in one spot like Product Zomboid or whatever. But, like, it's kind of just, like, wander for the sake of wandering. I mean, and you're trying to survive. Like, it wasn't easy or whatever. I'm not putting it down. But I actually do like that. I'm like, oh, I'm trying to get somewhere. And to be fair, I also really appreciated that this mode actually gave me some indication of how to do literally anything. Because, like, genuinely, my first attempt at survival, I was standing there with kindling and matches and everything. And just, kind of like, holding the lit match over a pile of stuff going, how do I make fire? And then basically freezing to death. Because I couldn't figure out how to make fire. And that's because I, I I know more and more games are using this little UI here. I still have not gotten adjusted to looking there for anything in any game. Like, not until I get into the game and I play and it, you know, it becomes trained. That's like, ah, this is where I do this thing. Pretty sure that wolf is hunting us. Like I talked about, I think it's good for exploration to. That's fine. I didn't care about getting the meat, I just wanted to go away. The bad shot. But, um, like, games like knowing what's an efficient way of doing stuff, what's the strategy, how aggressive do I have to do certain mechanics, all that kind of stuff is good discoverability. Or like Subnautica, where you have the map and you're just trying to figure out what's where and that kind of stuff, that's good discoverability. That's good stuff to omit from the player's knowledge. Um, and then you go on the other end of just, like, how do you start fire mechanically? That isn't something the players should have to discover on their own. Like... What what button and control does stuff shouldn't be a thing. 
And that's us running into with the survival mode in this one. I think it's down there, isn't it? No, it's actually over this way. I don't actually care about the supplies I'm going to get out of this. I just want to get marked off as a thing I did. Like, once I did the first, you know, act or whatever, episode or whatever they call it in this one, then, um, then survival felt pretty good. Oh, we're just going the completely wrong way. It's fine. It's over here. I actually don't really care about those supplies, even. It might be something I do on my own time as I play through the story to, like, try and get all of the, um... achievements and everything. Because I usually do... Like, that's... That's the thing that's been a hard transition for me from what I normally play like when I'm not streaming versus when I am streaming. Is when I'm not streaming, I'm an achievement hunter in a big way. Alright, one second, chat. Such a good survival game. Yep. Hey, Undead Bear. You just happened to catch me right as uh, Tumas grabbed me food, so that's a perfect time for me to do a shout out. Shout out at Undead Bear. That's. If I don't type in at least the first part of Undead, it wants me to put in Undefined, which doesn't help. Alright, and for those who don't know, Undead Bear, absolutely fantastic content creator. Uh, plays a lot of the like horror esque games, like, you know, Sons of the Forest, Project Zomboid, all that good stuff. Phasmophobia. Um, very, very fun person to tune into. So definitely drop a follow if any of that sounds like your jam. Alright, so now we need to go and fix the spear here. Of course, I can't go in that door. Because it's locked. But the fact that this bear is supposedly, like, stalking me everywhere... We have not seen a bunch. Muds without pay? Yeah, I don't care about that right now. Baseball cap isn't going to do anything for me. We got trash can energy bar. But my carry weight says, don't you dare. Alright, let's go inside. Because... It's telling me I need to use the forage. Forge. Wherever that might be in here. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. It was in the back here. You could use it like a stove, but it was a big, massive thing. Um, that tells me I have to bust some stuff up and toss it in there, which is fine. I've got the tools and the means. I think it's over here in the corner. Alright, so I need to put some fuel in our thing in. What's the furnace? Double check with a saying for quests. Actions, select. Forge. Use the forge to melt down scrap metal and craft various items. Forges need to be very hot before you can use them. Tips. Different fuels burn at different things. Coal burners. Coal burns the hottest. That's the furnace. I'm assuming the furnace is what I'm actually going to use. I don't see a separate, like, area for melt and stuff. Because all this down here is just mechanic stuff.
But it does concern me that they don't call it a forge. That said, in a lot of the games that are indie games, I see quite often, they'll tell you one thing. Ah, cool. There it is. Okay, so I see. That's the furnace on the bottom, the forge on the top. Cool, awesome. Perfect. Well, in that case, let's start breaking some stuff down in here. It's not like I don't have supplies to make it all worthwhile. Um... I'm not sure I can carry much more. Oh, stop whining. I don't really need an accelerant right now. I love how this game makes you feel. Yeah, just alone and isolated half the time. Come on. We were having the chat the other day, because I started playing this after I finished Subnautica Below Zero, That's that we were comparing... Um, why why can I not what's happened? Let's do this. Oh. Okay. I was not expecting it to work that way. Yeah. But um we were making the comparison because I had been playing some Nautica and some Nautica Below Zero and I had finished both of them. And that we were discussing like what we felt between the two different games, and that most people said they liked the, my growing list of skills. you know, the first like the first game versus the second win, and how most people liked the first one more. Let's hope um, I'm meant to put this spear to the test. Oh, you're gonna absolutely have to put that spear to the test. So I didn't actually need this. So I don't. This or not? I feel like the answer is I don't. But it's so hard to tell with games like these what you do and don't actually need. I don't need any of this other stuff I was picking up. Because I put the tiniest bit in there and it's like, okay, infinite. I'm like, alright. Don't have anything I need to cook, right? Not really. But, um, here, we'll just do this for a minute. Need to sleep. That's not the buttons I needed to do. Oh, uh, before we sleep, we are heckin' hungry. But, um, so with Subnautica 1, we talked about the feeling of desperation and loneliness was way more in that one. Um, versus Subnautica 2, because they had, like, Margarita or whatever her name was, and all that going on. It's just, the world felt way less isolated, and the fact that, like, your motivation is you're trying to find what happened to your sister versus, like, desperately trying to survive a disease. Um, it just didn't hit the same. And it became, it's become, for me, kind of very strong support to... A discussion point I've had a number of times, which is that very genuinely, I can like I'm worried about when Project Zomboid does add, um, like does add um. Sorry, I'm being distracted trying to think three thousand once. Like when they add um, NPCs, which is gonna be a long time before we see that, like a really long time, but um, that my genuine concern will be almost the same effect as Subnautica one versus two where that feeling of lone survivor desperation goes away. And, you know, not that it's, like, the end of the world, but I don't... I think the game will hit way differently with NPCs. And I think, for me, it'll be a negative. That'll be less excited about it. All right. Instantly back to the sprain risk. Excellent, love to see it. Let's drink some water immediately. Um, because you won't have that like isolated lone survivor that thing. 
Not that I'm saying and the NPCs will be necessarily bad. I'm just hoping, like, they only get, like, not glimpses of it, but the NPCs are kind of like other yous out there. You don't form factions, you don't do all of that, that kind of nonsense. Because that'd be my fear, is it'd feel, it'd feel like Subnautica below zero felt versus Subnautica, and just, you don't have the same... Things are desperate, you're alone, it's awful. You know, zombies. I don't know. And plus I'm worried that when it comes to the AI, they're either going to have to make them super duper good against the zombies so they don't just die. Or they're going to be ineffective against the zombies and they're just going to die. Or they'll be completely invulnerable or they'll have, you know... They'll be like the traitors in Seven Days to Die where they stay in their little bunker where they can't get hurt. Why can't I leave the shed from the inside? You just want a dog? Yeah? Maybe come with the animal update. The dog! I'm cool with the dog. Uh, they could keep it that in Zomboid if they have the option for the NPCs to get overrun. Uh, maybe you saw them sometimes and then find their- yeah. That's, um, that's been kind of what I've been proposing that I want to see with the NPCs and, um, product Zomboid. All right, so now I get to walk the whole way back. Oh, I should probably check. So is this going to be... All right, so this doesn't have a throw to it. This is a stabby stab. Oh, okay. I see what we're doing. We're using this... What's the word? Not phalanx. Um... Oh, what is it? When cavalry charge you and you take spikes or pikes or spears and you brace them so that the animal charging you hurts them. Unless they're invulnerable, most of the pieces will be insta-gived on 16 type of... Right, that's that's a challenge. Is I, I'm curious of how they implement it. Um, There's going to be settings like people will be able to turn off the NPCs and you'll be able to make them smarter. I'm assuming that'll all be a thing. Assuming they are out and about. I, I think the things I worry about the most is, one, if there'd be, like, the NPC community, there's just, like, a base somewhere that's, like, the NPC safe spot, like, they got their little city. Because, to me, that doesn't make sense since the game takes part takes place three days after the zombie apocalypse broke out. Like, when did they have the time to build a city? Um, and I also don't, like, well, long term, I believe that would be a realistic thing for people to do. Short term, they're going to be busy trying to come to terms with what the heck happened. But the thing I was saying I would like to see is that, like, in all of Rosewood, you'd have, like, maximum of maybe four NPCs running around. Um, and that, by and large, they leave you alone. And so what ends up happening is as you're wandering around... I feel like I just want to have the spear ready. But, um... That, like, you just see them, like, running around, and so they'd be kind of a random variable. So, where right now, one of the things... You don't want the old grocery store guy? Yeah. Forget that. But, um, like, you just, you go, okay, well, I'm not too worried about food because I got the grocery store nearby. I just don't need to worry about that. Um, and then you'd show up, like, a day or two later, and, the end, like, one of the others has gone through and looted the, you know, looted the grocery store ahead of you. Not that they're deliberately trying to be malicious, they too were short on food, and they decided to go and make their move. They were trying to survive. Because one of the problems you run into in Product Zomboid right now is once you know where to find loot, like, you go, I need weapons, I go here, and problem solved. I want food, I go here, problem solved. Like, once you get that map awareness, um, it takes a lot of the difficulty away from the game. But now if you have these NPCs who are going around and taking that food you're planning on snagging, well... What? Oh, it's deer. Okay. Like once, you, like, once you have that random variable, because then you make the choice, like, okay, do, do I go and pick fights with the NPCs? Because I'd make it so, you know, they could pair up kind of thing, so you might kill one, not realize that they had a friend who knew you just killed their friend. Um, and now you have something risking your life, so there's, there's a 
a very real risk in attacking them. Um, you have to sit there and go, okay, well, they beat me to the stuff. Like, now instead of that quick and easy thing, I gotta do this more involved process to get a half across the map to, uh, to reach what I'm looking for. Can I just go over the top of this without tripping? Probably. Nope, that is... Oh, yeah, I can. I hit the upper, I'm like, that looks like it's just straight up an invisible wall. So you feel food? Now my your building has a Molotov. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. But that's the whole thing. Like, I've said before, I don't want the NPCs to be like State of Decay. Where it's just, that is Murder Hobo NPC. That is, that is Befriendy NPC. That is Neutral NPC. And then the Murder NPC... Just immediately upon sight opens fire on you without any any hesitation, consideration, or anything. Because to me, I'm like, you didn't you didn't make an NPC. You made zombies with guns. Because it has no has no AI, no personality, no anything. Like you might have well just said the zombies got guns. If that's the NPCs, I would much rather the NPCs just kind of mind their own, try and do their own thing, and you kind of get in each other's way sometimes. Now, I am cool, I've talked about, that I'm cool, like, you go into a place in the NPC and they're like, you know, the NPC's like, drop your stuff. And if you comply, they take your stuff and they leave. Or they tell you, like, get out. And if you comply, everything is cool. But if you don't, that they can turn violent. Basically, make combat with the other player, like, the other human beings kind of opt in. Not that they're nice, but you can choose to, like, do what they say knowing it's not in your best interest to avoid the escalation. But I like the idea that you see, like, the lady, the lady in the red hat running around occasionally, like, you catch, you know, you realize one day she looted the, the bookstore before you got there, and so you're like, okay, you know, so lady in the red dress got the, or red hat got the, uh, got the books before I did, you know, fine, whatever, I don't need them that bad. And you're doing whatever, and then suddenly you stop seeing her around anymore, and you're going, okay, what what gives? You know, I know I know she had she had a base near that house in the north end of town. Like maybe I'll go skulk over there and, you know, see what's what. You see her base like all overrun and everything, like, oh, did she die? And then you realize she just straight up left the area. You maybe you find like one of those survivor maps in the house. That's like to another location. It says, you know, like, you know, James is over there, he probably didn't make it, but, you know, I have to know, like, that kind of thing. And then it kind of gives you, not like an official quest or something, but if you so want to explore your world, you go, okay, well, there was the lady in the red hat, and, you know, like, she went off to go find her friend, whatever happened to her. And that maybe you'd, like, work your way over to the place, you might find where, you know, she got into a fight and she didn't make it, or... Maybe she arrived at the destination and she built a base there, but her friend was gone. And so now she lives over there. You know, or you just find, like, a car crash somewhere. Like, you, you know, get that thing where you kind of have, like, this growing story that just type of happens. But it says, I want NPCs to trade based on their need. Not trader NPC that just buys and sells stuff because trade. Well, I would definitely, if they do have any type of trade... I would want it to be 100% based on need, not arbitrarily value. Like, you bring him a whole bunch of broken wood and it's worth one, you know, one trade point. And that slowly builds up to you can trade that for, like, shotgun ammunition. Because, like, but why would they take a bunch of broken junk? But yeah, I would, I would agree. If they do have any trade, and I actually kind of hope they don't, if they do have any trade, um... It would have to be some kind of barter system based on the immediate need of that person. Like, if the person's short on food, they'd be like, all right, you know, like, I need food. Here's what I have. I don't know. Part of me concerns, because if you, if you start having a bunch of, like, UI stuff, you break out that you open up a trade with the NPC and it covers up half your screen and all that and Project Zomboid. They either have to, like, pause the zombie movement, which then feels weird... Or you're just, it's dangerous to trade because UI gets in your way. 
I I personally could do without trade. Like that the NPCs just approach you with the utmost suspicion at all times. Like, not that they'll straight up, like, kill you or whatever for no apparent reason, but they're not going to hang out. I don't know. We'll see. It actually ends up being a thing we don't really need to worry about that much. We're probably not going to see NPCs for, like, six years. Like, I'm, I'm kind of expecting that Build 42 isn't going to happen to the holidays. Especially after Indie Stone just this past Thursday basically said, you know, kind of kind of temp your uh, expectations. They're nowhere near ready for it to deploy or anything. I think that was telling them, well, it's like, hey, it's not going to be summer. So with that, I, I would be surprised if we don't see it at, like, the holiday season. Because Indie Stone's always been super duper slow on their turnaround. Not in a bad way. They wait till, like, they wait till it's ready. They take their time to do it right. But we're not even going to see the first iteration of animals till end of this year. And then the last big, 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 big update was two years ago. And we're talking like build 46 or 47 is when NPCs show up. Oh yeah, I shot you. I forgot about that. Real friendly guy said... I also feel like people are overblowing what NPCs could potentially really be. Um, I feel like they might be helping around, might be helping around to car harvest traps, uh, maybe fight zombies, but I don't think they're going to be full-fledged world clans, groups, AI. Yeah, that was the other conversation we had. I think it was yesterday that um, Indie Stone doesn't have a background in developing artificial intelligence. The most advanced artificial intelligence they have in Project Zomboid is the zombies' basically movement AI. And don't get me wrong, there's some clever stuff they do with that. Like, it's not bad or anything. But as far as AI goes, it's it's very straightforward. Um, having NPCs where they have, like, their, their wants and needs and all that kind of stuff that they have to manage, that's going to take a lot of work. And I genuinely would not expect that. Like, I, I would um genuinely expect the AI... Like, and that's the whole reason they're doing the animals first. They could start with a very, very basic AI with the animals. Um, then they'll get smarter animals, and then eventually they'll expand onto... Uh, sm like, people. But, um, yeah. I, I don't want the NPCs to be, like, recruitable people you may cut down your tree... Like, so, um... With Sons of the Forest, they added... I'm I'm blanking on his name. The the guy who takes a bad hit to the head and everything. They do that very well in that game. It, was, it wasn't Kevin, it was like... It was very similar to Kevin. I could be mistaken. Kelvin, that's it. Kelvin. Like, I think they did that NPC masterfully. But that's because the forest, you very specifically have to do this tedious cutting down trees and doing all sorts of stuff. And Kelvin won't fight the... I don't think Kelvin will fight the um, the cannibals. Like, he, he manages himself, which I appreciate. Like I, And this is me observing the game, not having played it. Um, so I actually really appreciate that. They did a good job of making it a character that kind of does his own support without also, you know... Carrying the player being something that the player can just dump everything on Kelvin as easily. He kind of tackles the tedious type of stuff. Did I not gain hunger from that? What? Okay, Fire, you have a good time unattended inside a small enclosed space. Nothing will possibly go wrong. 
But yeah, so I felt like that was a good fit. But um, a big part of it, if I remember correctly, when you have um, when you have cannibals in the area, Kelvin just kind of like point like points in the direction of the cannibal, and that's about as much assistance as you get from Kelvin in combat. I don't know, I don't... I don't want it to be the strategy that you go to play, like, a long run, and the strategy is to get, like, two or three survivors in your area and say, you, you farm. And now your food's just handled because you got your farmer NPC at home. I was just like, guess who needs new weapons and just got two night sticks? Nice. Like, I don't want it to be like, you farm, you cut trees, you this. Because it's like, what's the player doing? Ah. Uh, it's fine. Let's walk around the place. Like, you already get to the end game and you get bored because there's nothing you need to do. Like, everything's done. You're you're secure. All you have left is to fight zombies. Or come up with, like, really bizarre things like go collect dolls and that. And I feel like the NPCs, while a bunch of people think they would add an end game, if they can be recruited to help you out and do things they effectively speed you up to that lack of end game faster. They they wouldn't they wouldn't be a net new end game. They would quite literally be another tool in your arsenal to get yourself to the end game quicker. Yeah, I don't I don't want quests. I don't want Project Zomboid to be just another game. I mean, I just don't. I don't want them. To, honestly, if they didn't add NPCs, then that would be good for me. Not feeling so cocky now, huh? And all it took was for me to go full on Grizzly Adams. I'd better get out of here before he comes back. Like for me, the things I'd rather see them do is I'd rather see them do stuff like expand the types of materials we can get, like how you can craft stuff, which they're already working on. Yeah, no, I mentioned it earlier, uh, Real Friendly Guy, that my hope for um, the NPCs is that they would kind of be like the player, where they just kind of live out there and they do their own thing. That there isn't like a formal system between you and the NPCs to like trade and recruit and all that kind of stuff. That they basically are out there trying to live their lives in the apocalypse, trying to survive the zombies, and that you kind of bump into each other. I says, surely they'll have, yeah, they'll have, they'll have the option to turn them off. My my point being though is once they exist, there's going to be balance around them, and either the NPCs are not necessary to survive, like just fundamentally, realistically. At which point they become just another tool in your kit that, you know, again, perhaps gets to be too powerful just because it's there and easy. Um, or, what's this? Lake gunshots. Oh. I think we go back to him? Is that what we're doing? Not that. Okay, get back to Jeremiah. Alright. But, um... Like, I, I want them to be just kind of a rogue variable off the side. Because if they make it so that they actually do a lot for you, and they balance the game around them being available, I feel like it's just going to skip you to the end game where there's nothing to do much faster. Um, but if they don't make them necessary to do it, they're just, they're just noise that doesn't do anything. Um, them being a random variable that just kind of kind of mucks with stuff, like just because they're trying to survive and you're kind of competing for resources and that kind of stuff, that to me I think would be the happy place for them to be. Where they're not they're not like forced to engage with them constantly. Um and they're also not totally useless. And I know I know a bunch of people want want it to be like state of decay where you build up a community, you do a whole bunch of other stuff like that, and there's this whole big progression around it, and I get it. 
like to me that's not Project Zomboid. That's a totally different game. Not even that that's a bad game, but like that's that's state of decay isometric. And yeah, I know they'll have the option to turn them off if I don't like them and blah blah blah, and I get all that. My concern is they'll rebalance the game around them, kind of forcing you into it, which is one of the beauties of Project Zombies. You're really not forced into doing almost anything. So, my entire concerns may be unfounded. I've just played too many games that, like, I got really into the game, and then the updates adding to the game are what destroyed the game. So, you know, I get paranoid whenever there's that kind of a big change that that'll happen again. Because, like, to me, Project Zomboid's magic is the fact that you are doomed from the moment you start. Like, it's not about rebuilding society. It's quite literally, there was no hope of survival. This is how you died. All right, let's save before here, because I'm pretty sure we're going to get here. And either he's going to have us effectively set up to fight it, I think is originally said NPCs are going to spawn with family links and have their new their own objectives and reunited with loved ones. Um, I'd like to have temporarily temporary travel companion out convenience. Yeah, I could see I could see like the tenuous thing where you're going the same direction and it's not that you team up and you're like, yeah, we're we're bros, we're gonna go over here and do this. So much as it's a more tenuous thing that's like, okay, like, I'm traveling this way, you don't seem like you're going to murder me, so, like, as long as you're cool, I'm not going to, you know, try and shoo you away or whatever. Like, it's I, it's not that I don't want, like, I want zero interaction. I just don't want it to be a thing like, you did this thing to help me. You got 20 reputation points. Well, when you hit 50 reputation points, you can cash in those points and recruit this person to your party. Like, that, that to me would be a huge letdown. Did you find it? The legend might be bunk, but the spear is real. Maybe the legend is also real. Let's hope so, for your sake. Yeah, the bear is definitely tracking me. You have any luck with the radio? I did. Did you see the lights in the night sky, the aurora? Well... When that flared up, the radio came to life. Just lit up. Started spitting out noise, but it was all gibberish. Bits and pieces of things. Music. Talking. I think it needs more range. A more powerful signal. If we could find a way to boost the signal strength when the aurora is active, we might be able to get a message out. Let me guess. You have an idea. <laughs> You're starting to get it, Mackenzie. I was digging through some old geological survey maps. Those look like military insignia stamped on there. Focus, Mackenzie! He's a deserter. This survey shows a series of radio transponder towers that cross back and forth across Great Bear. Now, why would those be there? Good question. But for another time, we can use these. How? Each tower has some electronics that had served like a signal booster to make sure the message gets to the next relay. Okay. Well, you get me two, maybe three of those, and I might just be able to rig us up our own signal booster. You might, huh? And I guess I need to do this while old Bear decides if I'm going to become the next chapter in his legend? Don't be silly. Spence's Bear would be long gone by now. That was 150 years ago. Maybe he has, I don't know, genetic memory. Ridiculous idea. But there's definitely a bear out there, and he's definitely interested in you. You'll just have to take your chances. Says the guy safely inside the wooden cabin. Damn it! You think I want to be in here? I need to get a message out, and this might be the only way. What message? What does this have to do with me contacting my friend? There's more at stake than you and your friend! <sighs> Please, Mackenzie. Get me those boosters. I'll fix the radio and the first call we'll make will be to Perseverance Mills. I promise. Okay. 
I'm on it. I'll be back with the transponder parts. Watch your back, Mackenzie. What do I have to worry about? I have a legendary 150-year-old demon bear hungry for my blood. Bullets don't stop him, but I'm armed with basically a medieval weapon, which I'm sure will do the trick. I'm stuck in this winter wasteland where lights in the sky make the power flicker and electronics explode, and the only people I seem to meet are all slightly crazy. And this is all after I crashed my plane deep in the wilderness and somehow lost my ex-wife along the way, and I'd really kind of like to find her back. <laughs> Don't forget about the wolves. <laughs> Let's get on with it. And meanwhile, he's like, okay, I've been sitting here going, like, you're calling me crazy, man. You're so much worse, Mackenzie. Um, oh, we're about to get hit with ads, so give me just a moment, because what I'm going to go ahead and do is I will switch us over to... That's not the thing I need to reset. That one. Get sort of Nitro to start a race. All right. I'm trying to unlock the next course. So, exclamation mark play to play the race. And we're doing this because we have ad breaks, and this gives us something to do during those ad breaks. That doesn't mean you have to miss the action or pay for it or whatever. It says, uh, so anyways, meanwhile, so I want to set a new meta, new meta events around the actual survivors. That'd be neat. Oh, I agree. Like, don't don't just have like an amount of time passes and you hear the three gunshots out in the distance. Have the three gunshots be an NPC in trouble. And particularly if you get combos like repeated gunshots and then a scream. Now tell a story. Right. That's the kind of stuff I want to happen. Is I, I want to have that type of like world storytelling happen naturally. Um, and it could be you just totally miss the story that like you hear the gunshots, you go to investigate, and you just don't find that she was like in this bedroom up top, and because you don't find it, you never get the closure on the story. That's fine. Um, and we'll let this go for a few minutes, or not a few minutes, uh a little bit longer for people to sign up. And then we'll go ahead and start the race. And then during the race, instead of calling it out, I'm gonna try and eat some of this food I have for my dinner. Yeah, to me, that's more interesting than, you know, you have the traitor who's safe in their bunker and can't be hurt, or you have the NPCs that, you know, randomly show up in some house and you talk to them and you can befriend or enemy them and get them to join and all that kind of stuff. To me, having NPCs just kind of living their lives out there in the world and they add depth to your world, to me, is the more more interesting thing. And I know people want something way more formal, and I get it, but I also don't want it. I'd rather they just do their thing and it kind of add something other than just zombies to experience. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, eat a little bit of this food, and meanwhile, enjoy the race.
Okay, sorry about that, and welcome, El Gusto. Going pretty good, just doing more The Long Dark. Having our little, uh, our little races in between whenever the ad break happens. Yeah, so I hope the game can be really mean sometimes. I have spent much of my time in this game way in the back. Alright, so it looks like Stan the Man has won the race for chat. So congrats on the victory. And we'll get to see the final scores of everything when we get here in a second. My car must have engine troubles. It's, um, the game definitely feels like once you lose ground, it's super hard to uh, to recover. Yeah, so at first we had Stan the Man, uh, and at third we had Kalaria Star. And when it comes to top speed, Pilot Monster had 105.5 cent kilometers per hour, as well as spent 379.61 meters in airtime. And then we didn't have any of our records particularly happen. All right, so let's go ahead and get back over to the Long Dark. All right. So I'm going to call it out. Um, we are absolutely getting attacked by this bear while this happens. I had grabbed those because now I actually have some cured, cured rabbit leather. It can be used for crafting and repair, but the thing is I don't have the ability to do that yet. Which is the one thing that's been curious, like I've been getting all these materials I could be using, but I'm now kind of... It almost feels like you're pressured into not carrying it with you because of your limited carrying capacity. Because you can't do anything with it. Nope, I didn't want to give her that. It's fine. You know what, I'll actually leave that hook on the ground. Um... Need to drop slightly more. But I mean, I'll eat an energy bar. Alright. I wonder if the spear is good for the wolves and everything else. Like, you can just have anything rush you and, like, do the whole brace. All right, so we gotta go right back the way we came. See if I drink this water, if he'll bring me under. How much am I off? Point four. Should be able to drop like almost anything. Uh, that sewing kit is basically done. We're no longer overburdened. We can just walk like normal. Which still feels pretty slow. Yeah, so it's set spear. Okay, so I'm not sure if you noticed that because it is that behind me. That'd be all right. So I'm covering up a little bit, but I have my stat or my stamina gauge down the bottom right. Um, when I poke that spear into the ground, that thing goes down fast. I don't know why putting a spear in the dirt and holding it in place absolutely obliterates my endurance, other than or sorry stamina, other than you know game like game mechanics but you know it does
Because holding the earth spin to a standstill is hard. Have you ever tried it? I mean, if we were poking the spear in the ground and suddenly bringing the earth to an abrupt stop in rotation, um, like literally the trees would rip from the ground and fly out into the sky. The amount of forces would be, would be unimaginable. Because I can't remember how many, how many, it wasn't in like the tens of thousands of feet per second or whatever that everything's moving with the way it's orbit, like the earth spinning. And, you know, it depends on how close you are to the equator and yada, yada, yada. But you get the idea. Let's get down here so we're not up in the hill. I'm trying to remember. I used to know the number. Because there was related to that you had to figure out what it took to get out into orbit and all that. And so you had to take into consideration the rotation of the Earth. You just had a bear stock in a populated town. Okay. It's something like that. Yeah, it's it's some ridiculously big number. Because you think about the fact that the Earth, I can't remember how many miles or whatever, like kilometers, it doesn't matter, choose your units. But like, you go to like the equator and you look at how, how long it takes to go and dip this thing to go from one side all the way around in 24 hours and how just unbelievably large the Earth is. And then you do the math of saying, okay, well for this point to get the whole way around and back to where it started in the course of 24 hours, it has to get the entire distance of the circumference of the Earth. And it's just ridiculously high. Now, obviously, if you go, like, way up to the pole where you're just, like, on the tippy top just doing a little circle like that, it's not as impressive. But, you know, even if we split the difference, it's still going to be pretty pretty fast. All right, we do have some self-care being enforced. I assume Chaotic Awesome is going to go through the whole list, because they usually do. All right. Let's go ahead and get that self-care real fast. And right, thank you for that self-care. Redeeming a stretch, a hydrate, and a posture check. I'm actually already posture checked. I just had someone do that a minute ago. Uh, so I am sitting up straight. But thank you for keeping me honest. Yeah, being able to stop the world's rotation, it wouldn't even be like... You, you hear half the stuff when you're talking astrology. And, you know... People discuss, like, oh, this and that, like, oh, yeah, the Earth would end after some period of time because of the cascading effect. And they're like, no, that'd be an immediate destruction. <laughs> You've arrived with chicken soup. Nice. Sentient, sentient cookie being like, I want, I want the soup. Especially with half the stuff you show, like, on the Noms channel in, uh, in the Discord. It's usually all, like, very impressive stuff. Here. Okay, so we've learned that I can craft new ammo. So that's something I should keep in mind then, is after I fire, I should make sure to recover my casings. Not only would the trees fly off, but practically everything in the surface would go, oh yeah, you'd lose a chunk of the surface of the earth would go. Like it wouldn't it wouldn't just be a little bit, like the actual physical like layers of topsoil, a bunch of that would go careening into the sky. It's just moving so absurdly fast. Like, that was when you were playing Kerbal Space Program, and people were asking, like, why don't you just shoot the rockets straight up? And it's like, you have to understand, the Earth's moving heckin' fast, and I need to get myself circling the Earth. That at all times, when you're talking about space travel, you're orbiting something. There is some, well, like, there's some primary gravitational force that you are circling. Now, it could be a multiple, so it's not like a circle or whatever, and it's not, you know, a sound orb and yada yada yada. That's all possibilities. But, um... Oh, they're all right here. Okay, I thought I was going to have to go to a completely different zone. Alright, well, the closest one is going south, so let's turn left about 90 degrees, so that way. Start working our way this way. But, um... But like very genuinely, I want to make sure you're circling it. The the idea about orbit is 
you're falling but missing your target. So you're falling at such a rate that you just keep keep missing and going around and around. So you're going enough forward at the rate you're going down that you don't quite get there. But if you go straight up and down, your only possibilities are one, you come straight back down, or two, you do manage to actually break Earth orbit, and now you're careening, you know, out in sun orbit. So if you want to, like, reach something like the moon or whatever, you need to first get orbit around the Earth, and then that gets you in position to move on. Because most of the time when you're, like, increasing your orbit, you're just basically trying to accelerate in the direction of your orbit such that you increase the area of it. And then you can do all sorts of fancy stuff like, you know, hit other gravitational fields to effectively slingshot you to give all that extra momentum where you use their gravity to pull you in. And then you barely miss them, and then you rock it on the other side to give yourself that much more speed. Gravity-assisted propulsion. I'm assuming this radio tower is going to stand out like a sore thumb. Because something tells me, being way out here, they're not going to bother disguising it as, like, an absurdly tall and skinny pine tree. Like they do half the places. You go to any type of like cellular radio tower in a city and it's usually like you're in the middle of like urban sprawl and there's this one building that just has like this weird looking pine tree and you're like, ah, it's a cellular tower, okay. F-15 jet or rocket debate and how go? What is there to debate? One's a plane and one's a rocket. F-15 jet goes into space, the pilot's dead. Probably can't get there either, but even if they could, pilot's dead. And rockets, not the best thing for using in atmosphere for traveling from point eight to B and having whatever is inside said rocket be in a good place when it gets there. Oh yeah, no, that's... I expect that at some point we're going to be stalked by this... this bear. Like, right now it's clear that the bear isn't actually following me. Like, not not in the game, like, right now what we're doing. Um, rather, we're getting cinematics that are like... The bear's over here. Oh, is it up? Yeah, there it is. Um, I didn't see a way up. Do they have it marked on the map? I mean, it marks that... Like, this way is up? Well, the F-15 had shot down a satellite while in space. So, in a lot of ways, no. So the thing is, when you talk about atmosphere, a lot of people treat atmosphere as, like, there's this hard boundary. Um, and there isn't. Atmosphere just continues to thin until you don't meaningfully see it anymore. Because an F-15 is non-functional without atmosphere. It uses jets. Jet engines don't work without air. Like, literally, the jet engines just turn off. And then more than likely, what it is, it got high enough in the Earth's atmosphere that it's able to fire a missile or whatever to reach up. Because that uses rocketry. And rocketry, rocketry can go that far. That's one of those things that's like, people will call it space, like, but is it? Is it really? There's more thrust to drag ratio than overcome it. Well, drag isn't a problem in space. Yeah, I kind of said satellites still sit in low Earth orbit, not technically, not technically space. Yeah, that's the whole thing. It's it's one of those things that people say stuff like that for, and I don't mean you, like the people who announce it because they want to get like that clickbaitiness. They're like. Fighter jet hits rocket, like, shoots down satellite in space. And people are like, oh man, that's impressive. And you're like, well, no, not really. They're taking a lot of creative liberties on what they're writing here.
What's a red symbol on the lower right screen? Oh, and so if you see the one that you're seeing like right now, uh, that means I'm overburdened. I'm carrying more than I can without penalty. Um, but there's another symbol that appears and disappears from time to time, a little bit above that. That looks kind of like a triangle, a slope type thing. Um, and that's telling me I'm climbing a very steep hill. Um, that I have a higher risk of tripping and falling. Yeah, it's like... Alright, clearly I'm not meant to go up there because it won't let me walk up there at all. Yeah, so when you see... it should appear here. That symbol? That's basically saying I'm on a steep hill, so I'm at risk of falling. You know, spraining an ankle or whatever. But, um, where uh, Conrad said satellites are slow, technically in low Earth orbit and not technically in space, this is actually one of the reasons why we have to have satellites that have like stuff like RCS and all that to give them a little bit of thrust because they are hitting those little bits of atmosphere that slowly slow them down. Um, so we do need to have them like kind of be able to nudge themselves forward a little bit here and there to keep them in space. Um, and the reason why a lot of those satellites eventually lose orbit is they get too low on fuel to continue to maintain that or they decide it's not worth it anymore. Like the satellite's technology becomes obsolete over time as tech advances and they go rather than, you know, do any kind of maintenance on this thing. We're just going to let it deorbit where we can control where it comes down to be like the ocean or the middle of nowhere desert or something. Uh, most news outlets tend to treat anything they see cruising altitude for a commercial airline to space. Yeah. It's people being creative in the reporting. Which you get it. They gotta They gotta sell their stuff. But at the same time, it's like, all right, like that one's one that wouldn't bother me. There's like F-15 shoots down satellite in space. I'm like, okay, like I'm willing to ignore the technical details on it that it's not technically correct because, you know, like new, new height record for doing that kind of thing. Sure, that's fine. Like that's not hurting anyone. But then you have times when they'll like misrepresent the information where it's like, well, no, the way you're representing this is actually problematic because... It's making something something it isn't. I think I'd be able to get up over here. Or usually it's over-reporting something, where they'll blow something out of proportion that's like, oh, this is some like widespread horrible thing, and the one I usually bring up, because it's not a political thing, and I don't want to get into political things, was there was... Oh man, this would be like 2008, 2011, I don't remember exactly when it was. Um, there's this whole thing that they're telling, like, all the parents, like, no, 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 you need to, you need to put your, like, hand sanitizer in the top shelf. You need to lock up your hand sanitizer. Don't keep your hand sanitizer where the teens can get at it. They're using it to get drunk. And that just wasn't even a thing. There was, like, one kid who had drank hand sanitizer. I don't even think they died. They just got, it's either they died or they got, like, really sick. But it was just one kid one time. And that they, like, get everyone in a fervor that, like, this is some widespread thing. Kind of saying sensationalist journalism because that gets them viewed. Yep. And if you click on it, you're doing nothing but enforcing it. So when you get clickbait, like when you get clickbaited and you click through, congratulations. You have deemed their active their actions successful. You are supporting farther activity of that kind. And the only way to do it is to see that title that really makes you want to click and go, no, I can already tell this is garbage. Oh, it's one of the things I appreciate that people have been doing on stuff like um Twitter and Reddit lately, that they'll go, like, they'll have bots that are like, is this clickbait? And they'll be like, you know, it's a human being has to go over it. They'll be like, this art, like, this article implies XYZ. So, does this work? Okay, that's... Wonder if this is any good to eat. Not the reaction I was expecting. That was weird. I was expecting the wolf to either A, impale itself on the spear, or B, just nope the heck out. The one thing I was not expecting was uh, the wolf to go, you know, oh no, they got a pointy stick. I was not prepared for this moment.
But it's kind of like the same thing with like games that are going super duper heavy on like the MTX and all that. Like the really not we're not even talking like cosmetics, like the borderline gambling mechanics, um, pay to win kind of stuff, like that kind of stuff. The stuff like we can all pretty much agree is bad for like the industry and all that. Oh, that sucks a whole lot. All right, so west is that way. May took off because you thought I could play fetch the stick. I was hoping I was gonna be able to climb down there, but I don't think I'd be able to climb down there. All right, we go back. I didn't want to walk the whole way. It's kind of cool. That's the I'm being hunted sound. Come on, dog. Hey. All right, so lesson learned. Just shoot the stupid thing. So this is implying I don't have injuries. That I'm well fan... They just have a sprain risk. Now it did say torn clothing. Okay, so they tore my hat. And it may have been it you took too long to deploy the spear. Because the first time I put that spear on, that dog was gone. <sighs> I want to climb down so bad, but I don't... I know that looks like... I almost certainly am going to break something trying to climb down. This isn't Skyrim where I can just like drag my body against the hill and then go down entire mountains and it's cool. Or Fallout or so many other games you can do those types of abuses. Or where you like... You spam the jump button and it's kind of like... Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, lets you get away with it. Yeah, I don't care about the rabbit right now. Hey, wolf. Okay, as long as I knew it enough in advance, they get scared off. Which is interesting. But if we wait to the last second, it doesn't work. I wonder if the bear will, like, have... Um. That's not part of the plan. The wolf, the wolf figured out that it drains my, uh... Okay, this time I got hurt. Need some first aid. Not that. We need painkillers. Okay, well, with that lesson learned, we no longer play with the Spear and Wolves. Because that wolf ran up and just stared at me. It's like, what? And I'm like, okay, but my endurance is going down very... Like, my stamina is going down very rapidly. And you're just waiting me out. So I was hoping, like, you know, lift the Spear up and put it right back down. You know, like, bait it in. Yeah, so that's definitely not the move. But we were committing science. And now I got cool scars we can show our ex-wife. Yeah, we're 
barely over here. Okay, so we're going to go farther south. It looks like this main area here is going to be a big lake. Um, and we can fall through the ice we previously discovered, which is a bad time. It doesn't kill you, but you climb out nearby where you fell in. And you go from being comfortable to being soaking wet and, like, hypothermic. So it takes it's a perfectly fine situation, makes it a very bad situation very quickly. All right. I do think for the survival mode of this, it would be fun if we could do any type of, like, building or construction. Are we going to go shout at Grandpa? Well, that's not nice. I mean, I assume you're doing it with reason. You're not just arbitrarily walking into a room and then screaming at someone for the sake of doing it. How it goes with the like, grandpa, you big jerk. He asked you to do it? Oh, that's perfect. I'm gonna start collecting stuff for fire. Because I don't imagine we get all the way to this place. How far over is Oh, actually, we might. I was there to think. What was that? Alright, maybe it's the ice settling. I was going to say, I don't think we get all the way over to this building without any problems. I still can't jump. That's still not the jump button. My mind forever wants to make it the jump button and not the big spirally wheel thing. Oh, well, that's... That's not what you want to see. Well, okay. We're going to say, I think we're probably going to fall through the ice here. Okay, we're fine. Yeah, I don't know if it's like certain spots of the ice are sketch and you can't tell, or if you can tell, like there's minor tells that I don't know yet. Um, or it's just like if you spend too much time on the ice or whatever it is. Or like maybe your your load will uh, affect how long it is. You get the idea. Man, you aggroed from way back there. Sit. Stay puppy. Night is coming. I'm gonna have to leave something behind. You can't go inside, the doors don't operate, but the buildings are all collapsed. That's a tease. Because my thought is I can get to the other side, um, and start, like, boiling some water, cooking a whole bunch of wolf, getting my food up, all that kind of stuff. So I'm willing to be very overburdened because I'm about to turn all this food and like all this meat into food I shall eat. All right, so it's over here a little.
There you are. Alright, so it doesn't look like one of the buildings that's technically all the way indoors, it's just kind of indoors, which is fine. Because, uh, like I said, what we'll end up doing is we'll go over here, we'll set up our campfire, we'll start cooking a bunch of stuff. It's going to be dark soon, I don't want to deal with it. Come on, let me place you somewhere. All right. I'm not gonna be able to get. That's fine. Both will take about an hour to cook. First playthrough? Yep. Or sandbox this mode. Um, I'm playing story at the moment. We do have a character that is alive in sandbox mode as well. But um, the kind of the plan I had was to like do the story stuff until we hit like you know the end of a chapter or whatever. And then we'll switch. So we've got a forge over here, but I don't think... Because, like, I haven't unlocked more stuff for metalworking yet. So it's not... Is it basically just the spear? So it's got an hour till ready. I cleaned up enough space. Let's see if I can't put down my bedroll. Sleep one hour. Oh yeah, and I figured as much, it'll be like Project Zomboid where you need to know the map well enough to be able to reasonably survive. Taking our, like, miniature rest and all that. I'm surprised, like, you don't just wake up with a bear looming over you. Like, you know the bear's the thing, because we're dealing with the bear right now. Oh, I don't want to do that. I want to make it about water. You can. Alright, well, probably don't spoil that. That's the thing, I'm surprised it hasn't already happened. Like, with me constantly, like, cooking all sorts of meat and everything, and... All that, I fully expected to wake up with something going, oh, heck yeah. Oh, it won't happen in story mode? Okay. Yeah, and the other one, I could see it being more of a thing.
Eat a bunch of random stuff. Once in a while, you can put yourself into a situation that can happen. Yeah, I could see that, like, if you're just really close to where they're at. And all that. Yeah, like, the stuff I've been able to get away with in this has been pretty unexpected. Now, let's sleep for another two hours. Um, it's still going to be dark outside, which is a bit concerning. So I might just sleep till daytime. It did feed way more into that fire than I really needed to. There we go. Take the bedroll. Yeah, still don't have access to anything. Uh, no, it's... That's fine. Like, I actually don't care about rescuing the firewood from there. Um, I'm assuming you can do stuff with, like, torches and all that. Um, but I'm looking to have, like, no hints, no backseating unless I call for it kind of thing. Like, once I've survived, like, through the story or whatever, like, that I've learned the game, like, really learned the game, then I'll be a lot more lax about it. But especially when I'm brand new to a game, I want to, uh, I want to make the mistakes, want to learn as we go. Because I also feel like, one, it's more fun to go through that and see people to go through that. Um, and then two, it also gives a more authentic experience to other people who are like, you know, what's playing this game like? And then watching, you know, watching someone struggle through it a little bit as they make the mistakes that, you know, all new players make who don't, like, look it up on the wiki or whatever. I need to not be... How overburdened am I? I'm pretty overburned. A big part of that is all those wolf flanks. But I figured that solves food for a long time, so whatever. Well, that's not what you want. I don't want a whole lot of this, because I already know you can fall through. Oh. Well, that's way down there. Um, hmm. I'm not feeling very confident about crossing that. Alright, I fully expect to fall through. Because he did that once before. But maybe it won't happen. Okay, so it doesn't matter. It's not like an area. It's just crossing. Cold. Oh, is it just like an invisible barrier? Lame. Lame game. I see. That's super lame. Dumb bunch of stuff on the ground. Try it again. We can do that. We can science it. I'm going to try and get myself to the point of not being overburdened. Um, why is it so hard to keep my carry weight down? You weigh nothing. That's fine. I took two steps forward and already did that. So it goes way more? Um, I don't think so. It makes sense for them to weigh more. But I'm at the point where, not doing that, but you like, you notice I step right here, and instantly it triggers. It's an invisible wall is what it is. Of sorts.
So we're going to reload back before we went hypothermic, because I fully expected that to be a thing that happened when it was that much in between. I really don't like those kind of mechanics. Um, Like, I get why they did it. Like, it makes sense. I'm not mad about it or anything. But it's annoying that's like, oh. I would rather there's a tell on the water. Alright, so I can't cross there either. Oh, maybe that is. Like, that snow, like, that part's darker than this part. So maybe it's have to stay in the lighter part. Okay, we did make it across. But he can't walk down to Palm Springs. The game sucks. Yeah, like, no, like, for example, falling through makes sense. I could see that, like, if these dark areas, for example, are the I can't walk and those light areas are the ones you can walk on, that would make sense to me, because at least that's visible. I was trying to focus on the cracks, um, but having it, like, be how bright or dark it is, fair enough. Is there anything that communicates effectively? So yeah, it's like that whole middle area is probably a no-go. Well, that's a bummer. I really kind of want to cross the middle area. I can't imagine there's a path the other way, so I probably got to go out and around and then south. That seems to be exactly it. You can you can be on the light, you can't be on the dark. Alright, so we go down this way. I'm really surprised you haven't seen, like... So, I'm, I'm getting mixed signals with the bear. So we've made the comment that, like, we could shoot the bear and it doesn't seem to care. Like, our character had acted like they experienced it more than the one kind of, sort of-ish shot we had way earlier. Like, we kind of, sort of-ish shot it once. And then they're like, nope, it's immune to bullets. Bullets don't work. I'm like, how, how do you know? We fired one round. Yeah, so it's up there. Oh, it's broken. Cavalar fur. Right, like, it could be immune to bullets. I'm not saying it's not. My point was more, like, why would your character just, yep, totally, totally immune to bullets. Let's, like, let's not bother trying anymore. Like, no, nah, I'm, I'm willing to give it a good couple rounds. Let's put some more bullets in this thing. Let's figure it out. That might be my ramp up over there. It could be over there, it could be around the other side up there, and it could be all the way back there and over the top. I actually can check the map. Uh, I'm not sure which. Ah, <laughs> bullets, my only weakness. And falling, and fire, and electrocution, and drowning, and, you know, sudden changes in air pressure. And rejection. And halting the Earth's rotation. I mean, I feel like that's the Earth's weakness, and then it would be the pressure thing, is what actually is my weakness. Yeah, the problem, Strider, is we're in the middle of the wilderness, and I don't think the plan was to go up against a super bear um, to have 30-odd six ready. This is probably meant for hunting deer, at which point 
you know, you're gonna be wasting a pretty big chunk of deer when you blast a hole through it. Well, that's that's not fair. It's it's light colored. That's still not jump. For for anyone wondering, that's still not jump. Freezing. And we reload. Because I don't want to have to deal with building a fire. Like in survival mode, I'll do that. But when I can just save scum, it's like, I just don't want to go through the process of building a fire and doing all that. Oh, and I really not save this far back. It's fine. It's not too far of a hike. I just got to hike back up here. Well, actually, instead of cutting across up north like I did last time, let's go south. And just follow the shore. Burning Sun saying, halting the Earth's rotation would cause over a thousand mile per hour wind uh, because the momentum of the air is still holding. Well, so this is going to be a problem because we can go over here. No, let me go. Let me go. Okay. Just wear a break windbreaker. Easy. All right, so I can't climb up there. Yeah, so that's, this is the area we were at last time. That's trying to creep around. Like I went in there-ish. What? Oh, it's fine. I know I'm walking on like a vertical hill, so I'm, you know, spraining my ankle really easy. How did I sprain my wrist? What? The ankle makes sense. Do I seriously... Alright, we'll quickly... Bug gotta be... I mean, it could be that the idea is you're, like, leaning up against the hill like you're actually using your wrist for it, but it's still weird. So... Why... Leaning out, so that's my best guess. They mentioned Southmore. Um, maybe. Like, it feels like where they drew that path there, it should be there, but we didn't see anything. So I'm gonna go with the strategy, like, keep going... Keep going this way, in hopes we see a ramp up. Or, finding, like, a... A climbing rope or something. Like, already set up kind of thing, like someone had already been up there. Might have been a cave back there. I didn't see one. I was curious what my chance of hitting it at long range were. Yeah, it totally feels like we're going in. Yep. All right. Urkel resists the urge to offer advice. Yeah. No, and I get it. like this one. I don't think has been as like as bad. I know a lot of people that came to um 
Subnautica who were trying to make sure to respect my wish to um not be backseat and all that. There were a number of people who were like, you don't understand how difficult it is to just bite my tongue. Like, I don't want to ruin the experience because I want to genuinely see you experience this. But I also want to tell you the things, and I know I shouldn't. It's like, mm-hmm, I understand. There's games you get into and you get all excited for seeing people play, and you just, like, want to help them, like, kind of just give stuff. It ends up, like, doing that actually makes the game not as fun and worse. It actually kind of can, like, really kill the fun of the play, both for the person playing and for the others viewing. And it's just, like, it's a tricky place to be. Like, being mindful that, like, no, I really shouldn't say something. See, those, those like, that looks like where we get up. Please let me up. Nope. That's okay, because I can just reload right back to where I started. Yeah, so I was thinking it was the light versus the dark ice. That's very clearly wrong. Yeah, and it's once that shows, it's a timer unless you back off. Which is kind of what I figured it was. Alright. So, let's load our game. Because it showed me that graphic. Spoiler, there's snow. Yeah, I kind of like the gag thing like that. But even that, you have to watch. Because people sit there and they'll like think they're doing some fun little spoiler. Like, that's not really a thing. So they like, spoiler, there's lava, and you're like, well, I didn't know that. Because, like, very genuinely, I had the, um, the lava biome spoiled and the cuttlefish spoiled to me. In um, in Subnautica that way, that people thought they were just being like clever and it wasn't a big thing. It's like I haven't been there. I have no idea about these things. Yeah, that was that stuff was the day that I was kind of like, all right. Like, I was, I was legitimately on the edge of being like, alright, you know, I'm gonna end the stream and just play this on my own. Adds one minute, thank you for the heads up. I was gonna walk a little ways farther this way, and then I will, uh, switch us over to Nitro. Just while the ad break is going on. I do think we're probably far enough south this time. Alright, so let's go ahead and get that switched over, because we're about to get hit with an ad, so... Want to go ahead and switch this over to Nitro. And the reason we're doing this with Nitro is, um... That way no one misses any of the stuff. Uh, too too early, Darstrider. You gotta, you gotta wait till I actually get onto the racetrack, so... You gotta do the command again. Um, next time something gets spoiled, ban the entire chap, slow mode, emote, own, stream delay. It's just, um, I have a button that's, I, I jokingly call like a panic button, that the entire idea is, I haven't, it hasn't been as bad in a while, but there was a big thing going on for a while called hate raids, that basically what was happening is there were people who were targeting, it's usually like, um, transgendered streamers, like other vulnerable groups or whatever, but, um, they would target people with those tags and they would go in there and they would raid them with like a hundred people that, all of it would be terrible. Like, it would be nothing but racist things and all sorts of, like, terrible pixel art and all that. Stuff that's against TOS to allow in your chat and all that. Backseat allowed, but only in emote mode. Give us a challenge. But, um, but yeah, so what is happening is people are putting in there, but for one thing that people don't realize is as the content creator, I have an obligation to keep the channel, like, in line with TOS. Um, if you allow your chat to just, like, carry on, like, you know, saying hateful, racist, or, like, violence against other people, stuff that's against TOS, they can suspend your channel for not moderating it. Like, that, you have an obligation, like, contractual, mod you know, contractual obligation. It's in, it's in the actual document you have to sign to become affiliate or partner that, like, you're going to moderate your stuff. Um, 
And so what the hate raids are doing is, first of all, they throw the person off because they're just trying to have a good time with their community and all that, and they have all this racist and awful stuff in chat, and they're just so many people that they're trying to get it under control. But what they would do is, at the moment that they did it, they would take screenshots of your chat being you know, like unmoderated, and then they would submit that. They would like report that to Twitch saying, hey, look, man, you got this chat over here. They're being racist. They're being awful. They're being terrible. And so it's kind of a double whammy of you deal with that thing that, you know, puts you into a funk. It throws you completely off. Almost always they would end the stream because it was impossible to get under control and all that kind of stuff. And then they turn around and they report you to Twitch who suspends your channel because based on the evidence they would see, it'd be terrible. Which granted, usually you would appeal it. And then X number of days later, your channel would get unsuspended. But the whole time you have no income because, you know, your channel suspended. And it was so awful. Like, how words now are considered violence? I mean, if you're talking about murdering people, yes. <laughs> Hate readers knew that, I bet. And the thing they did, they're probably... Yeah, it was deliberate. It was very much that they want to take advantage. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm entirely in camp you shouldn't be it shouldn't be okay to like threaten people with violence and that kind of thing like when you when you look at stuff the threat of violence is considered enough to press charges against someone like for real world like crimes like if i threaten violence against you you can act in response as if i have committed violence against you in the moment like if you feel threatened kind of thing and there's going to be all sorts of legalities and technicalities we don't need to get into that it's going to base on localization but yeah, I I personally don't think there should be a place where it's okay to be like, you know, threatening people fans. I understand in a game like, I am going to kill you, referring to the avatar of the character being played. We got Donkey Duff in the lead, we got Zingy. I'm actually going to finish my food real fast, so I'm not going to announce this, so let me get my food and I'll be right back. Oh yeah, and if you pull up the website and all that, get there. Yeah, no, I'm I'm more of Discordy's mindset when it comes to like people who say awful stuff. It's not worth wasting your air. They're trying to get a rise and all that. Just block and move on. And that kind of thing. Like when when you engage them in all that kind of stuff, it's not it's not like they're going into it for a meaningful and reasonable discussion. They're there to cause trouble, they're there to stir the pot. Like, there's there's one thing, like a person saying, I don't understand. Okay, a person saying, I don't agree. That's fine. 
one person like gets to like slurs and that kind of stuff or violence and that kind of thing, you just block ban. Like one hundred percent. If people drop like like slurs in this, you're gonna be gone from the chat. Like that'll just be the end of it. There won't be a discussion about it. You'll just the door will hit you so hard you won't even realize you're gone until you're gone. I can foster a community that, you know, accepts people or they don't. That's my choices. There's not there's not an in-between there. And Send a Cookie took the win, so chat won. So that's another win for us. What do you consider a slur? I'm not going to say them. Racial slurs, stuff like that. If we're getting into the whole thing about what is and isn't hate and what isn't isn't that, um, if the group being impact says it is, it counts as hate. And you may not agree with that, but that's fine. I still won't put up with it. It's No one gets to say what bothers them, but the person being bothered. You can't make them justify it or whatever. And in first place, we got Sentient Cookie. Uh, second place, we got Silver 8 Track. Uh, we had at the top speed K Christ at 113.16 kilometers per hour. K Christ also had the highest air travel time at four, uh, 441. 0 0.06 meter. Con uh, Conrad hit the most banana peels at 4, and that's what you got going there. So we're going to go ahead and pop over here and get back to the long dark now that the ads are all done and get on with it. And I'll just misclick everything, don't mind me. Alright. What is it with me and bananas? I mean, bananas. You got to get that potassium. So you can't figure out how to hang? Yep, that's fair. Neither can I. I mean, I'm I'm assuming it's a beta build. Their servers are probably like completely on fire with everyone doing like doing stuff since it just dropped and all that. Right. A slur is the slur is stuff that's as a, you know, like a collective society have said this is not an appropriate term to refer to people. Almost always what happens is there will be a word referring to people, it will be used in a hostile, negative way until it's so frequent that it becomes a slur. That's usually how that goes. Pretty much anything that is diminishing of people is going to become a slur. You know, it may take a while to get there, but it will eventually become a slur. Oh, it's time, Bear. It is heckin' time. Let's do this. I can't save right now. All right, Bear. We do this with no save. Okay. This time I'm ready for you. Come on, you big bastard. Oh no. This is bad. Don't see me, bear. No, 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 bear, 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 bear. Be cool, be cool, be cool. I'll just stay here and I'll be invincible forever. Oh, never mind. Nope, that's not how that works. Would you just kill me? <laughs> Why are you dragging this out so long? It's like, I've lost. Let me die already. Alright, so let's learn our lesson this time, because what happened there was I didn't have a bandage ready. So I couldn't break the spear back out. And because I couldn't break the spear back out, I couldn't I couldn't defend myself a second ago. You can barely believe barely leave it. Okay. What happened was the bear at your face? Well that I'm fine with. I got the idea that the bear killed me. It's like but I had like a full minute of waiting for it to finally finish me off. I'm like, come on, bear. 
get with it. Um, big, big, woo, big, big bear, big bear, big bear chase, big bear chase me. Okay, I'm gonna have nightmares. Isn't this what Leon, that Leonardo DiCaprio? Oh man, I don't remember. Man, it was really fast. Yeah. For a moment, like when the bear didn't hit me, the moment it ran up and I was like, okay, it's like while I'm in a menu, am I unable to be attacked? Apparently the answer was no. I really want to drive home how badly it owned you. Uh, let's see. All right. So, air. Where are you at, buddy? You were here last time. There you are, way up there. Hey, that bear just Holy jumped shit. off that cliff. Okay, it should be absolutely done. This time I'm ready for you. Come on, you big bastard. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get in here. Come on. Would you stop? Get over here. I can't keep the spear down. What is your problem, bear? Get in here. The the gun does like nothing to it. Like that's the whole reason I have the spears. They were very specifically like the bear gives no f's about bullets. The problem is, it takes a long time to switch weapons. My fear is the moment I go for the gun, and it will charge me, and I don't have a chance to switch back. There you go. You ready? Let's do this. Oh, come on. I didn't get hurt. I'm okay. Stop being so buggy. It's making it really hard to do anything. That thought I was gonna come. Because you see, it takes me a good couple seconds to arm it. I have to wait for my endurance or stamina or whatever. Like, that's the thing. This time, because I know I was, what was up. Why are you so buggy, bear? Like, I'm right here at your t radio tower. But I want to kill it. I want to make it dead. I want to wear its pelt on my head. Well, I, I reloaded, like I got the first one. This is not survival, this is story. But then the next attack, I did survive. Yeah, it's weird that they split the game into two. I actually find the split very annoying. Because, like, I set up everything the way I wanted in one mode. What are you doing? No, no, you don't stab it. You brace it and the bear charges into it with its weight. And I'm having problems getting the bear to charge me. Like, I can't run up and stick it with the spear. It's not a mechanic the game has. There we go.
Why would you kill it? Because it's killing everything else. Alright, so do just like we did last time. Oh man, that endurance recovers so slow. It said laceration. Come on. But it didn't do anything. I think I lacerated it. I think it tells me the injuries I cause it as well. Because the bear is getting bloodier each time I do this. Okay, so that time it ran away, ran away. I can still feel my face. Which means I'm not dead. Onward. Uh, the idea they said is they can develop two modes separately and finish the last story mode without having to push all the updates across the sandbox as well all at once, and vice versa. They can implement the sandbox without breaking the story mode. Um, at least that's their rationale. Yeah, I mean... I hear that. I would rather it not be two completely separate executables, because like I said, I had to go and set up all my settings, and then when I made a tweak, I had to go to the other one, and then have to set up all my settings and saying, oh, this is the base, that's the top, that's the reason I'm not finding what I'm looking for. I don't feel bad for the bear. At no point did I run up and hit it. I stood there, and it was all scary. Like, it's been stalking me. Like, it's already tried to maul me two or three times before I got the spear. So there's, like, no moral consequence here. The bear started it, and we're finishing it. I have to run back down, aren't I? I'm not gonna be able to get down over here, will I? Yeah, we're just gonna have to go back. Yeah, well, I certainly don't agree with Pete or anything. It was a bear crosswalk and you impeded. That's my story. I do always find it, like, this isn't a big good example of it. I do always find it weird that, like, people try and make everything into a moral thing. Like, there's, there's like, actual moral problems in the world and ethical problems we gotta actually deal with. But then people be like, what if? What if you found the cure for all the zombies? And then make them all a thing, and you've murdered all these people. I'm like, one, zombies aren't real. Two, I mean, that dude's missing half his skull. I don't think you're gonna, like, give him an injection or a pill and he's gonna be okay. Like, dude's dead. Part of its brain's missing. Trust me, he's not coming back. But they just want to make, like, a whole big, uncomfortable thing. Make it, um, if there is a way to make zombies sentient, you turn everyone to zombies, people can live forever. I mean, still. And then even then, like, with all of that kind of stuff, like where the people try and get those, like, moral arguments with the zombies thing and all that, you can just easily go, okay, but hear me out, at the time you made your decision to defend yourself from being attacked using, using force, you were working with the information you had, and at that point in time, there was no cure that you were aware of, and you were defending yourselves. Like, you make a decision with all the information you have, and it doesn't work out, that's not a mistake. That's a decision that didn't work out. If you go into a situation where you know you do not have sufficient information, and you can claim that information... Your greed will be your downfall. Okay. Like, if you, um... You know that, like, you know you don't have enough information and you have the ability to get that information. Because it's one thing if you don't have the information and you can't get it. It's it's still not a mistake to try and make the decision with the best you can manage. But um, if either know you don't have the information, you act anyways when you could get it. Or if you go counter to the information you have. Like, you know, all the all the data says do X and you do Y and it doesn't work out. Those are mistakes. I, uh, well, I stabbed him 37 times in the chest. No, no, technically the bear stabbed itself. I literally braced my stick in the ground. Um, so that was its decision. The bear was acting in self-defense. Look how menacing he 
brandish that stick at the bear. Is that just a glitch? Yeah, it's just glitchy wood. I was kind of wondering if it was going to leave a blood trail because I did, you know, I did have a spear inside of it quite a few times. And they did establish blood trails or a thing way earlier in the game when I cut my hand and I was leaving a trail of blood behind me. How you doing, elk? Or deer? Not elk, deer. Different animals. Why doesn't bleed to death? I mean, to be fair, why can I not shoot the bear in the face a bunch of times and make it knock it back up? It's a video game. It's gonna do what it wants. He says, well, the thing is, people might live forever, but there'll be no offspring, so... Well, I mean, plus, let's be real, zombies are not viable. We have a bunch of people running around that never never drink water. Um, they seem to only be interested in eating each other. And, like, don't do anything to do any type of help, you know, medical sustaining on anyone else. Like, they would just crumple and decay. Like, there would, like, zombies conceptually don't make sense. It's half of the time when people try and do, like, the apply the realism. It's like, okay, I hear you, we can talk about it. But we can go ahead and just immediately... We can immediately take the, uh, well, in the real world... No, in the real world there'd be no zombies. So, take it back a step. You can say it'd be fun if, but... In the real world, the premise stops there. Yeah, it's a zombie I'm a kind of at. That's a beauty, there's no such thing as zombies. In the real world, having kids have consequences. I mean, yes. You're not wrong. I mean, technically, any decision you make has consequences. I worked night shift before. Zombies are reason. Well, people being zombie like. Is a thing. That's absolutely a thing. But there's a difference between being denied sleep to the point that you barely are a functional human being and, you know, desiring to consume people's flesh. Having kids is not a choice, having kids is a consequence. I mean, yes, you can choose to have that consequence. And again, not all consequences are bad. Like, that's the thing. Every decision you make will have consequences, and they'll usually have good and bad consequences. Me stopping and getting an ice cream cone has consequences. The good consequences is I have a heckin' ice cream cone, and it's delicious. The bad consequences... My diet might not be in the best of shape if I'm stopping and having ice cream cones all the time. I might, uh, I might have to live with that. But as a one-off, the consequence is so trivial it doesn't matter. There's something way over there. Still don't see... Oh, there it is. There's the uh, radio tower way out there. There's some over there. I can't tell if that's like a tipped over truck. It's some type of red something. You're on a seafood diet. You see food, you eat it. Gonzo Gonzo says, I feel bad for zombies. All they want are human brains. Turning a human, a human me means no brain no longer tasty. Again, zombies aren't real. It's like feeling bad for Dory from Nemo, where she's a pathological liar. Oh, hey dog. I, uh, I didn't see you there. Wanna see a neat trick? It's where I point a gun at you, and you go to sleep. You just saw me kill your friend. Oh, you actually have a plan. Oh, never mind. 
That was unnecessary. I just wanted to see if I could hit a moving target with this. Cause like that that um that sight on there is real chunky. So it's kinda hard to tell where it's actually gonna hit. I mean I assume middle of the middle of the stick on it. I can't I can't actually show where it is. Basically in that circle you've got the little peg in the middle, the very tip top of the peg. You know, not counting bo bullet drop. Iron sight. Thank you. I was blanking on it. You know, it's a junkie. You. Hey. Don't break. Don't break. Don't break. Look, man, I'm right here. Ah. Come on. That's the reason I stopped and saved. Never felt so cold in my Yeah. Genuinely, if I'm doing the um survival, I'm just not gonna venture on the ice. Iron Sight reminds me of the original Call of Duty. Yeah. Okay, so if we look here, let's go down to the railroad tracks to cross. Because up here it looks like it's going to be annoying to get between everything. Prefer using an ACOG? Yeah, no, I was sitting there thinking, it's like, you know, a lot of people I know who have hunted and all that, I, I can't think of anyone who still uses iron sights. At the same time, this random person out in the middle of literally nowhere wilderness, you know what, I could see it. Because actual sites do have a lot of a lot of stuff you have to worry about maintenance to maintain them and all that. Yeah, why would you use iron sights and you could craft silver sights upgrade? Yeah, but don't don't forget after that you gotta get your diamond sights. They're made of heckin' diamonds. I kind of wish instead of doing the thing where, like, you just fall through spots, that, like, you could genuinely see the thin ice and that type of deal. And I realize in real life, sometimes you can and sometimes you can't tell how thick the ice is without, like, you know, doing the thing where you chip at it. But, like, for the game where, like, this, you, like, I first thought it was the dark part. But, yeah. I kind of wish it would just be like you'd see like parts of the ice would be chipped up and it's like, okay, clearly I can't you know, walk here. Because I have to like run around and test to see where you can and can't cross is kind of annoying. Basically, I wish it was more clear what, what ice was walkable and what was not. Because we definitely went through a few places where it was on the light ice as well. All right, gonna go on a hunch here. Let's save. We're gonna go stab a heckin' bear. Um, is the bear dead? No. We uh, what's this about? Um, Canada, really cold, plane crashed, trying to survive, avoiding hypothermia and starvation and everything else. Um, various animals trying to eat my face. It's a survival game. Drinking some water. Basically, the premise is you're, um, wasn't it a solar flare? Um, I don't know if they said it was a solar flare. It was a magnetic something or other. 
like there's like an aurora borealis and then all the electronics start going haywire so there's like some type of weird magnetic thing going on um so electronics get fried by it and since you're flying a plane when it happened well planes like having electronics oh come on it's right there oh stop whining Yeah, because even on the map, I'd assume I could go up that hill. And real life me was absolutely gone and lived in snow areas. That hill looks entirely perfectly climbable. Like, it doesn't even look like even the slightest bit not climbable. Like, don't get me wrong, those there would be really hard to go up. But like just that, like this, the slope like that, that'd be no problem. You, you climb down, you sled down it. Like that's not, like this is a pathetic hill. Or like the fact you walk up this and you sprain your ankle so easily. In my mind, I'm thinking... Man, I have walked up so many hills worse than this in the snow. Sprain your ankle risk is nowhere near this high. But that's the, you know, wink wink realism of sur Would you stop spraining your ankles and wrists and everything else every two seconds I go up the tiniest little incline? I know you have an indicator, but it's ridiculous. I realize it's a video game. It's also really annoying. It's, it's, we joked about it the one time, the realism and survival games, where it's like, you would, you would find dental floss, and if you went an entire day where you forgot to dental floss once, you would immediately get, like, gingivitis, and your character would have, like, a permanent pain debuff, until you spent, you know, you know, collected some black seed or something or else, and, like, put some medicinal stuff on it, and... Where, where'd the antenna go? Yeah, it's, it's realistic, but they take it to the timetable of video games. Oh, okay, there's the bear. Not this again. Let's do it. Do it, bear. Get in here. Don't bug out. Yeah, I'm too slow. Okay. Give me a second, bear. Give me a second. I'm sorry. This bear should be long dead by now. But this is how many times we have stuck that spear in this bear. That bear should not still be, you know, functional. Yeah, 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 round three, I get it. Stop ripping my clothes! That bear has an uncanny sense of timing.
I, uh, well, I stabbed him 37 times in the chest. We did stab him in the chest. Um, kind of said, so the first I mentioned, when I last played, there was no story. Um, in most of the game was not there. I said that, if I guess right, it's not a spoiler, and it's me guessing. With the old man saying it was going to happen, and it happened before, one of the electromagnetic poles shifted and it caused the issues. It could be. And it still didn't die. Yeah, and I'm, I'm assuming there'll be like a final battle or whatever we have with the bear. Because I am noticing each time I'm fighting it, like I'm having to mash button harder. I already have gauntlets. I didn't want those gloves. Um, where are the gloves? Yeah, so it, it shredded my clothes pretty bad. Where are those gloves? No, seriously, where do those gloves go? I'm gonna go to the screen. Um, gloves. Boom. Drop. Okay. All right, so we got all the shortwave antennas. We need to just make our way back. Uh, we'll save. And my assumption is on our way back, we'll have our final battle with the bear. Like, we'll start going west, which is that way. We'll start going west, getting out here. And when we get like to the railroad tracks, maybe not this map, but when we get to the other one where they'll have like the narrow area where I have to go through, we'll fight the bear one last time. Because I don't know about you, but that bear should be super dead by now. Like, yeah, we shot it once, and that could have been like a completely like superficial wound. No problem. Because it was a cinematic. We'll just assume we like we hit in its pinky toe and it went ow, and I don't like it. But um we stuck a big old metal spear in that thing's rib cage and shoved it deep in there like six separate times now. Even if it's not dead, that bear is going to be struggling with the amount of injury it's been you know, it's endured. Um, that's feeling like a bad idea. Don't make me walk the whole way back. It's not even a survival thing, it's just... Like, this is one of the things I appreciate with, um... Games like The Forest, where, like, you did this thing, it's up on a hill. Go ride a turtle shell down the side of the mountain. It's cool. Or, like, the classic of where, you know, you finish the dungeon and it wraps back around. Alright, so we're probably gonna sprain our ankle going down here, I don't care. It's fine. All right, Strider, you sleep well. Man, that bear seems to be completely 100% scripted. That it has, like, it spawns at places where you have to do things. I imagine, I assume there's a speed run for this, but I would imagine there has to be. Imagine with a speed run of this with a bear, the goal is to avoid the bear entirely and just grab the thing. Because like that cinema, like the um, the quick time event of the bear where you like push the spear in, is just time lost. And I'm sure someone's figured out like waging like hop jump across the ice or something to go real fast where you don't break the ice or it doesn't well you can't hop jump because there's no jump but find ways like glitch your way across like throw a thing on the ground and stand on or whatever and then glitch the item forward or whatever i'm sure people found some ways to break the tech Gonna be a long walk. It's fine. We'll get down to the railroad track. Then we just follow the railroad track.
like I said, one thing that is a surprise to me is that we don't have a compass. Because especially anyone doing, like a pilot especially would probably have a compass just with them. But like any any outdoors situation, you're going to have a compass. Because then you just like take it out, just hold up and be like, ah, north. It's not like it hides it. I can pull up my map and just, I have my compass there effectively. But just something that as I'm walking around, I can just like hold the button and my compass comes up into view and I'm like, okay, I'm going north. Because, like, I know if I go south, I'll eventually cross the tracks. I just need to make sure I'm vaguely going south. What, telephone poles? Alright, so it looks like you can go this way. I will say in this story, it definitely feels like water and food has not been much of a problem to speak of. Alright, now I've reached the tracks. I'm going to do a quick save. Now we've got like another bear quick time event. Alright. We get like another bear quick time event or whatever. That's not, I lose because I just didn't mash the left mouse button. I'm actually kind of tempted to just... I, I talked about it when we before... You started there's an accessibility setting where instead of just like mashing the button as fast as you can you just click and hold um i'm actually tempted to do that because i already got a pinch in the upper arm i had a uh, had problems in my wrist from path of exile and that back when i played it all the time and to me mashing the button really fast has just never been like when i was when i was back in the day like playing super nintendo i enjoyed that kind of mechanic but after the years i'm over it I actually don't like quick time events at all, like, where, like, something, like, runs up and he's like, push A, push X, now I gotta push A, now mash A really fast, and if you miss any of the patterns, you just lose. Like, Resident Evil, which one was it? Ooh. It was one of the final fights with Resident Evil, it was, like, this long series of, like, 20, 20 or so, you know, random, like, input you had to time and mash and all that, and that, to me, was one of my least favorite end game things of any game ever because it doesn't feel satisfactory it feels like playing whack-a-mole i'd rather they just put me in an arena with another enemy give us both weapons and then make me have to like dodge and move around and figure out when the times i'm good to move in and try and make attacks like if you're gonna have a cinematic fight just make it a cinematic I am also getting tired of walking back and forth across the same zone again and again. I think it'd even be more frustrating if I was taking the time to do like all the exploration. I would have gone to the zone and explored everything the first time I could. Um, and then have to come back out here and just grab the one or two things and then go back with the zone I've already explored, I think that would actually annoy me. I don't I don't like when games make you circle back over the same path again and again and again. Subnautica did that too. Where we'd go like to a certain depth and then we'd need the next thing so I have to go back up, get the things so we could go deeper, come back to the exact same spot, go that little bit deeper, come back up with the new material, and then go back down. It's like, okay, give me a new area to go to. 
I feel like that's one thing that 2 was a little better, uh, not 2, um, Below Zero was a little better about, as I can only think of one plot time, it was that crystal cave with the, uh, the purple crystals and then the red ones. That felt like the only time they did make me go, like, go back and then come back down immediately. Because I had to get the, um, the high temperature crystals. Have I played Prey? I have not played Prey. Not for any specific reason. I just haven't. The classic, there's a whole lot of games out there. Which means some games that are really good I'm going to miss on. It had a really interesting take on revisiting old areas. Gotcha. There's been a few games that I feel I've done really well. That you circle back to places you have before but they've meaningfully changed since you last were there. I like when games do that one. Like, you go to the city, you have this whole big thing that happens, and you go off to some pl like someplace else for, you know, half the game, and then they have you circle back. You see, based on the actions you committed previously, that the entire area has changed for better or worse. That's not fair. Why does it take so long to actually kill you? Was it because I wasn't watching behind me? Okay, so this one is scripted. Like, that one I was supposed to, uh, not be able to win. Where... where am I? Uh, holy shit. The bear, it's... it's right there. Damn. Where the hell's that space? So first of all, I am not injured at all. Interesting. I do not appear to be able to save. I also noticed it got rid of my sleepiness and all my other stuff. So this is strictly me versus the bear. I think this is trying to teach me stealth way this far into the game.
Yeah, it's unrealistic that our character is not totally dead right now. Like, where we saw that bear, like, viciously grabbing us and, like, ripping around and all, it's like, yeah, it wasn't just tearing our clothes. If I don't keep my distance, I'm done. Gotta find that spear. Can I save now? No, I can't save now. So, do you patrol... So I can't drop down there. Yeah, that's the way we came. Okay. Finds the spear up top. Push X for a plunging attack. And I assume if it spots us, it doesn't just like run to it, we get like some cinematic of it just catching and murdering us. So is this back the way we came? Like, that was the same room, it's just circling again and again? Did it see me? It seems pretty aggroed. Hey, give me. Uh, how's the game treating me? It's going fine. It's fine. It's fine. I assume that time we died. Was that scripted as well? Because again... Not injured. My clothes are all destroyed, but not actually injured. <sighs> yeah, no, this character would be super dead. <laughs> For those who didn't see, um, Iggy Made is a fantastic VTuber. Definitely someone to check out and drop a file and all that stuff. Sorry, I was busy being distracted by things with bears. The bear just wanted to cuddle, and it's just a little aggressive about it. I do find it interesting that we're being mauled by a bear, but not actually injured. It's just lowering our hit points. Like, no lacerations, no... Like, it's just shredding her clothes. And all that. Is it... Well, full-grown bear could decapitate you with a full wipe. So, yeah, you should be dead times over. Oh, yeah. No, like, the first ones, we get ambushed. 
and it attacks us and like it sits there like shows like right like jerking its head back and forth. They clearly took the animation for when it actually kills you. Like when it's out and away from here. Um they just reuse that. And then you come in your like character's like totally fine. If you're aggro, I'm gonna be super annoyed. Cause I'm nowhere near you. Way too close. Where? Where? I'm hearing all sorts of scary noise, but I'm not seeing a scary bear. So the big thing that's going to the big thing that's going to happen is um it keeps making all sorts of noise like it's aggroed but it's not even in this room. All right. I cannot stand that sound anymore. I also noticed daytime is not progressing here. Why didn't that work? Yeah. I didn't think that was going to make a difference. I'm not sure if that second attack was scripted or not. The first one was definitely scripted. Because, like, it didn't let me aim my gun or anything. Like, my character went, oh, no, 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 no. And then, like, the bear attacked me. Like, I had no control. And, like, had it not been scripted, I could have just easily held the left mouse button and exited the zone or something. All right, that said, what happens next? You're all going to have to wait and see for just a minute because it is about time for us to get hit by ads. So, you know, that's a thing. Blame Twitch, not me. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get some nitro going. And remember, you can't you can't join the roster until we get here. Okay, now you can do exclamation mark play to join in, um, or you can go to the website. And for people who's like, how do I tell where I'm in place? If you go to the website and sign in through that, like they'll show you like the whole map on your own, where you'll see your rank and all that kind of stuff. It's not required, but you get a lot more information that way. But yeah, that bear was uh that bear was a big old jerk. So there's clearly a way I gotta go through this place. Um we haven't figured it out quite yet. And the downside is I've definitely slowed down a lot since my second mauling. <laughs> and um it means you have to go slow. I also don't really know the range on the stealth. And this is one of those things I could totally see that the moment I um the moment I unstealth, that the bear might just beeline for me. Because it's really hard to tell, because it's the first time we had a stealth, like an actual stealth there in the game. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and get this going. So as a reminder, exclamation mark play. That's how you get in. Going to be starting here in just a second. And while this is going to go on, I'm going to go bother to him for just a minute. You know, stretch my legs and all that stuff. So you got your 10 seconds. If you don't get in, it's too late. That's what you just got to live with. Oh, it is doing the thing where it's slowed down. Can I, can I? Okay. So it'll be slow until we get into the race, and then the moment I get the menu up and I take it away, it'll go back to normal time. It is a bug that's currently in this, but it is a beta build. At least it's a bug that has a very easy workaround. Brennan Sun, did you get in? I see you, I saw the message there. I don't see you being added to the roster, though. It might just be delayed, though. Because like I said, it's running super slow, so I don't know if it went through. It doesn't look like it went through, unfortunately. Yeah. So it's going to take a second. We're going to have to wait for the countdown. And then I'll have to hit, like, escape. And then, like I said, I'm going to stand up, stretch my legs for a minute, and go bother to him for a minute, and I'll be right back.
And if this happens, like, at the end, if there's, like, a bullet time at the end, I think it forgets to unbullet time the game. So, we'll get fixed here in just a minute. Alright, there's a camera set. Okay, there you go. And I'll be back in a minute. Okay, and I'm back. It looks like Seahawk is leading with She-Wolf right behind. Um, Sir Ice Mage after that. Then you got a couple bots, then Pow Monster and Sentient Cookie, and a bunch more bots. And I am trailing way in the back. Not, not literally in the back, but pretty far back. Okay. Just checking out a message. Someone chat sent me making sure it wasn't, I think, urgent. Uh... It is always interesting when people send you random friend requests with no context to anything and you're like, you know what I'm not going to do? Accept that. I don't know who you are. Like, it's one thing a person messages says, hey, you know, yada yada yada, whatever context is relevant. CK Hawk still holding the lead. Uh, we got Pineapple in second. Not, not very far behind, as best I can tell. Yeah, no, like right there. So just barely holding late. Oh, nope, look good. They rolled out. You been getting a lot of that lately? Yeah. Yeah, for me, it's um with the content creation, like I'm in a whole bunch of discords for this and that. Like there's a discord for content creators for Project Zomboid. Um, I know there's, well, it looks like Dynamo and Pineapple did take the lead at the end, so the bots have one. How dare. How dare they. But it's like I'm in Discord for like Project Zomboid content creators. I'm in a Discord, um, like a bunch of different other content creator Discords who are like friends of the channel. Um, I'm in some Discord, like I'm Discord for, if people didn't hear the announcement, I actually, I haven't repeated since earlier. Um, I did have my big announcement that I was hinting for the uh, last half week, week or so um, that I've been hinting at. 
That is, um, I have joined Surge Streamers. Uh, Surge, I, I think technically you would call them a, an agency, but they don't work like most of them. But um, it's not going to really change much on the channel. The big thing it's going to be is it's going to be better negotiating power for getting keys, as well as like when I do sponsor things, better ne negotiating power there. Um, as far as how it impacts the channel itself, I don't actually expect it to be much. Other than we might get to play a little bit more variety of games, just because there's keys I put in requests for, and they're like, no. So it'll help me have less of that, so I can get more variety of games without killing my killing my wallet and all that. But um, I don't have it. Like if they if they say, okay, we've got this game we want you to play, and I'm like, yeah, that's not going to be a fit for my channel. There's no consequence. Like I can I can refuse anything. So like I wouldn't have accepted otherwise. But um, it's also a group that there are other content creators that are, you know, friends of the channel and all that. Bloody Drongo and Woe Jess are also members of that group. So just showing that's the up and up. But yeah, so that's been the big announcement. Like I said, I don't actually expect it to change much on this channel itself. Um, if anything, it just means I'll have more opportunities to get, like, more keys to more variety of games that maybe companies that are more frugal with their keys I'll be able to get my hands on. Um, and that when I do sponsored content... I'll be in a much better negotiating position to get paid better. Um, and anyways, we got Sentient Cookie who had a top speed. Well, actually, first of all, CK Hawk came in on third. Sentient Cookie had a top speed of 100.72, as well as had the most airtime at 401.7 meters. And no one cares about the bots accomplished. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and pop over here and go boom, boom. Click on everything but the right thing. Uh, there we go. Cool. And go back to slowly crawling along and see if we die to a bear. I did notice this whole time I don't get to save. I'm assuming it's just reach an objective. Which is, I, one would assume I will find the spear. Um, and just judging by the way the scene is, my guess is I will find the spear, the bear will instantaneously aggro me. And when that happens, we have our final battle. Hey, look, my blood. All right, CK Hawk. Why? 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 But it didn't do anything. Are you just really proud of this animation that you just wanted to subject the player to it again and again? It should kill me this time, right? I'm dead now, right? Okay. Alright. So load us back up. Okay. You don't think I faded into long dark this time? I went into the long dark full force. Feels like you're missing something. I never played this. Yeah, so there's a spear that's like, you know, it's a really good spear. And I fought that bear off six times with it. And that's the thing. The bear, the bear has a cinematic. It's like not something you get to play around. It's a cinematic where it ambushes you and drags it back, drags you back to the den. Um, and so I'm trying to sneak around here to find my spear so that I can stab the bear some more. I do agree that one of the two of us should be dead by now. That's a dead end, so we're going this way. This is where I got attacked the last time. If I don't keep my distance, I'm done. Gotta find that spear. Yeah, so last time I went down there while I was on that 
body and he just beelined for me. So it could be, you know what it could actually be? That's back the way we came. What it could actually be is just that main room there. I can't go in the room at all. Like it's just, it's not a trigger, like there's the trigger by distance, but that just entering that room triggers it. But yeah, having stabbed that bear in the chest six separate times with the spear, and like, we're not talking like it just went poke. Like, you ram it in there, and you're like, you, you're like doing a whole bunch of like shoving and pushing around with it while the bear is putting its entire weight on top of it. That, that bear at a minimum should like be laying on the ground struggling. Okay. So this time, I'm gonna just try and go right up this right side. I can do anything fancy. There's just some cloth there. It's not worth angering the bear. Okay, the bear's here. Please actually be a cave, aid, cave and not just a wall. That's a wall. I feel like I need to go way faster. I'm stressed out. This is not what I want. Crawl faster. Sneak faster. A million miles faster. Mach 10 crawl, please. Oh, 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 hi, hi. Hi, hi. Oh, 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 Ever played Alien Isolation? Uh, I have not. Alien Isolation is just aliens, right? Like, it's it's like kind of the being hunted by the alien through the ship kind of aliens, right? I'm assuming that I believe that's the one. No, I win. Go away. The entire game is peeking around the corner to see the alien, just like that ceiling. Yeah, no, Alien Isolation doesn't sound like the kind of game I would particularly necessarily enjoy. Like, proper horror games I usually am not that into. Okay. So if this spawns me back to the earlier part, I'm just going to load where we left off.
So if it aggroes me again the moment I go this way, then you take this confirmation that there's like invisible triggers for the bear. They'll just auto aggro when you go certain places. Um, Amy, let's see. Burn something is not hit for here, sure, but just seeing you scare the bear walking is sneak spot right. Well, it's mostly because normally you can kind of predict. Like, you can kind of predict these things. Um, so that one caught me off guard. Like, I figured it was going to do a stock by at some point. It was just not. I was not prepared for it, like, right that set. Um, Amy says, it went past. Um, horror and became stressful for me and just bored of waiting for the other one to go away so I could progress. Yeah. Run. This is back in the last room we were in. The bear moved on to the next room. Yeah, so this is not the way I need to be going. I kind of figured as much. It's just really hard to tell, like, when in stealth, not in stealth, how, like, ranges and all that kind of stuff, like... Alright. Yeah, now I notice that as well, Flem's and Easy. Let's wait and see. Okay. So you go that way. I move into this path. You're eventually going to turn around to come back over to make your circle. This is, I loved killing people in alien isolation by aggroing the alien, then hiding in a locker. Yeah. Nah, uh, it's, um, for me, like, a lot of the proper horror games where it's either, like, you win the bad thing. Like, to me, a lot of it ends up getting frustrating after a while because just kind of everything going slowly. I was... Oh, I guess there was a hole there. Like, again, the whole, like, you hear the thing coming out to sit there and wait for it to go away and wait for it to go away. And a lot of them lean into, like, when it catches you, it has, like, the incredibly violent and gruesome kill thing. Just not my jam. Like, a lot of people, I think, assume I am into horror because of the Project Zomboid and being cool with, like, you know, State of Decay, because they are thematically horror games, but I wouldn't call them horror games. Like, they're horror in that they have zombies. But I would not call either of those games horror. Like, horror to me is like skulking around in the dark with the scary thing coming after you and stuff like that. Like, where the whole point is to jump scare you and stress you out and all that. Let's check the torn note. When the lights came and we had to leave, we thought you might stop here on the old trail, but we couldn't wait. The hunting is good, just like remembered. Uh, should even be better for you. If you find this, rest a while. We'll be waiting at the coast. Eliza.
We are slowly recovering. I assume somewhere up here we should probably get another autosave. There you are. Have to stay back. Okay, um, so there's a tunnel over here. I probably waited too long to make my move. I definitely waited too long to make my move. You see nothing, bear. We're cool, bear, okay? Go faster. We are not moving fast enough. Let me in. Okay. So I couldn't get through the hole. And now it'll magically be ahead of me. There it is. The spear. Somehow I gotta grab it. That'll even the odds. There's a hole through that root system in the middle. You see nothing? You see nothing? Let's be cool. Don't look up. Uh, it's right there, middle of the screen. Um, if you see the rock right here in front of me, the snow on top, it's this rock right behind it. Oh, come on. Does it automatically get turn around and come back to me? Is that the idea with this one, is you can't get away to evade the bear? You gotta hurry. You can't see it now, but it's right past that broken tree. <sighs> cut through the middle, cut through the middle. Go much faster, it's stressing me out. <sighs> this is another hole straight across. can't figure out the bears here somewhere I'm having problems getting this its movements down this time. Like it seems like there's a path it wants to take, but it's not doing it.
Actually, I don't think that is a hole. Gotcha. Let me do it. Oh, come on. The worst thing is it doesn't let me hit escape to like load the game. I have to sit here and watch my character get mauled. It wouldn't be so bad, but this animation is so long. Like, I get it. I got killed by the bear. Oh. Okay, because we recovered enough health, it didn't put us as dead. Oh, but I still have the spear. Um. Come on. Let's finish this. Okay. I can't move. I'm not. Such a majestic creature. I didn't want to kill you. But this new world will make murderers of us all. I, I mean, he started it. I'm not at all. Sorry. <laughs> he was literally hunting me everywhere. Kenzie. The bear is dead. Oh! <laughs> But I want its hide and its meat. We could have eaten for weeks and, you know, got a really cool hat or something. Good. You're up. I'm just in time. What happened? You passed out. I let you rest since I needed time to fix the radio. Ah, and what did I tell you? Those transponder parts did the trick. You did good, Mackenzie. You did good. Signal strength looks like it might be sufficient, but who knows how long it'll last with this unpredictable aurora in the sky. Okay. So can we call Perseverance Mills? I've already set the frequency. Just toggle the call button and cross your fingers. Here goes nothing. Hello? Is this the radio station at Perseverance Mills? We need help. There's some kind of quarantine situation. Hello? What do you mean quarantine? Is there a doctor with you? We need a doctor or a medical assistant, anything. 
They're saying we need a doctor or medical assistance. Can you? Damn it! No! Damn it! I uh, well, I stabbed him 37 times Sorry, in the chest. Jeremiah. Only chance for what? And you need to find your lady friend. I need to reach someone too. And that was my only chance. Well, we can find another radio. Or repair this one. Get new parts. No. There's only one way now. You need to do it. Me? Need to do what? You need to take my message. You need to deliver it for me. It's important. You need to do it for me, Mackenzie. It'll be weeks before I can travel that far. You need to do it for me, Mackenzie. Okay, okay, take it easy. You don't understand. You don't understand what's coming, Mackenzie. Yeah, because you haven't said have anything. <laughs> or else none of the rest of it matters. Okay, Jeremiah. I'll take your message. It's only a little detour for you. On the way to Perseverance Mills, a little detour that can change a lot. Maybe everything. I'm listening. Go through Carter. You'll need to get the old elevator system working. With the Aurora, it just might work. Go through Carter, the lower part of the dam. Now look out for... Yeah, I know. Unstate. Right. Through Carter out the other side you'll find your way to signal hill old weather service radio there more powerful than my short wave you should be able to reach them reach who i'll give you the frequency ask for atwood atwood got it what's the message winter mute winter mute yeah just that Atwood will know what it means. And once you've done that, keep following the road north and you'll eventually get to Perseverance Mills. You'll start seeing the signs a few days walk out. Oh, okay. Got it. And what will you do? A couple more days to recover, and then something else I gotta do. You're in no state. Relax, Mackenzie. It's a short trip. But one I gotta take. And with the old bear out of the picture, I may have half a chance now, thanks to you. Well, don't make all my hard work keeping you alive be for nothing. Good luck finding your lady, Mackenzie. I hope she's okay. This upside down world won't be easy on the good people. I think you know that. Thanks. She's out there somewhere, and she's a strong one. She'll make it, and I'll find her again, in Perseverance Mills. Don't forget about Atwood. Take care of yourself, Jeremiah. I'm a little annoyed that they don't hint at, like, what supposed it thing. Heavy. Yay, we're all better from everything, like, none of the whole bear mauling us thing ever happened. Excellent. Because it would have been unfortunate to have to come back with all of my stuff destroyed. Speaking of which, is all my stuff destroyed? Thank goodness. Oh, you. Made it through another night. I'm done with him. Time to move no. on. No. <laughs> I had stuff laying I'm on the floor with, in there. Time to move on. That's why I don't like leaving stuff behind. So that actually is a big problem for me because my clothes are all shredded and a lot of my materials were in the floor over there. So that's great. Um, wait, I, I have outfits of those pieces.
Oh, that's not what I wanted. Don't harvest it. Oh, those are gone forever. Oh, well, that's bad. Well, crap. That's the nearest place I dropped a bunch of stuff. Can't feel my hands. Uh huh. Because I got kicked out, I'm gonna die. <laughs> oh yay! Affliction frostbite. I don't think I'd have to make. Oh, I do have enough to make a fire. That's super annoying. Come on. Fire's life out here. Okay, so that barely makes me positive. All right, so from what I'm seeing is I cannot fix clothes that are destroyed. You're good for another 30 something minutes. Oh, it gave me the stuff that's laying on his floor. Some of it, at least. Okay, um... All my food's gone, though. Except my ketchup chips. Which, to me, feels like a loss, actually. Okay, so fire should go out right as I finish. It was 10 minutes. Yes, unfortunately, all this stuff got destroyed to the point that I have to... Oh, that's not good. Alright, so we gotta make our way across this place as fast as we can. Thank you for the follow. Bonus stream. So I do need to... Hello there. Oh. We need to make my way across this area as fast as we can to get indoors. Um, and see what we can salvage from my pack ratting earlier. We would be in much better shape hadn't I picked up all the stuff there. I wasn't expecting to be unceremoniously evicted from the place. And I wasn't expecting to be basically like put into a situation where some of my clothes were ultimately going to be destroyed no matter what I did. Because like it definitely took more damage than I need to on my clothes. But there was some unavoidable damage. Yeah, I think we get frostbite risk for having exposed skin. So it's probably our feet and hands. That's also the reason why I'm running. That's also the reason I'm running so much. I don't really care about um being sleepy. I need to get to the next place so I can get indoors, try and tear apart what's un like in bad shape, put on what I can. Oh, come on. 
I'm pretty salty about that, being honest. Like, how some of my clothes get destroyed, that part's fine. The fact that it kicks me out of his house and it's like, you know, you're done with him. I'm like, no, I need to go inside and I need to, like, use that fire and get myself ready to survive and, you know, prep. I got attacked by a bear multiple times. I feel like I deserve the little bit of respite to recover my stuff. I feel like that's fair. Hey Yoshisuki, how's it going? Alright, so I believe I did drop some clothes in here. About to head to school, gotcha, gotcha. Alright. Yeah, we don't get any, like, new survival stuff. Actions. Encumbered. Some of these are getting weird now, where I, like, it's showing me as having new stuff, but then not actually finding new stuff. Hope nobody needs this anymore. I definitely don't need you out. I'm not seeing much in the way of clothes piled up there. Lots of meds and stuff. Um, alright. Okay. Oh, it's such a bummer, because I deliberately didn't grab pairs of gloves and all that, because I'm like, I don't have the carry weight. That's going to be an interesting thing to deal with when we, um... When we do survival, like, when I take an injury and some of my clothes get actually destroyed. Oh, I have a spare pair of shoes. Oh, we lost so much clothing. That bear sucks so much. We lost our Canada hats. What's even the point? So that's the last one to tear apart that we can't fix. Let's assess what we have in actual clothes. I have a hat. But 
a pair of shoes. I'm guessing these are stuff I dumped in that house. Yeah, so we're missing gloves, we're missing an outer jacket, we're missing a hat, um, we're missing accessories. We could certainly do better on a whole lot of fronts. Yeah, sports socks are one of the few things I don't have a use for. Alright, we didn't finish looking over. How to grab cargo pants? Okay, we get we got these cargo pants. Alright, so we got some back. Um we were at like 23 increased body temperature, whatever insulation, whatever they want to call it. Um before. And now we're down to 11. So that's a pretty bad knockdown. I think the uh, the accessories is probably the worst part. Uh, but I really don't have a choice. I just got to keep moving. All right, so let's not run now. So the good news, we went from minus three arrows in cold to minus one. So it does look like I'm not going to freeze death nearly as fast now. Which makes sense. My hands, my feet, and a whole bunch of me was completely exposed. My head. Even drinking coffee at all to warm up? No, we got rid of most of the coffee and all that, because carry weight's been a perpetual problem. I hadn't anticipated having, like, all of my stuff destroyed and not given a chance to, like, reclaim a lot of my stuff. Like, getting kicked out of that place sucked. Because I literally had a bunch of junk laying on his floor. That said, I think, I think up at the dam is where I have my giant pile of clothing that I finally was like, I can't carry this anymore. I think it was in the bottom floor. I have a ton of stuff. We never did go to the cabin. There's a good chance I can score some clothes over there because I got three or four of the keys, or two or three of the keys. skin coat now I get that oh come on oh did I get that because I finished the the quest or whatever all right so what's a wolf skin coat require um two cured gut four wolf pelts okay it's 40 minutes in the cold
Yeah, I did notice I can switch my um, weapons this way. So my assumption is that wolfskin coat is going to be better than most of the stuff I can just find laying around. Keep the you unto yourself. They're contagious. Don't want that stuff spreading around. Shit. Looks like someone found trouble. alone I'm not opening this door for anyone it's okay I I'm not here to take anything from you are you with the forest talkers I am but I'm not letting you in they killed my friend how do I know you aren't one of them you don't but I'm not name's Mackenzie and I'm way too stubborn to just leave you out here all by yourself you'll have to trust me seems like I don't have much of a choice we left most of our supplies at the old logging camp while we fished here. Can you get them for me? I can try. There's more. In that abandoned dam, we found evidence that proves there shouldn't be logging in Mystery Lake. I need that evidence. Documents nobody wanted to be found. We hid them until we could retrieve them. Under a floor tile at the bottom of the stairwell. If you can help me get the documents back, well, it'd be a huge win for the environment, if you care about it. You know, living in the world. I have a feeling the world has bigger problems right now, but I'll see what I can do. Here's the key to the trailer where we stashed our supplies. I'll slide it under the door. Okay. I'm probably not going to get those things and bring them back to him. Just being fully transparent, that's probably what's going to happen. this. Okay, that looks like a real nice parka. That's probably an upgrade for us. And it, you know, put it on immediately, so let's fix that. Those are in pretty good shape. Let's go and patch these up too. Your character sounds like Commander Shepard. I can see that. Break the lamp out for a minute. So here's the bed. So aim slightly higher, extinguish the lamp. Get proper night's sleep. Oh good! You woke up to a blizzard! That's just what I wanted! With my missing clothes, this'll be perfect! 
We can try out the durability of my exposed skin. Where, where is everything? Good enough. Look it up, it is Shepard, same voice actor. It wouldn't surprise me. When it comes to voice acting in games and shows, there is a lot of repeat. Yep, I don't think that cabin's something to worry about. Uh, a couple high-profile actors in this, actually. Jennifer Hale is in it, too. So you get both Sheps. Nice. Oh, I'm gonna get your skin, dog. Nope, 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 nope. is basically Mass Effect Canada. Yeah, instead of spaceships, it's cold. All right, bear with me. It is about that time for the ad break, so let's go ahead and get Nitro in here. Um, and as a reminder, you gotta wait till the racetrack comes up. Only two more wins away from that, so if you do exclamation mark play, uh, you can join the race, or if you use the website, either or, to break here as well. Um, and we're doing the one of the bots because that's the one that re is required to unlock new maps. So we're going to keep going with that. And thanks so much for everyone who's been tuning in, has been lurking, tagging, following, subscribing to the Bets, Hosts, Donuts, and the Raids. It all helps. I really do appreciate it. I do hope you have been enjoying the stream. But uh, we'll give it just a little bit for everyone to start getting themselves joined in, getting all that stuff, and then we'll get this race started. Okay. All right, so last call on anyone who wants to get in the race. If you want to get a race, this is the time. So we're going to give just a couple more seconds since there's a stream delay, and then I'm going to hit go, and we will go. It's also looking like the ad is delaying. Remember how I said I can't set a timer to exactly one hour? If you look at the top where it says ad starting soon, that's why. Because the countdown hits zero for like the hour, and then it goes, okay, it's time to play an ad, and then it sits on that for a random amount of time that I have to discern. And because of that, if I set the time thing for one hour exactly, it doesn't work. Yeah, and you can see now it's counting down how long people are stuck in ads. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get this going and moving on. Okay, and it's stuck in slow motion, so just like last time, when you get in the race, Right off they get the line, I'll hit escape and I'll fix it. That's uh that's kinda of what I'm thinking, Burning Sun. Burning Sun's saying, what if you had a button on your stream deck switch that's uh switch streams? Deck to switch streams and start a fifty five minute timer or whatever. Yeah, so my thought is to have something like a button I can push. That'll be like 55 minutes or whatever it is. Um, like whatever we figure out, like the sweet spot that it would hit. And then when it finishes, it'd play something. Um, and I talked about having it just a tone I would hear that's like, hey, it's time. Like, you know, get out of what's going on so you can get to that. Um, but a bunch of people were like, no, it'd actually be cool. Thing. I do like that all the bots get called Ben Affleck until it decides what their names are. 
That amused me. Okay, and now we're back to normal time. But, um, but yeah, that seemed like a good idea. I need to set it up, but, um, I, I could see doing something like having a button where it says, and now from a word from our sponsors, even though ads aren't sponsors, but now a word from our sponsors, or, you know, something complaining about ads, or I don't know. I haven't decided. I could see doing something like that if everyone else wanted to hear it, to basically be like, or, you know, like, time to take a stretch break, or whatever. Now we're for Twitch's sponsors. <laughs> it's now time for your non-negotiable non Twitch ad break. I mean, it is negotiable. You can pay money and they go away. But you get the idea. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll have something. Or find something like where some cartoon or something where they're like, ad or no. Oh, what is the one? I, I didn't watch it. There was, um, ah, it was a cartoon that was breaking the fourth wall that the whole idea was the cartoon characters weren't going to be sellouts and do some like terrible ad. Um, and as the episode goes down, the quality of the animation of the cartoon gets to degrade till it gets down to like, just, you know, like kind of cells like being moved around on the screen. And then later it goes to just kind of like the, um, the storyboarding. Um, and so they're like then trying to reach the company who wanted to advertise so they could sell out so they could afford to have proper animation before their world came to an end. I'm sure there's got to be at least one soundbite from that I can use. Like at the end, it's like, we'd like to sell out, please. <laughs> and Del Souls in first, a whole bunch of bots, and then Kakris. And then, looks like the bots have taken the lead with Drift. And don't forget, you can do exclamation mark mega if you got yourself a power up. Start blasting. And I am in 22nd out of 27, so I am doing great. Yeah, don't forget to do your uh, exclamation mark mega whenever you see a bot in the lead and try and knock him down. But yeah. Does light just slowing affect you? Okay, so light just spins you out again again. It sticks to someone, it just keeps spinning you out. Turns out I did my mega, it missed the bot in the lead and hit me instead in fourth. Excellent. But yeah, I can see I can see doing something like that, having like a fun little sound, but oh I got a mega. I used lightning. Yay. I think it told me I had another one. All right, let's hope we can knock out a uh, drift and the bippity. If you got your megas, use them. All right, we did spin out bippity. Oh, and it did make it have like a full on turnaround. Del Sol might be able to catch up. Nope, Bippity did match across the line. So the bots have won again. At least we can actively see that Bippity was under fire. Get electrocuted after the after the time. <laughs> Fact. Straight up rigged. Actually, Del Sol, I think you got credit for second. Yep, so look at the end results. We have Del Sol in second. Um, we had Senshin Cookie had the most air time at 422.03 meters. Fern and Sun hit the most bananas at 10. And we don't care about the bot's accomplishments. They don't get recognition. 
So let's go ahead and do this and pop over here. And I'll get that switched up to be a scene thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, Infinity Simplex, where can I find to see if I have a Mega if we're not in the top 10? So if you're on the far left, they'll show up there in your top 10. Otherwise, the bottom three will show up who's like the last three to get power-ups. Or if you go to the website, I believe it will show you all of, like, the website just gives you more information. Yep. Burns is like, I hit 10 of my own bananas. GG. I'm good with a second. Hey, yeah, there's no reason not to be. Uh, I'm looking at the wrong game. I was like, why do I not see what I'm looking for? Yeah, like they uh they'll show where you can see like where you're at on the map and all that if you go to the website. Now, like I don't care if you go to the website, that's totally your preference. I don't like they sponsored us yesterday. Like all this site we're playing now has nothing to do with the sponsorship. It's because it seems like could end up being useful. It it seems like a fun thing because like we were doing marbles on stream. We'll probably do some marbles on stream here and there still. We were doing marbles on stream, but a lot of times marbles on stream was you hit play and you just kind of spectate. This felt like it was more interesting because it was a slightly more active. Okay, and Hidden Cash actually don't care. Alright, we have a new pair of gloves. Point 0.8. Also point 0.8. Oh, switch screen? I'm sorry. You didn't miss anything. I picked up a pair of gloves and then I tore them. They were on the table or something. So you didn't miss anything meaningful. Alright, and I haven't been in this one yet. Alright, just lore. Wonder if this is any good to eat. Uh yeah, I still have an infection risk. Treatment did nothing. <gasps> I guess I had to wait till I was already infected to do antibiotics. It's not exactly how antibiotics work, but still. Not that you, sh you shouldn't take antibiotics when you don't need them. Handy. The only exception being is like if you had surgery or something where they're like, yeah, the risk is high. Take, take your stuff. Combat boots? Um, those are probably an upgrade. So we got trail boots, 0.5. Oh yeah, those are way better. I got a bar with taking those up. Combat pants. This is like some soldier or something. Either a soldier or someone who uh wishes they were. Decent combat pants. You know those are actually pretty solid. So we still need a hat. We're actually in pretty good shape insulation wise. Not as good as we were. We're still about six degrees cooler than we were with our full kit. But at least we got most of our stuff now. Alright, so we're going this way. Alright, Yoshisuku. Yoshisuki. You have a good one. Oh, we can drink our water. I wanted my bear pelt. 
That's not fair. I earned that bear pelt. My assumption is it wasn't like an actual space you could visit kind of thing. It was like a whole scripted event. Alright, so I don't have the key for that one. That's fine. I don't really care. I don't get why sometimes my movement speed is very inconsistent. Like, I kind of, like, hang for a step or two. Well, that's a wolf we killed earlier, apparently. Ketchup chips, man. It's not worth it. I'd rather starve. Not really. But I'm definitely not team ketchup chips. So I gotta get up this way, but I believe with two more wolf um, wolf hides I'll be able to make a, um, well once I let them cure, which will probably take like five in-game days, which is a ridiculous amount of time, I'll be able to cure the, uh, the stuff to make a wolf hide jacket or whatever it is, which I'm assuming will have like ridiculous insulation compared to some of the stuff I've been finding. So the long dark should be like the long hike. Get walking. So then it makes me curious. I would suspect we're probably very close to the end of this chapter. Um, because it feels like we did way, 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 way more in this chapter than we did in the previous one. Uh so my assumption is what's going to happen is we're going to get to the dam. We're going to get the other, like, we're going to go through the dam, and once we leave the dam, that'll be like, this is the end of this chapter. Because then the next step will be, you know, going to the one guy, calling in the radio stuff, and then getting to, getting to, like, the next town kind of thing. My assumption is the last segment, the last chapter, is going to be when we actually catch up with our ex-wife and, you know, she'll probably need a bunch of stuff from us because we have her case. Which is the whole point is we're trying to reach this town with the case. And everything went sideways. How's it going, George? Stay frosty.
All right. And then when we do finish a chapter, assuming it's in the near future, um, what we'll probably do is just like we did last time we did the Long Dark, which is when we finish the chapter, we'll switch over to continuing the survival mode one we have. Um, just because I don't want to start a chapter and then have, like, you know, the last, like, 5, 10, like, you know, get, like, and, like get a chapter split between multiple streams. There's just too much of a chance of, like, people missing out on a whole bunch of stuff. Which, is, I mean, I get it's fine to then go and check the VODs, and I guess for most people I have to check the VODs anyways, because I can't imagine there's that many people who can tune in from the very beginning of the stream and watch the entire stream through, like in one thing. It's probably not none, but it's probably a very, very, very small subset of the people who view. Like, that's the kind of data I wish Twitch would give me. Not, like, individually what each person's doing kind of thing. But going, like, okay, based on, like, people tuning in and out, like, here's when people show up and here's when they go. Not, like, you know, average viewer, but saying, like, you know, okay, in the evening I get, like, you know, 70 or 100 viewers or whatever. But, like, being able to go back and say, okay, most of those viewers, we had, like, a drop off a bunch of viewers at this hour and a bunch popped in. So... Where it looked like it's the same people, in reality it was like there was this kind of this cutoff where a bunch of people left the channel at this time and new ones popped in. Like over the course of an hour, you know, as a bunch of people in this time zone started calling in a night, and then like the next time zone started coming in, kind of thing. Or like see, you know, for example, when I switch games, you know, there's a bunch of people that pop in when I switch games because they see me playing the new game, and there's a whole bunch of people who pop out because I'm no longer playing the game I was playing. It'd be interesting to see how much of what was what. Like, you know, after about 30 minutes or so switching games, like, what the split was. Like, who watched the entire time through, how many bailed but were replaced by someone else, yada yada. Because that could give me information like, you know, do I effectively have two different audiences on the channel? Like, the one, like one group of people who's like really into the variety but could really care less about Project Zomboid. Is there a bunch of people that go through the whole thing? Like, is there some that really don't? Like, they're only here for the Zomboid? And there's gonna be, you know, the answer to all those is going to be yes, there's some. I'd like to have a better number for making more informed decisions. Thing to be analytics for that so they have analytics they're just not that detailed did an api to get your current viewer list um you can record each person logs in out so i can get that information i could i could set up a bot that like literally logs all that kind of don't want to because then I have a bunch of information I don't really want to have I don't I don't want individuals information oh Mackenzie so you're still alive Methuselah you appear in the strangest places you've left your mark and have overcome great odds so far but this part of the world still holds some secrets I'm not sure this is the right time for... There are still stories that need to be told if you wish to play a part in them. There is always time for that. But if you are in a hurry, by all means, go. Nobody would fault you for continuing your journey onward. You know, 
It's been a hell of a slog out there. Never mind that damn bear. I've nearly died more times than I care to count. It couldn't have been easy for you either. You seem strangely calm about the hostility of this place. I have wandered these paths a long time, friend. I was a walker. Now I'm a watcher. I'm here to observe these times and help where I may. As strange as it is to run into you again, it's good to find a familiar face in all this frigid wilderness. And keep to your paths. If this is a reckoning, as you say, I hope ours cross again. Yeah, so he's saying, hey player, if you're not done, like, you should go back and look at things. Like, you've missed a lot of stuff. And I know, I, um... I'm making saves, like, right before I finish each act. That way, if I want to, I can go back and get all the achievements and all that kind of stuff, but I'll do that in my own time. Oh, right, so I need to be here at night. This is kind of the gist of what we gathered. Is that the elevator we might be able to get to function at night? So, for just a moment, let's pop our inventory. Let's grab those wolf hides and all that. Are those the cured ones? That's not what I want. Yes, those were the not cured ones. My wolf hides. I have a handful of wolf hides that are still fresh. There's one. Because basically my plan is while we wait for um all that, at least I can cure a little bit. Hey, Smash, how's it going? Where's my bedroll? Branching out to survival games? Well, I played a bunch of survival games on the channel. Alright, so I don't quite have the Aurora thing going on yet. First person I met? Um, I played first person on the channel as well. Not as often, just because it doesn't happen as often. Alright, so we're trying to get to the point where the Aurora pops out. Alright, sounds like the Aurora's still doing that. No 
way I'm getting in here without some electricity to power this panel. You've been grinding Sons of the Forest? Uh, how do you like the Long Dark? Challenge enough? Uh, I'm enjoying it. Right now, in the story, it's not been super challenging. Like, the biggest challenge has been not picking up everything in sight. Like, inventory management has been the biggest challenge, because it seems like it wants you to grab almost everything. But then make sure you don't have the inventory to actually do it. It's kind of hard to know what you should and shouldn't be grabbing. Alright. So let's get the first tumbler. Okay. So it's 54. Bet you can just go around the whole way again. Or not. All right, give me a moment. We'll reset. And we reset. Oh, it's 57. Thoughts of Bar Trauma? Um, I'm actually talking to some other content creators about, you know, streaming that as like a group at some point. Um, I'm not going to say names or anything because it's now 100% locked in, but that's the plan. Okay, so it's fifty-seven eighteen. Fifty-seven fifteen. All right. This stuff will come in handy. There it is. That's it. I just throw a switch. I was expecting quite a bit more than that. I guess there's only one way to go from here. Um. So you're not interactable. It still says call elevator. I'm like, but I'm in the elevator. Holy shit. What was that? I was nowhere near the exposed part of those wires game. Real talk. I was nowhere near the exposed part of that wire. Because that spot over there is sparking. That spot over there is sparking. I don't see it touching the metal plates there. I already know I can't go that way because that one's flashing up a storm. I think I actually can't explore this area much. Oh, weird. Now the body's back. I could use this. Because the body had been over there. I also don't think I'd say it burns when you get electrocuted. It's a very different and distinct 
feeling than burning. Why is there a wolf corpse in here? Let's do a quick save. I'm going to do a new save. And that's end of two. Just in case you can't actually get back from here. Right, I can't jump. So I can't call the elevator anymore. Is no way back up. All right, so that doesn't go where we want. Um, that had safety rails around the whole thing. How's the puppy experience been? Um, I don't think we've died to the puppies at all. The bear well, the bear experience wasn't that great of a time. Like it was fun for record. I actually had fun with the bear. I mean, granted, I glitched the hell out a bunch of times. But the bear definitely did murder us a couple of times. I'm assuming this will be blocked off. All these flickering lights are fine. Don't worry about it. Not even close. All right, goodbye, wolf pelts. I guess it was never meant to be. All right, rabbit pelts, where are you at? Drop you. Drop our uncured ones. Um. I don't care about making gunpowder right now. I'm gonna drop two of those. One of those. We still need to get 2.5 kilograms gone. Um, we will eat the peaches. All right, drop the flares, except the military flare. Drop the tablets. Drop one of the cans.
drop a whole lot of these. Drop you. All right, so I got 0.35 left. I gotta get rid of. That's fine. Drop those two feathers. Drop one whole container of painkillers. Two whole containers of painkillers. Still just 0.3 to go. Eat the pork and beans. We completely waste them. Who cares? Drink our water. There's a bunch of lights in here. It'll be nice to see a little bit better. And I'm sure we'll find some more lamp fuel. Is it food or... Some gear. No. I'm more curious whether there's a mountaineering rope inside this place going down. You can keep your backpack. Because I'm not waiting until it's no longer... Like, the because like, what happens, like, I imagine... Better watch out. Is, um... If we wait until... Daytime, the aurora will end. Trying to know where I can and cannot step with the wires is a little annoying. Oh, that hurts so much. I didn't get hurt. All right, Smash. You have a good one. Um, so I definitely want to get over there. The, pro the pain. Ah, damn it. Yeah, you can't cross that spot. Ah, feels like it's still burning. So I guess it's just touching those red wires at all? Like any part of the red wire? Oh, I see. Um, so there's the on-off switch over there. 
much. They're also like invisible walls. All right, let's the try pain. going back a little bit. See if there's an R switching mist. He says, I had to boycott this playthrough. I'm afraid of the dark, so everyone knows when the monsters come and get you. So I am noticing it doesn't seem like time is passing as fast down here. Which I think is a deliberate thing, so you can't just go down here and then fast forward time and not do that. You have blank you can carry uh, with you at all times, so you can retreat it into it. So I can't cross that spot. We've already tested that. Now, like the dark doesn't. I mean, we got a light, so this is fine. So there's a switch there. I can turn off the power at. I can't cross there because that kills me. There we go. to be like you need to climb down more make sure you're not overburdened i've noticed at the end of the chapters they are d making me do the climb down thing which feels like very kind of a kind of a jerk move but it also makes sense because it does force you to limit what you carry to the next area right, let's check our lamp oil Refuel our lamp, what we can. Holy shit, that's hot. Ah, feels like it's still burning. I didn't even realize. I'm hearing wind from outside, so hopefully we're getting close to getting out of here, because we're on the lower part of the dam. What? Did someone just hit me in the back of the head? Oh. 
Hawked Chase. Wow, that is interesting. A locked metal case is a thing of the old world, stranger. A world of closed doors and things being off limits. <laughs> okay. Yeah, see, I was part of that world. But that world's over. This is my world now. And in my world, I make the rules. In my world, see, there are no locks. You're gonna punch me again for no reason. Uh, your world sounds crazy. What's in the case? I have no idea. What is in the case? Uh, I hope it's painkillers. <laughs> your ID says you're a pilot. You have a plane somewhere? My plane wouldn't do you any good. Yeah, should I show you what happened to the last person who lied to me? She didn't look so pretty after I was done. She? Oh, so now he's ready to talk. Well, don't worry, pilot. You'll be with her soon. Okay, so that was the end of that chapter. Ah, oh, yeah, super villain monologue. So, like, his whole deal was like, yeah, I was in this world, and, like, okay, I was clicking old. Yeah, like, I was in this world, and people told me no, and I didn't like it. So that's his deal. They really kind of lost interest in the case pretty fast. That guy's voice was Adam Jensen sure of it gotcha now rather than starting uh episode three we're not gonna do that right now because i don't have enough time to finish that episode of this stream so we're gonna go back to we've got a save file that is currently in survival uh so we're gonna go back over to that that's kind of what i've been doing with playing this um is just doing like the hop back and forth where it's like okay i play the episode when i finish do some survival and then you know like till stream's over that's kind of thing that was a little indie game, but it's got some hella big actors. I mean, hella big voices. You never know. They may have been an indie game with a budget. That does happen. Alright, so now it's going to close that executable and open the other one. I don't like that. You're not the only game who's done that. Alright, so we do have a character who is alive in survival. There's an isolated community in the northern part of Great Bear. Someone there is very sick. Great and... Bear? There's nothing there anymore. Not since I know, but I have to get there. We did, we did choose. I seem to recall a town somewhere up north, far. What was it called? Did, did I accidentally go That's back it. into Person one second? Know. We're gonna do the uh, kill the application entirely, reopen it. I think I may have gone to where I wanted to switch to survival and then accidentally chose the story mode again. Because that feels like it's a recap where they know people haven't played the game in, you know, five, six, seven months because that's like how long it is between the episodes. Yeah, that's exactly what it did. Is they accidentally switched, um, switched back over to the story. All right. Yeah, so it looks like we were due to sleep. Um, how are my supplies looking? I have two bedrolls for some reason. Let's drop one of those. I'm pretty heavily burdened. Um... Got a decent amount of food on me. Got an okay amount of water. And I can make more. Um, it's not dark yet. Hmm. 
Vong? I mean, don't get me wrong, Vong is ripped as hell. Like, straight up 12-pack. Not even an 8-pack, like, the full, the full... Vong looks like Torg and Torg winces. I don't see it, but okay. I will definitely say it's a first. I think I already looted all these houses. What do I have in the way of weapons? Ah, that's right. I got stones. Oh yeah, and I went to walk over here and I'm like, cool, let's check out this house. And immediately got attacked by a wolf and I was like, never mind, I don't want the house that bad. Do you get stung by bees because you're so swole? Ah, oh, some of the humor in that game. <laughs> Sorry, bunny. I gotta eat. Stop glitching on the stairs. friend you working that's exactly what you do is you immediately look right down the barrel of a gun you found on the ground don't check to see if it's loaded cleared or anything just immediately go ah gun so I'm assuming said gun did not come with bullets nope what have we here Alright, so let's get back to our... Mackenzie has zero trigger just one. Doggo is real hard at this. Oh, I hate this type of thing. I'm just gonna let it die. I don't like where you have to sit there and mash. That just hurts my finger. Like, I used to be good at that kind of stuff, but... Oh, it doesn't even kill you? Okay. Gotta stop that blood loss. I will check that in just a minute. I just need to close my eyes. Just to kill me. Yeah, like the fat, like how fast I have to click this, I'm not interested in doing the click thing. I'm gonna turn on the accessibility thing of holding it. That just hurts my hands. Your greed will be your downfall. Alright, so we'll go back. Yep, so we're just gonna go right here. We're gonna go survival. 
options, accessibility, press and hold, confirm. Because screw that, my hand already hurts. Just from like doing the bear earlier and all that. Like that's, that's just how you hurt your hand to give yourself carpal. Like, I, I do not like going back to days of take the button and hit it as hard as you can and just go and go and go. I'm good at it normally, but no, I'm well past doing that. The game says, I always turn on the hold and set a tap. I don't find engaging or miserable to have games make me deal with um, MGS4 micro tunnel. Yeah. Yeah, that's the whole thing. It's like, okay. Like, don't get me wrong. I understand it gives, like, that feeling of intensity of, like, frenetic desperate struggle and all that but like look man it just murders your wrist like you gotta protect your wrists as much as i don't like quick time events i would much rather if it's going to have a quick time event it's like a c b like you have to guess it yeah i would rather i'd rather it be like you have the circle of clothes and you have to get the timing right and you have the circle of clothes you get the timing right you get the circle of clothes your timing right or hit the right buttons and i hate those ones too but the mat, the mass click thing, that's that's carpal tunnel territory. All right, so bear with me for just a moment because we're gonna do this and this uh, because we're about to get hit with an ad break, so we're bringing up Nitro. Uh, so give me a moment to get us into the racetrack, and you can do exclamation mark play. That's it. It also hurts wrist. Well, that's that's my big thing. Is like I I didn't have carpal tunnel syndrome. I had what was called a meridian nerve compression which is usually a precursor to Carpal Tunnel. And Path of Exile specifically was the main cause of that. Because they're like, no, we don't do quality of life. We want you to feel the weight of picking up those tokens, like those fragments of a fragment and those currency. So I stopped playing until they, they let them stack. And even then, I mean, it's mostly because they stream and Path of Exile doesn't do well on the channel. But um, I still will selfishly play at the beginning of a league and you're just going to have to live with that. But uh, very genuinely, these days I have very low tolerance for things that shouldn't be click heavy. All right, so we're gonna get a couple more seconds to uh, to get this going. Um, and this is gonna be one of those races that I'm gonna start the race. You know, I'm gonna make sure it's going at normal time, and then we could be like stand up, stretch my legs, do all that kind of stuff. Um, all right, so last call. If you want to get in, exclamation mark play to get in for the next race. So give it a couple seconds to go by, just because you know I know there is stream delay and all that, and then we're gonna go ahead and get things going. But yeah, I do appreciate that they have the accessibility option of click and hold. And again, I know some people are like, oh, you're playing on easy mode. It's like, look, man, I don't care. I don't care. Hey, the follow. Welcome to the stream. All right, so we got that set. Okay, and I'm going to go quickly grab myself a new drink. Go. You know, Wife's probably gonna go to sleep soon, so I'm gonna make sure, you know, spend a minute saying hi to her and stretch my legs and all that stuff. Not a bad time to do it yourselves. And I will be back. Don't forget, when you get your upgrades, like you'll see on the bottom of the screen or on the left, if you see a symbol by your name, type in exclamation mark mega to use your ability, and I will be back.
Pim's out cold. Fell asleep in her chair. She does that. <laughs> but yeah. So, looks like currently have a bot in the lead. We're only on lap two, though. Uh, that'd be Wild Onion with Infinity Simplex right behind them. Uh, we got Captain Brody a little bit farther back. We got a whole bunch of people towards the end. Um, but we definitely want to knock Wild Onion out from, out from the upper ones. I am in rank 13th, which is no surprise. I always am towards back. Ah, 14th. Let's move it on back. If I'm going to lose, I'm, ah, there we go, 17th. If I'm going to lose, I might as well lose all the way. Ah, there we go. We got all the way back to 19. Excellent. Perfect. Just what I needed. Never mind, we're moving all our place. I think we got like one group of everyone's like packed together. And then, you know, a handful of people fighting for the front. Is there a way to disable the bots? Yes, but you cannot unlock tracks if you don't disable the bot. Or if you disable the bots. So, like, the track progression requires bots to be on. You also get a lot more of the coins in the game if you have bots. So, like, you get more rewards the more racers they're on the map. Alright, we got Infinity Simplex in the lead. With Captain Brody in second. And a bunch of bots, and then we have She-Wolf and K-Chris and Sentry Cookie. But yeah, you can disable bots. There's two different modes. There's challenge and community. Uh, community is where it's just people on the stream versus each other. Um, you still get the coins from that, but not as many because there's not as many racers because there's no bots. Uh, but you can't unlock new maps. So it does feel like it incentivizes you to do the um, challenge mode until you unlock all maps, at which point then either or. Like you can get more currency in less time by doing the bots. Thank you, Zidian underscore, for subscribing for 14 months. 14. Thank you, Zidian, for the tier 1 sub. You've been subbed to the channel for 14 months, and I still appreciate that heckin' ridiculously long time you've been supporting the channel, so thank you so much for continuing to support the channel for how incredibly long you've been supporting it. Um, I hope you're enjoying your advertisement previewing as well as access to the emotes, so thank you again for that continued support. And it looks like we're going to win here at the end. And we have won. We have Infinity Simplex. For the record, this mode, it's all of us versus all of the bots. Um, so we did get the win. So chat wins because Infinity Simplex did take first and it only cares about who took first. So we have Infinity Simplex in first, Discordy in second. Um, Sentry Cookie had a top speed of 358.73 kilometers per hour and the most air time at 431.73 meters. Um, Captain Brody had the most car hits at 25 other cars hit and none of the bot stats do we care about. All right, so with that, I'm going to hit this button and this and bring up this. And we get to start a brand new survival because I had to heckin' button spam. So is this intermediate? No, that's advanced players. It does seem like this is intermediate. Or sorry, this is beginner. Then we have intermediate, the broken road. Yeah, so these two are beginner friendly. And then like almost all of this over here is advanced, some advanced up there. And like, and there's an intermediate over here. I think there's another one. These two are advanced. Maybe this one's intermediate? Yeah. So it's like, these two are beginner, that and that are intermediate, and all the rest is advanced. Um, and last time we did it, we started one up here on Timberwolf, worked our way to Pleasant, and then we died in Pleasant. Um, so we started with the Mountain Town the last time. So this time we'll do the Mystery Lake. Say, the Lake of Sag. Yeah, so we, we died to basically quick time events with the wolf on the last one. Because basically I started mashing the button, I'm like, I'm just not doing it. I didn't check, do we have a map? 
Ah, yes, excellent. Found a bunch of sticks, don't care about branches. I don't have the tools to... Actually, I don't remember if I start with tools or not. I don't think I do. Do we start with tools? Oh, I can still break them by hand, it just takes longer, that's fine. No sign of any buildings yet, but we have a bunch of trees cut down over here, so maybe we'll find, like, the logging campsite or whatever. I've also not seen any, um, rocks. Or crabbing, catching rabbitses. So the bunnies shall mock me as I'm incapable of catching- Oh, I found rocks. It's time, bunnies. Just collecting my rabbits, friends. Gotta pet them. Gotta pet them real, real hard. You wouldn't want them to feel like you didn't mean it. I tried to lead it to see if I could do it. The answer was no. Oh, that was my last rock. I should be looking for some place indoors that I could try and warm up. But I'm busy murdering rabbits. Because I believe if it's it's something like four rabbits or something like that, then I can put the hides together to uh to make myself a rabbit hat. That crack is just an unpleasant sound. Rabbit, I know it's like I was playing with a bear earlier. I understand your pain. On the bright side, don't drag it out into like, you know, a solid 30 second long, slowly watching my character die animation. I go quick about it. Excellent. A place to stay. That doesn't actually have an interior space, it's just this. Could end up being useful. All right, you can do it, buddy. We got rabbits to make.
All right, so rabbit harvest. Do this first. Thirty minutes. So I have plenty of rabbit ready to roll. No, don't, don't stop drinking that. No. It's fine. I didn't want to drink the unsafe water. Ah, uh, I have one of those that's not done. It's fine. Our fire ran out, what's happening. So, let's see. It's kind of annoying that they have a map, but I can't see it. It might be I have to actually, like, find the map. Um, so we've been here before in our last playthrough. I vaguely want to say this way will take me towards a building, like an actual building building. Uh, I think the Trapper's Place? Make sure I have my button set up so I can very quickly pull that off if I need to. Alright, that's the tunnel over there. It does make me a little curious, so like, I can see a lot of things working, like you can deliberately, if you want to save ammo, you could get into melee with the wolves or whatever, and risk that. Like, have have a weapon ready that you can like, hit the wolves with a bunch. What are you that's bigger? Um, and you get quite a bit of food from hunting the animals. It also does seem like the animals respawn, I think? You don't get how the game's combat works? So... For ranged weapons, it's, it's like the typical first-person shooter. Um, except instead of a reticle, for example, I get that. So I can kind of aim using the thumb and the, uh, the tips of my fingers-ish. And then you throw in, like, you know, it doesn't have a whole lot of range. But then you got, like, rifles, and those work, like, pretty much every first-person shooter you've ever played. You put you put the iron sights on it, you pull the trigger, and it doesn't get, like, hopefully it doesn't get back up. Duels does command grab you, and you can actually fight them. 
So when the wolves get into like close range or bears, whatever, you basically they like does a slow motion thing for a couple of seconds and let you choose what weapon you want to use, um, and then effectively, what you can do is depending on your settings, you either click rapidly to win the fight, or you click and hold if you have the accessibility setting turned on, which we just did turn on a couple of minutes ago. Uh, because I got into the fight and it came to like mashing real hard and I saw I was like, oh no, I'm going to have to actually mash this real hard. It's like, yeah, I'm not going to do this. Like, that's the building I'm looking for. There's one up there. I'm going to check in here, but that's the building I care about. It's the one up top of the hill. All right, got ourselves a hatchet. But yeah, that basically quick time to vent you. And then the better you do, the less injury you take. Um, and you can kill the stuff if you have a weapon to kill the stuff with. And I'm assuming maybe something like bears and that your chances of winning without a proper weapon are basically negligible. Someone stash. Well, we got inside at just the right time. So let's start with the clothing. We really don't have much, but it's at least an improvement. Sick fashion. I mean, you gotta... You gotta do what you gotta do. Alright, so. We're pretty okay with a lot of our supplies we have right now. So what I am going to do is I'm going to take the time to harvest these. Because I'll end up wanting the, um, the cured gut as well as the hides to be cured as well. And it's partially doing that because there's a blizzard going on outside and I just really didn't want to deal with it. What are you? I need to find food. Yeah, rabbits do, uh, not give you a whole lot of nutrients. Shelf. 
Well, I may could do this in the meantime. Can't see anything anyways, I bumped into it. About 53. Okay, so it's 53, 2. All right, give me some good. That'll come in handy. All right, I can go with this. Um, so where are you? Decent insulated boots. Decent, I guess. Those are way better than what I have on. Right, there's the workbench somewhere. Shelf. Those eyes. Uh-huh. Shelf. I think that's the window. There's the workbench. Where'd you go? There. Okay, is there anything I can make here we care about? I can make a hook. I don't really care about doing that right now. Yeah, so if I cure the rabbit hides, or rabbit pelts, uh, and the guts, I can make clothing out of that. That has really good insulation. And then even better if I find that. Improvised um, crampons? Yeah, so I got all that. Um, in the meantime, did I drop that? No, I didn't. So drop all of the gut. Drop all of the rabbit pelts. Those are going to take days to have anything happen with them. I wish I could see the oven. Or honestly, literally anything. Table. Requires light. I see. That does make sense. Shelf, table, locker. Bench, bed. We're dehydrated, but fresh gut wrapped. So we're staring at the floor. Shelf, shelf, workbench, fresh gut. This sucks. Workbench. I can't see anything. I suddenly remembered I can do matches for this. Ah, yes. Much better. Okay. Um, Start a fire. Okay. Come on. Because we don't want to wander around in the dark if we can help it. All right.
Okay. Alright, we are doing pretty okay with the food front. No one left behind. You won't remember me. The world doesn't stop. The lights fade. That's fine. Open locker. Great, I can't quite see. Chair. It's fine, I'll go ahead and accept that I'm gonna have to use a match for this. Not liking that I'm using a match for it, but it is what it is. And we sleep so we can wake up when we can actually see something. Okay, we have survived our first night. Drink our water real fast. Alright, so don't see any critters nearby. I, I wish we could get a map. Maybe it is something we just find. Alright, so we are on the prowl for something to eat. Okay, so we still drop heat really fast, even with the wind blocked. We're not going to be able to go that far from our cabin. We're not going to be able to do anything with the deer. What do we got up here? I shouldn't be running up Dallas Hills in this mode. My fingers feel numb. Oh, 
All right, so we're going to have to end up making a fire out here somewhere. Pretty soon, in fact. Every time I hear that, I look for the, the woodpecker. And I don't even know if there's actually a woodpecker you can find. Sounds like more winds coming. Let's just go do that. Uh, so let's go try and get over here. Some of these rocks. That way I make my fire. It doesn't like pick up wind and immediately go out again. It's not just temperature. I need to be able to keep finding food. Alright. Come on. Fire's life out here. One hour, 55 minutes, let's scooch over here, break a stick, bring it back. Warm up a little more, repeat the process. If we get enough sticks, I can make like a snow cover kind of thing to hide in from the wind and all that. Which isn't a bad idea. Um, so I could do... go back here um, read a little bit more of our book I have to find animals though Wait. means I have to get moving I'm so cold I'm warming up again Let's stand by this real fast while we eat what we've got to top ourselves off.
So electronics and electricity is disabled? Yeah. Uh, basically what ended up happening was there was like a, um, something like electromagnetic happened and knocked out all the power. So there's another building mid-map, we keep going north, which is to my right. I'm partially heading that way and I'm partially just trying to see if I can't find more rabbits. The plan being we can survive a couple days and then circle back to grab those guts and rabbit hide and all that. Because we can make that into clothing to keep us warm. Come on. It's a little nippy outside. We did scare off that wolf and it stayed away, so that's good. I'm curious how much or how little things respawn. I assume if this is going to have a long-term survival, you're going to have to have some level of respawn th going on. At the same time, to keep the pressure up, I could see them deliberately making it slow enough that you have to travel. They can't just hunker down in one place. There's got to be some, some escalating thing, either scarcity of food or... Like, water's not going to be a scarcity. It'd be weird for burning material to be the scarcity thing. With all the trees and whatnot and the type of vent it is, you'd be like, okay, realistically, I shouldn't struggle to find wood. Like, without tools, sure. But if I got, like, a hatcher, so I should be able to take chunks off of branches and whatever to give myself more firewood.
A random carcass, praise Randy. Use this. Oh look, another random carcass. I, I keep wanting the map to update in any way whatsoever. I'm getting the feeling there is no map in survival mode, at which point, why did you include a map in survival mode? Like, I'd be down if it worked like Product Zomboid, where you have, like, it'll record where you've been. Or, like, at the end of the day, you have to, like, have your character spend an hour, like, mapping out where they were that day. Like, you know, committed, if you don't do it for a while, then it, you know, they forget. Like, I don't mind mechanically how it works in the game. Like, it's a little annoying to just wander around where it's gonna go purely on memorization. Like, especially as, like, a content creator doing it. Um, unless I was to main this game. Or put in, like, hundreds of hours or something, which I doubt. I don't I don't realistically see memorizing every bit of the map. I wonder if I make the snare traps if um like like the rabbits and I gotta respawn because there's not as little calories as they are, I can't imagine you go through, you wipe out the rabbits. Because also, like, with the same with the wolves. Like, if you wiped out the wolves, it just be, like, done. loading area. Got a big old moose down there. And some deer. And a corpse. Moose like the hippos of Canada. Yeah, I do know I don't personally want to tangle with a moose unless I got some stuff to do some serious damage. There's nothing for me to gain from potentially pissing off a moose when all I got are little teeny tiny rocks to throw at it. You want to ride a moose? Yeah, it's going to take a lot of effort. We do have something ahead of us. Like wolves from the sounds of it. You saw too much frozen. Oh, we're already coming up on. Is that the dam we're already up on? Again. Kinda wish I could, uh. Kinda wish. Last updated never. I don't. Like, do I have to find maps in this one? I mean, don't actually answer that. Because it would be weird for them to have that map function and then it not do anything. 
So I'm guessing maybe we find maps of the area and they'll like reveal what they see. Okay, so I got a wolf there. Now one thing I did notice... With the, uh... With the wolves. In this one, the, uh... I had, like, wolves wait for me outside of places. That I snuck in, and the wolf was like, okay, I can just wait here. I think I can use this. Requires a hunting knife to break down. So you found more clothes. What have we here? All right, so let's see what we got clothing wise. 0.5, also 0.5, but like barely hanging in there and it's 0.5. This is probably the best ones we have. We can repair those potentially. We can find some cured leather and all that, which we might have. No matter how you look at additional socks, it could be an improvement. Yeah, I bet you when I tear apart those... That'll give me what I'm looking for as far as cured leather. Don't be waiting right here for me, Wolf. This will come in handy. All right, so let's once again check our clothes. We did find an old-fashioned parka, which is really good. One point six, one point two. That's point three, point four. Imagine the wool ones. Let's see. I don't get it. Why would your character find a backpack with items but leave it? Uh, the idea is you already have a really big backpack. Um, and you only can carry so much. Can you reach sustainability or are you forced to be a vagabond? I have no idea. Like, I'm I'm new to the game. I don't have a murder bear chasing me this time. That's a different experience.
So it's curious, is this place probably going to be impossible to see anything? Or not. That's actually not too terrible. How new? Um, I have played Act 1 and Act 2. This is only our second stream ever playing. If I, can drop any of this um, I am going to ask that you, uh... You don't, like, vaccine that kind of thing. Um, I understand Hinch are just trying to help me succeed. Let me make the mistakes and let me die. I get the idea, like, wolves could sneak in or whatever behind me. N like, now nah, you've said it. I debated it, but... Are slightly overburdened. All right, so what I'm gonna quickly do though. That's not what I wanted to do. It's what I did, but it's not what I wanted to do. Grab that. Actually, we'll wait till it's too dark for us to see. Now we'll start shredding some of the worn out clothes. Level? I don't even know what you're talking about. Like we're brand brand new. If there's a leveling mechanic to the game, I'm unaware of it. Oh, oh, difficulty. The, uh, the second one. Second from the top. So not the easiest, but one up from it. Thank you, thank you. I was expecting this place to be like absolutely pitch black. <sighs> Keep those yawns to yourself, mister. Years ago, there was a wolf in here. Oh, is that just something they did? Like, you'd go skulking about in here and just find some random wolf? Yeah, we did find in the, um, in the story, down in the tunnels, there was a dead wolf. I'm like, why is there a dead wolf in here? there we'll do that in a minute yes she lived here affectionately known as fluffy that sounds about right and I'm sure fluffy took many many a person Play many players because that sounds like the exact type of thing you run into all right so we have point seven point six yeah the work gloves once I repair them will probably be the better ones Can we comment if you miss things? Um, if I overlook something, yeah, that's okay. Like, if, if it's just, like, a thing that was, like, laying on a counter and you're like, hey, you, you overlooked it, I think that's fine. Granted, I'm probably not going to be able to see much, I think. Excellent. 
Bong's rifle. Cool. Um, I assume I don't have bullets for it. Let's go ahead and while we're here real fast, let's just... that right now. Got higher priorities than getting a little cloth from shredding something. You have the DLC? Yes. Somewhere in here was a furnace. Just kind of what I'm looking for at the moment. All this gear is slowing me down. It's fine. Stop whining. Oh, I just realized we got the ad playing. So bear with me for just a moment. We're going to go ahead and get Nitro back up here. Uh, just for the ad break. Um, and as a reminder, you got to wait till I get into the map. And now you can do exclamation mark play to join in the race. And we do this every time there's an ad break that pops in. Because, you know, Twitch be the way Twitch be these days. You gotta have your ads. It is what it is. But, if you do exclamation mark play, you can get in on it. We'll do the race real fast. Then when the ad is over, we'll get right back to where we left off. I do wish it was really easy to omit, like, this, this part from when I have the VOD and all that to clean it up. But it is what it is. Alright, anyways, so I'm going to last call before we do the race. Last call before we do the race. And we're going to go in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. Because it has its own countdown. Yeah, thank you so much for everyone who's been tuning in, who's been lurking, chatting, following. Thank you for everyone who's been tuning in, lurking, chatting, following, subscribing to the bits, hosts, donuts, and the raids. It all helps and I do appreciate it. I do hope you're all enjoying the stream so far. We're just going to knock out a quick race, and then we'll be back to Long Dark. Now we got Pidgeot in, well, at the beginning it's just Anarchy and who's in the lead and who's not. Now I believe if we do win this, we will unlock the next track, which we have not seen yet. Um, I did have the lead for a second there, but now the bots, like right now it's just mayhem because everyone's piled in at the beginning. Yeah, so we got Burnin's on the lead, Pidgey behind it, Tree Max after that. We got people all over the place. Seems like a fairly tight race this time. You can race without bots, but you can't unlock other tracks. Correct. But um, once we finish this one, then it should unlock the next track. But then we have to do the next track. I actually don't mind the bots. I've had one or two people who said they would prefer it without bots, but I've also had a bunch of people who are just like, no, do it with the bots. So it doesn't seem like there's a strong opinion one way or the other. Like, I understand it's fun to like have the competition between people here saying, like, here's first, second, and third. But, um, I don't think it's, like, that big a deal, because usually it's, like, one or two people here other than the bots. I mean, I guess the bots randomly using power-ups can kind of might stink, but it does look like we're absolutely thrashing the bots on this one. There's only one bot that's even remotely up there and looks like they just got knocked out again. Which I am for the bots getting absolutely decimated.
Uh, it looks like Grifter is starting to gain ground, though. Never mind, Grifter just got knocked down hard. All that matters is that one of us wins. As long as one of us wins, we get a new track. You know what happened to me? Uh, I don't know. Um, if you pull up their website, it'll actually show you like your icon moving around on the mini map and all that. Like it's not it's not foolproof or anything. But um no, well, it looks like Burning Sun is like physically stuck on the edge of the course. Just got like stuck on the ramp and like the character's having problems sorting itself out. Burning Sun's like that's normal. Just gotta live your life the way you wanna live your life. Yeah, it looks like uh, Tremek Zidian have like a very strong lead. Um, I saw only one of the bots that's on their third lap. Well, now they're starting to get there. It looks like actually Grifter just popped up ahead. Probably took a shortcut or got warped ahead when they got knocked off. And I just shot into second place out of nowhere. I do wish the audio, because like you get those little chirps where it like teleports over to someone that zooms out because like right on them I kind of wish that they they made the so you know how like sounds they play at distance in the games and they'll be like different volumes based distance I wish instead of being like really strict about like being normally kind of like like that wait why is my ability to banana storm I might need to go to the website and check my loadouts again I have no idea that ranking is terrible you're like 10th on the map Gotcha. Yeah, the ranking on the left seems spotty. It does make it kind of interesting to be able to like go is is the first place actually in first place. Could also be that we've lapped a bunch of people. Uh looks like Tremex has won the race. Which means chat has won. We, in theory, should have a new map the next race we do. Which there probably will not be another race tonight, because um, we only do one ad break per hour, which is why we do this, because they end up being a bit longer. So, fewer longer as opposed to many short. Um, so, Tremex got first, and then we don't care about the bots, we don't recognize their stats. Um, I had the top speed at 111.94 kilometers per hour. Pidgeot had the most airtime at 447.69 meters. Uh, Zidian had the most bananas hit at 10. And the most cars hit went to Kcris, who hit 42. Kcris, like, flat out thrashed the other cars on the road. Well, there says, I count that as a win since we all won. Yes, we did win. That's the whole point. We won. So we get so we get to all take say we participated someone you know in last place used their mega or whatever and may have won it we have no idea all right so we're back to this oh we're getting sleepy because I'm carrying too much fair enough I actually don't care. the mountaineering rope. This goes in the next area, doesn't it? this. 
Yeah, so I'm carrying way, way, way too much. I'm liable to, uh, to sprain something. But my hope is, like I said, I believe somewhere in here there was a, um... Where's the good stuff? A place I could forage or something like that. If there isn't, it's fine too. Yeah, we definitely don't want to be down here if we run out of flares or lanterns or anything. Just trying to wander around in the pitch black. We just starve to death down here, trying desperately to find a way. Oh, it is late during the day? Okay. I figured this far down it'd be like absolutely pitch black. and burn our flare. Finish exploring this spot. I don't think I have anything I really want to make. Never would have thought to look here. Our sewing kit. Alright. Uh, Dean, I, you have a good one. Oh my god. A dress shirt. I need to process stuff. I'm basically trying to find a place where I can, like, boil water and all that and just kind of do the, uh, do the laps of, like, boiling a little water, tearing apart some clothing, eating some food. In the worst case, just make a fire on the floor.
Okay. Requires memento key. Let's do some quick clothing checking. 0 0.5, 1.4, there we go. Point 0.7, Point 0.6. It's weird that a hoodie has less insulation than a t-shirt. Point four. Actually, let's use the lamp. Yes, yeah, so I don't see a single place to do that. So what I'm going to do is we're going to make a fire. Do I seriously not? Oh, we can't start campfire indoors. Fair enough. So I'm at over double our carry weight right now. Um, so I have a feeling I have no choice but to like address that. Um, so we can start by going to our lantern, actions, refuel you. We got quality tools. Alright. Go ahead and turn this off. Because what I'm going to do. Oh. Oh. I don't care about that. Alright, so let's start the process. Um actions. Harvest. work on tearing up all these really poor ones. Then we can repair a bunch of other other stuff. And then all that fabric will probably end up being lighter in the long run. Feels like something is sapping my energy.
All right, so we're gonna light this back up for a second. Figure out where I can put this. There we go. Drink some soda. Drink more soda. Alright. So you still have the whole thing where the generator plays or the place comes alive at night. And how's our carry weight still at almost double what we can reasonably carry? Um Our socks real fast. Or that real fast. And we have got to deal with water now. Oh, I am already in bad shape with water. Oh no, okay, hang on. I was not watching that carefully. Um, so let's go here sort by weight drop the books drop the branches drop those books I have a bunch of axes so we'll drop a couple of those and we'll hatchets that's equipped I will drop those boots keep the bedroll drop that drop the logs drop the other shoes Drop the scrap metal. Drop this. Drop one set of quality tools. Drop the scrap wood. Drop all but one, one of the antiseptics. Keep the bandages. Keep the coal. Okay, we're in range of what we can actually handle. Um, so I need to make water happen in a big way. Do peaches give me water? Uh, probably. Gotcha, cool. Bought me a little bit more time. So the bummer is that means I'm leaving all that stuff way down here, which is less than ideal, but I don't think it's that big of a deal because he mostly dropped wood and like various tools and all that we can come back for. Nothing that I didn't have a duplicate of. So if I ever find myself completely without a hatchet, we can come back down. And like scrap metal, I'm not worried about. Eventually I'll find a hacksaw and we'll just shred everything.
Um, so that's up. We're looking for out. I think out was this way. Yeah, there it is. Did I grab my bedroll? Okay, cool. For a moment, I was like, wait a sec, did I leave my bedroll behind? Please. I mean, if I did, I would have... I would have left it down there. I don't think we could run around down there. Water's getting bad. Find some water. Yep. Almost like it's talking about that. Let's go, 44. I don't imagine those are better than what I got, right? Nope. Barely, barely, barely not. Um, I got a bunch of these. Let's drop five. Oh, a pry bar. Oh, I don't want to do that. I need kindling. Oh, I know what I can do. What am I doing? Go here. Tinder plug, stack of papers, craft. All right. Oh, no, it's not that I need Tinder. I need just plain fuel. That should be hard we go smash a box. Am 
might have to drop some gear. That should help warm things up. Okay. I don't know if the torch scares them or not. Too much stuff to carry. I found the answer, chat. The answer is no. Doggo did not care about the torch. Do you have to cook that meat you harvested? Um, yeah, the fire's not got a whole lot there. I'm pretty okay on food for the moment. Alright, dog. Got two bullets. Oh, wow, you're terrible with this gun. I'm guessing it knows what a gun is, because it saw the gun and it said, absolutely not. Could end up being useful. Alright, let's start working our way back down. Map, map still doesn't update. Pretty annoying. Okay. There should be a look. There's the lookout way up there. Let's see if I can't get to the lookout. Um, and we can go up there. We can deal with, like, water, food, inventory, yada, yada, yada. Because I'm just lugging too much stuff around, which is doing nothing but making me sleepy faster. It means I'm getting less stuff done per day, as it were. But, um, if I do get back to the hunter's place, we've got a bunch of rabbit skins curing on the ground. All that, that should help. We already checked you, right? Yeah, we already checked you.
Just scarfing on all the chips and all that good stuff. So good news, it does seem like I got enough clothes that during the day I don't have to worry about getting cold. Which gives me a lot more range of doing stuff. I imagine it's not enough to deal with like blizzards and that kind of nonsense. But still, progress is progress. I feel like I can't go this way because I still don't have a map. The lookout's right up here. That's not what I wanted. We'll probably gonna sprain our ankle and our wrist up here. Got plenty of cloth to make bandages if it happens, but I don't want it to happen. What are you? Close Karen. His story not yet written. Special thanks. Okay. Alright, there's the stairs I'm supposed to be taking to get up here. Notice there's a trailer down there. We might stop by that trailer as I see how I can get there versus trailers and a damaged building. That works out great, actually. No sign of any rabbits to speak of, though. Go signify a dead something? Yeah. Looks like it's over there on that, um... On that cliff over there somewhere. got when I accidentally tear one of my piece of clothes and caring too much is making us get sleepy way too fast
Wonder if this is any good to eat. Pretty sure we have better. This stuff will come in. Alright, so let's check those out. Um Yep. Drop you. Drop you, drop you, drop you. I'm pretty all right in all that. We are getting very tired. Where are those crows? Oh. I guess I can be away from the crows too long that we don't get to keep anything. Uh, have I already been in this one? I feel like we already in, were in this one. Nope. And the work boots are nowhere near as good as the other stuff. Our hatchet. junk food drink some of our water I really don't want to go to bed yet in the game we'll have to soon But my hope is I can get up to the lookout. We'll go to bed up there. How much over am I? I am always way too overweight. Greed is a real problem in this game. Like, greed is straight up a real problem in this game. Oh yeah, I'll go so. It ain't bolted down, we're taking it. If it is bolted down, do we have a wrench? We're taking it. If it is not, if it is bolted down, we don't have a bolt. We're gonna try and figure your out if we can take it anyways. Will be your downfall. Yeah, because I saw the stairs over here somewhere. I think we go up there. Because notice, well, it's not that they don't make you ever climb steep slopes. They don't seem to do it very long. So good news of the things we've got going for us so far is clothing-wise and feeling pretty good about ourselves. Um, we do have a gun. It only has two bullets, so I don't really want to waste it. But um, if we get hungry enough, we can certainly use it to hunt an animal or two. Now, I, um, I came down from the hill to those trailers...
Or does it look like it came all the way over this way? I'm guessing you go up here and to the left. I'm going to try and cut straight to it. I may not be able to climb this, and we may sprain something trying to climb up an angle. Yeah, so... Yeah, it's too steep of an angle for us to climb here. Without, like, trying to, like, really fight with it. This ain't Skyrim. Nope. Yeah, there's our stairwell right there, so I think we literally get up here. We go under this tree, take a left. Watch, we're gonna get up there, there's gonna be like nothing there. I am curious, like, when we get to the point of being able to pack our own ammo kind of thing. Um, so we're gonna keep wanting to retrieve our shells and all that. It's, it's going to be interesting, like, having your two bullets, you fire them, you go retrieve your shells, you run back to wherever you pack your ammo, pack your next set of bullets, go back out. Alright, so it's not here. It's over this way more. I did notice in this one, my um, my aim wavers way more than it did in the other one. There's the uh, antenna. You're running out of eyeball. I don't know what that means. That's how sleepy we are. So if it gets too low, we'll go lay down on the floor and. Probably not wake up in the morning. There's a good chance to get hypothermia while we sleep, because, you know, sleeping in the snow. How the heck do I get up there? Trying to avoid going back down the mountain. I need to find a place to rest. No, you don't stop whining. I'm gonna see if I can't make it work. It's like right here. We goofed here, chat. I'm using the royal Wii because it makes me feel better. Okay. Medical bandage. Sprained ankle, left foot. Let's go ahead and bandage that up. Medical bandage. Sprained ankle, right foot. Let's do that. I didn't goof, don't blame me. Painkillers, left foot, let's go ahead and do that. Painkillers, right foot, let's do that. And nothing went wrong. That medicine was heavy, so it's just making it a little lighter. Yeah, I don't know about you, but just tightening a bandage... Like, don't get me wrong, when you, when you have a sprain, you want to immobilize it, and sometimes you do, like, soft or hard immobilization, depending on how bad it is. Like, generally, they prefer soft immobilization, because then, like, you truly immobilize a limb. Um, there's lots of negatives to doing that. But, um, something tells me... What was a shirt I made into a bandage? Probably not sufficient for immobilizing. Like, Lee's got to get some sticks in there, or I don't know, some elastic or something. But just torn shirt. I don't think it's going to be. We did it. We found Canada. 
Yeah, for like, for attempting a hard immobilization, you probably need a splint. But yeah, we just put a bandage on it that took a painkiller. I do find it amusing you take a painkiller for each injury. So like, if you have a left foot injury, you take a painkiller. If your right foot's also injured, you take a pain, like a second painkiller. Like one painkiller doesn't help them both. All right, so we have achieved Firewatch. Constantly walk out should have a chance to worsen, in my opinion. Yeah. Injection. No, it's like um. They show a painkiller like a pill capsule, and it even makes the sound of a paint like a pill capsule opening, or a pill container opening. Where's your door? There's your door. Yeah, but there is such heckin' good stuff up here, man. Let it weigh you down. Embrace the weight. Even when he's not in Zomboid, he hoards hunting knives. Fact. Um, I was thinking the local injection would, would be multiple painkillers. Alright, so... Now I've got a bit of a problem. Do I go to sleep now? We go to sleep now. Not for a long sleep, just a little sleep. Um, that way I don't start cooking stuff and fall asleep. Good, that's us hoping it wouldn't be pitch black. Alright, so start fire. I'm happy with all these things. And we're gonna do this fire for a decent amount of time because I gotta make a bunch of water Come on. and cook some food and do a whole bunch of stuff. That's done. So venison. All right, in the meantime, those are extras. Ooh, way too long. Takes a full hour to harvest those. You know what? Welcome to the ground. Um, so you have... Oh, the fire went out because it wasn't paying attention. Because <sighs> what I need to do is I need to get us a bunch of water, get us a bunch of food and all that, so that way I'm not walking around with nothing. I do think the carry weight is clever in that it really restricts how much stuff you can bring with you. Um, So I couldn't just, like, hoard a massive Turned amount of materials. Well. Add the reclaimed wood... They don't want to carry with it, and none of the rest. Cook, none of that. Water, tin, cook.
And let's see if we can't... I'm how are you walking around with nothing? Going around with everything. But, oh, go so. I could have more. Did you ever consider that? I could, I could just have more. Getting kind of thirsty. Like, you can't study anymore. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish that book. I'm gonna need to rest soon. So when I finish the book, does it go away? No. Meanwhile, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say snooze the ad. Because I can only do that three times per stream. And I can't do them back to back. I can only snooze like once per hour. Um, we're doing that because we're getting ready to wrap. So we just survived. Let me do this first. We just survived two days and some change. Going pretty well. I have an obnoxious amount of junk food I'm carrying around with me. That's okay, we'll just scarf down as much as we can. Make our inventory that much lighter. Cool. So we're all in good shape there. I'm leaving that recycled can there because I have two others. Pretty sure. Yeah, so I've already got two, so I don't need that one. Alright, so with that though, I do think we're at a good stopping point because we just slept, but don't go anywhere because I am going to go find someone first to raid, but before any of that happens... Thank you so much for everyone who's been tuning in to the Lurking Chang, following, subscribing to the bits, hosts, the donors, and the raids. It all helps, and I really do appreciate it. I do hope you have enjoyed the stream. Um, as a reminder, I will be back tomorrow at 5 p.m. 